Christian Perez. How's it going, Javier? My friend, how are you, brother? I'm great. All good? Yep, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming, man. Of course. Of Thank course, you man. so much. Uh, so, what's up, man? What you been up to? What have I been up to? So, I've been painting pretty frequently now, which is good. It's a good feeling. And I actually got back into sculpting. So Sculpting, sculpting or modeling? Yeah. Sculpting yeah. um, with clay, you know, playing around with clay. So cool, man. Yeah, it's been fun. You know? Awesome. What What are you doing? Similar stuff that, that you paintings? No. Yeah. I used to do a lot of like sketches of like little creatures. Oh, and like cool. there was this one specific creature that I kept look, uh, going back to and looking at. I'm like, I want to paint this thing or I want to sculpt it. And I decided I want to sculpt it because I don't ever like start and finish a sculpture. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how you paint, you put so much time into a painting. And I've never done that with a sculpture, so that's that's what I'm doing now. Cool, man. Yeah. How is that working? Uh, it's a, it's a mess. Challenging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like starting over again, you know. But you know how it is, right? You start like this look easy, kind of like exactly. explorer, and then you don't know okay. what, what is cracking, okay, exactly. and then you have to go and search. Yep. yep. Oh, you need to keep it wet. Okay, let's yes, do this. Yes. Let's do that. I I love that feeling of like starting over and like learning a new thing. You know? Yeah, man, so. definitely, definitely. Sometimes it gets out of control and then absorbs all of your time and you go crazy. You don't yes. want to do anything else. Yes. And then you start putting everything I'm aside. I'm sure that's what you're doing with the podcast right now. <laughs> we were just talking <laughs> we about were it, just right? talking about like, it. Like, yeah, let me just do this quick recording. Mm -hmm. I use my cell phone and ended up yep. being with a, and look what a it full studio. Into, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's yeah, awesome man. though, man. But it's, 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 it's the best way, right? Yep. You just put yourself into something and trying to see how I, far you can go into I it. I think right? that's what makes us artists, right? It's like... We, Probably, we dig right? into something and we like need to like be really good at it. So. Yeah, man. Uh, I can't wait for the day that I'm good at this. I'm still all, like <laughs> all over the place trying to understand. I keep repeating myself yep. in every episode that I have done. I think as I repeat this, but all the time I'm like, did I connect the uh -huh, hard drive? Uh -huh. Did I click the right recording I, button? Dude, did I, I do it all the time? It's like, ah. Uh, I can only imagine you doing like three hour podcasts and realizing you didn't hit a button or imagine that. Wire. Yes. Oh my God. So that pressure is there in the back yep, of my yep, head all the yep. time. So I keep looking like, no, oh, yeah, it's recording. <laughs> Got it. Wait, but did I connect that cable? <laughs> yeah, yeah, did I connect that? Yeah. Oh, That's man. why you need someone else to do it for you, man. Uh, yeah, no, I hope in some point somebody show mm -hmm. up and, mm -hmm. and help, right? Yeah, it would be awesome. <laughs> so, man, I've been noticing that you post a lot more paintings than tattoos lately. And I know you're tattooing because you yes. also post tattoos that yes. look like they take sessions this is true and this is uh very intentional um i don't know i kind of just like want to focus on other things besides tattooing you know tattooing has consumed a lot of my life you know i've been tattooing 23 years now it's 23 like, yeah so it's been a, a major part of my life and i just want to focus on other things too you know like there's more to life than tattooing yes yes so, so i don't know if this related to what you're saying but mm -hmm. it happened to me like Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed when I'm too, too busy. Yep. More yet if, two things, more if I, I need to take a couple of days off mm -hmm. to a vacation with my family or something, yep. and then you realize you book with somebody that's been waiting for six months for that spa, and you have to call them and tell them, listen, I won't be here that day. Yes. People, of course, get mad at you. or they, of Sometimes they, they have patience. They, we understand, but okay, when is my next spa? Okay, you have to wait another six months six now months, from today. Yeah. So they're like, fuck you. <laughs> you know what yep. I mean? So that's always a pressure that i don't want to live with right mm -hmm. knowing that sometimes you have to take a day off for any given reason and it's people true. gotta get peace of you if you do it that's true but also it happened like sometimes you want to do another things like you care you want to paint more or now yep. modeling and sculpting and and you like yeah i love tattooing and pay my bills and, mm -hmm. and it's my family income and all of that right but fuck, I want free time to do something else that doesn't absorb the time that I have to spend with my family. Exactly. And then you're like, how I do I that, right? I think the beauty of what we do for a living is that we can make our schedule whatever we want. You mm -hmm. know, like, I think we get stuck into like, oh, we need to stay busy, stay busy. But realize that, you know, sometimes time is worth more than money. Yeah. So I think the older I've gotten, the more I've realized that. So it's like, yeah, I make less money, but I, I have more time to myself and I, I feel better about it. So mm -hmm. I can give more energy to my client, even though I have, you know, I'm doing less tattooing, which is, it's fine with me, man, you know? Yeah, no, definitely, man. So finding that balance is really tricky. The balance, man. Yeah. That's the hard part and, and it's, it's the goal, right? Yes. yes. Like I mentioned before, it's, it's tattoo. also part of what is beautiful about what we do mm -hmm. is that, fuck, we tattoo. We do drawings for money, exactly. right? People pay us to do something that we exactly. love. 
but you don't want it to become like, oh, fuck, I have to go and tattoo today. And I wanted it to finish this painting. And I wanted to put more work into this yes, or whatever, yes. right? You There's, don't want it to go that moment. That's a struggle, man. Because, you know, the longer you do it, the more you're going to hit those moments that mm -hmm. you feel that way, you know? So how do you deal with that? You know, I think stepping back is, is, is an option. And the fact that we have options is, is amazing. It's a bless. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of people in different careers don't have that option. Mm -hmm. and we do, you know? Definitely, man. So take advantage of it if you can, you know, if you... I mean, obviously, everyone's situation is different. You know, if you have a huge overhead, obviously, you have a family, so you have to take that into account. But if you can step back, if you're feeling that pressure, do it, man. Because mm -hmm. I, I just did it, man. I just did. What I did was that I closed my books. Yep. So it's not like I'm not tattooing. Mm -hmm. It's just that I cannot keep responding emails and talking to people and so much <laughs> planning designs and yep. and planning what I gotta take my work into now. All of that. when you're so busy, so it becomes a little. Oh, so I, what I did was okay, close my books, no yep. appointments for now, no new appointments. Let me just take care of all of these appointments, and it's been helping a lot with my peace of mind. Let's so say so you feel that pressure. Oh my god, kinda, yeah. like subside. That's yeah, yeah man. It's it, it's still complicated, you know, for the same reason. People like find me a spa, give me a spa, give me mm -hmm, a spa. Let's do mm -hmm. this, let's do that. You know, when you gonna me a spa, call me, call me. But you know, it's still a little bit of that. Yep. But at least when it's official that my book is closed, at least you there know you go. they have I'm to asking, understand too. Please. I understand. <laughs> we both, you know, understand a little bit. But yeah, man. But definitely, man. Well, how long have you been tattooing now? Man, uh, what can I say? I first tried it. 20 years ago or something oh, wow. but i never took it seriously it, it was not i never even thought about becoming a tattoo artist mm -hmm. i did it because my brother was like you should do it okay. i come from a very small town in venezuela okay and sorry for the people that already heard this before <laughs> i'll keep yeah. repeating also but anyway so i came i come from that little town in venezuela and back then no internet no nothing yep. a friend of mine come to town and start tattooing right yeah so my brother said you should do it you should do it and keep pressure 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 so one day he took me, bought me my first machine. Look at that. That's and great. I didn't know what to do with that shit. So my other brother that is older, electrician, he said, you need a power supply or something for that. So he built me a power supply from a computer fan. Really? That thing, you know, that has the yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. From that, he built me a power supply. And the other friend that was tattooing in my town teach me how to build the first three round liners and how to weld them together, how to clean them. My, my doctor across the street in my house teach me some stuff how to keep everything safe yep. as possible and i did a few tattoos man but Dude, isn't that funny how that worked out like you had all the resources all around you yeah. and people to encourage you into this that's great man that yeah that's super interesting right like i wonder how many other things we want to do mm -hmm. or or somebody around us want to do and haven't knocked that door yet right exactly it's almost like the universe said, Javier, this is your path. I'm going to give you all the resources to go in this direction. And I was and being it. super stubborn. No, but still, I took it mostly to please my brother. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some friends came, do one for me. Do one for me. So yeah, it was yeah. kind of fun, but again, I didn't know anything what I was doing. I mean, that's, that's, that's how we how all start, right? you know? But yeah. my goal, my pursuing was to be a painter. Okay. My mind was like, I want to be a painter. So one day I got to move to America. And also moving to America was kind of a happy accident. One yep. of my good friends decided to move. Yep. And we were talking about, let's go, let's go together, whatever. So he left a year before. Then I moved the next year. And I came with a mind, I'm going to be a painter. Right? I'm going to try to be a painter. And I was painting in the night. But I was working, working construction. Yep. And I didn't speak English at all. I didn't know you can make money tattooing. Wow. I didn't know anything. So for seven years, I was painting people's houses being miserable yeah, yeah. <laughs> and painting and trying to you know that's super interesting though like your, your perspective on america like you thought like this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come to america and be a painter yeah and, and all of a sudden you're tattooing yeah huh. that's, that's super interesting but I, I always try to say to people man create goals mm -hmm. because it's very important and Try to picture or write down your big goal mm -hmm. and set a bunch of small goals that take you to yep. that place, but feeling happy and accomplishing each of those. Yeah, just like steps. Because you might never get there. It's, true. it's not trying to be negative, but you might not. But at least, you know, you set all these goals, you make it easier. But keep your eyes open because at the end, it might be something else showing for you. Exactly. And look what you just said. Universe kind yep. of was more exactly. putting together that like, tattooing, there, right? If there is a plan, you don't know what it is. You know, we're yeah. kind of just on this journey and it just takes us in all these different directions. You yeah, know, man. you just got to make the best of it. What I say about tattooing is the happiest accident ever, man, because I Same, never expected man. it. I Same. just walk into that shop. 
I walk once in Venezuela in a tattoo shop. Mm -hmm. You know Emilio? Emilio? He do body modifications from Venezuela. Does he have tribal tattoos? Yeah, yes. and a bunch yes. of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Split yeah, yeah, the tongue. Yeah. I, yep. Bueno, okay. I said bueno. Uh, I went to his shop first. Mm -hmm. That was probably 1990... I don't know, seven, six, five, something, whatever, in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Just because I was looking for a tattoo, uh, for a tattoo magazine. Yep. It was in the, I was in that neighborhood in Caracas, Venezuela, looking for skateboarding. I used to do skateboarding. Oh, yeah? Nice. So I was look, looking for magazine and stuff. And then I saw that tattoo shop and, and I was just starting. And I was, let me buy one of those flash. I don't know if you remember those long, I think they're oh, for yeah, Italy. Yeah, the, like the little panels with all the flash on No, it. it's, it's like a magazine. Yeah, yeah, but, but it was like thin. Yeah, yeah, thin, remember, long, thin and long. Yeah, black, I black drawings, yep. black yep. line drawings. I very simple. Those. But yeah. I was looking for something. I saw it and I bought mm -hmm. one of those or whatever. So you, were you tattooing at the time? <laughs> Probably I was starting tattooing okay. in my house. So you were looking for like art to tattoo, basically, yes. like flash. Yeah. yeah, I was looking to get any information. Yep. But again, that was probably before internet was something in Venezuela, mm -hmm. right? And when internet just started, it, you don't have YouTube, you don't have oh, Google. Yeah. Probably you have Google was very basic. If you have Google or something yeah. in that time in Venezuela, you have to go to a cyber cafe and pay a lot of money. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. So I wanted something. I saw that magazine and it looked something like I can tattoo that. And yeah, I yeah. Took it. It's like free images. Like, here, you know like, what these I mean? perfect. Because I wasn't surrounded by a community of tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. The people that talk about tattoos or talk about, oh, we should do this more realistic or more that. What if we work with block ball lines or thin mm -hmm. lines? So nothing. That doesn't exist. I don't yeah, I yeah. exist. I don't, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was the, the point. That was the first time I walked in a tattoo uh, shop for five minutes and left. I, I walked probably before or after that to buy my first tattoo machine mm -hmm. my brother took me so how old, <clears throat> how old were you at this time uh, it feels like i'm interviewing you now <laughs> i know, I, know. Sorry. I got questions that come to my mind to ask you <laughs> throw another question <laughs> now i feel like i can uh but it's okay man uh we never have time to talk anyway yeah, yeah, so i know whatever yeah, we man really have a conversation wow. <laughs> so, so um i don't know man i would say probably 18 okay 19 or something Pretty young, yeah That's yeah good. Man, I'm 44 right now. Yeah. So I was probably, oh, wow, over 20 years ago was yeah. that show. Wow. I never, I never see them make the math. But yeah, man, so I never went to a tattoo shop, never again in my life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I started reading some magazines, and then I, I moved to America, and then I saw like, what? Magnum needles? What is that? <laughs> you know, it's not just three round liners forever. Oh, yeah. So then I started exploring all of that. My my roommate was also tattooing in his house, mm -hmm. so he already knows somebody in Queens, Astoria. Okay, you know, yeah. That uh, sell him needles and stuff. Was that Unimax? No, for, it was a tattoo shop. I don't oh, know the name. Tattoo a little shop. tattoo okay. shop. Uh, some uh, Mexican guy was there. Pretty cool dude. He was selling him some needles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he had five of these, five of those, take it, whatever. For, That's for awesome. The bar. And then in one of the magazines, I saw Unimax. And I was, that's mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. We should go there. But again, I'm new in this country. Everything is so abstract. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You don't know what is close or far or Manhattan, how you move around. You don't know anything. Yeah. Like that. But anyway, we took it to Chinatown. And then we realized that with the money that we were paying to that guy for five years, we can buy like two boxes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was making profit off Of you guys. course. He was selling it as a single. You <laughs> that's know? why. You know, you know how it is. It's oh, like yeah, when you course. buy... Like single Lucy cigarette, cigarette. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> it is in, you know. He's hustling, man. That's good. Yeah. And and we were so ignorant about it that mm -hmm. good for him that course, you know took that chance and make some money. Fuck it, his business. Why not? I don't blame him. I don't take it on <laughs> him. But yeah, then we start like so. We, then I was like, well, what is this? What is that? And so it, it still, I was tattooing in my house. I wasn't trying to be good. Yeah. I was just trying to get some extra money to probably buy cigarettes that I used to smoke. Yeah, that's yeah. Gotta quit that shit. And. And that's it, man. It disappeared out of my life. I tattoo now and then in my house. Really? Very rare. One tattoo here and there for, for the seven years that I was working construction and painting. So I was trying to knock doors in galleries and yep. they were like, get the fuck out of here. Really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I didn't speak English. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Hey, at least you tried, you know. I, I, I told you, you know, if you want to make it, you have to try. Exactly. And yeah. I was so self-conscious and I'm so shy and timid to do those kind of things, but mm -hmm. I have to, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to. And that was the way how I found actually my first art show in mm -hmm. a gallery in America. I, I kind of stopped trying for a little while. I was frustrated, but I kept painting, right? Yep. But then one day I was like, man, if this shit gotta happen, I have to do something. So I drove into a, not into a, but by a gallery and parking, went in 
And I said, the guy, and I was coming in that working van. I was all fucking dirty of pain yeah, and yeah, thing. Yeah. And, shit. and I said, the guy, listen, uh, how I do to show here? Yeah. The guy looked at me like, uh, called the manager, gave me the car. He was nice, but okay. he didn't see potential maybe, right? Yeah. I, I can understand it from his point of view. Of course. Of fucking course. nice gallery, super quiet, clean, beautiful. And this weird guy walking yeah, in all yeah. dirty asking for, you know what I mean? Hey, but you never know what people are capable of. Yeah, so. but so the guy was very, this guy was my, mm, all the other people I tried before, they mm -hmm. were like, nah, 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 you know. They we weren't know, you, Whatever, you know. But this guy was like, you yeah, know, talk to the manager. So I get I got a car, sent an email with three or four photos of my yeah. work, and she said, let's meet a person, bring the paintings. I showed them, she said, like, yeah, I like him. So she gave me a solo show in her gallery. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, man, I showed 32 paintings. I probably saw like two of them or wow. something. And it I was, mean, that's man. good for your first show. Oh, bro. That's amazing. I was out of this war, man. I was so happy. And that was 2007. So at that point, did you, <laughs> you weren't even considering tattooing as an option, right? No, man. So you, the painting was the goal. Painting was the goal. It was my wow. focus. If I do a tattoo in my house, it was yep. because one of my friends saw in some friend, not because I was advertising or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and this friend bring his friend and they were probably drinking or smoking in my house and yeah, we yeah. do a little tattoo you know mm -hmm. i try to keep it super clean that corner in my house you know like like this you know i try mm -hmm. to make that little mm -hmm. corner clean but the rest was party time of course man and the goal was to make some money to buy more canvas and more brooches of course and that's it right that's good man and yeah man so i, I did a show the a couple other shows and 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 then <clears throat> i was broke as fuck always <laughs> and then one day my friend said like this tattoo shop is looking for an artist yeah why you don't apply and i still i was like eh, whatever, i don't know so she insisted another friend insisted their friend with the owner of the shop yeah they took me to that place it was here in norwalk <clears throat> and the guy saw some of my tattoos mm -hmm. a couple of photos that i have and he said oh yeah man you can work here I started I started in march it was like february bro you're right 2010 in, huh? or 2009 2009 i think he said, yeah, you can start in... They needed somebody to take walk-ins because the show yeah. was super busy. Of course, and yeah. there was just two artists and they have an extra room, they're empty. They need somebody to do, you know, all the crap. They need a star. Course, so, sorry, not with respect to the people Dude, who get up. That's the you know way I mean? to learn how to tattoo is being forced to do all of these little things. Yes, you know, because, yeah. you know, I don't know if people know, but like smaller tattoos require more like cleaner lines and like yeah. it requires a lot more precision focus and precision. you yeah, cannot right. fuck a little bit because exactly. it shows what if it's just the line you know, know what i'm saying it's like like a little want, star man exactly. people were like those, those are so tough, easy man. no fuck that i don't do those that anymore tough, man. and people feel like oh why you don't do it because you're too big no because i gotta fuck it up <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i don't i don't want to do oh, letting okay. and stuff like that because you know that's true it's, it's tough as fuck the best way to learn is to yeah. be the walking guy and taking everything yeah in, you know and so i start taking some walk-ins and then I was like, fuck, people pay for this. Of course. I can make money. So in the, <laughs> it was my in my <clears throat> first month, let's say, I mm -hmm. realized that by week I was making almost the same money that I was making mm -hmm. working construction full time. But now I just work from like 12 to 7. I'm clean, indoor, yep. knowing the fucking conditions out there in winter or summer. That yeah, I can't even imagine it. construction it's works tough. tough yeah, man. Man, super tough. And, and, and when you know how to do so many things, like let's say you right now, you yep. paint, you yep. model, you you do modeling and and you tattoo, and then you have to start doing some office work. I know. Five yeah. you gotta be so miserable. It's not that the job is bad; it's that you know how to do so many other things that you. Dude, fuck. just thinking about that makes me appreciate tattooing so much mm -hmm. because we have options. Like like we were talking before, and it's like a lot of people don't have options. That's their job, you know. Like that's what that's all they can do is go to an office yeah, and like. Man. Yeah, some people yeah. and some people get in, in that kind of job that they don't like, mm -hmm. and then they get in debt, and then they have to be there, or for the families or whatever it's it is. True. And man, it's true. Yeah, that's a hard it's life to tough, live. Man, it's tough. So I try not to take tattooing for granted, but you know, we're used to it. So I, I find myself like sometimes complaining and stuff, and mm -hmm. I have to step back and be like, oh no, I'm 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 blessed, man. Yeah. Like, is that people? It, I mean. You cannot take it hard on yourself because when you so immersed in that this world, yeah. you're not really comparing it with something exactly. bad. You're exactly. comparing it to the next thing that you want to do or, or that you would love to do. Yep. And that's why you feel kind of frustrated about it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we shouldn't. So yep. it's good to step out. It's always, always good to and, step back and like it's always good, get yeah. that perspective and like realize how easy we have it. Yeah, I mean, it's man. not always easy, but like compared to other jobs, like construction, it's pretty easy, man. Yeah, man. Um, 
How long you been there? 24? 23 so, years? So, I think it's 23 years. I, I started in 98. 98. So. About the same time. Because I started after I finished high school. Wait, mm -hmm. no. I started after I finished college. Yeah. Yeah. So, 98, around that time, too. I was I was 16 when I started. So, so how you started? You started with an apprenticeship in a shop? No, or you no. started in your house? So, I, I went a very different route. And I don't really recommend doing it this way. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. To each their own, I guess. But um, so I got my first tattoo when I was 14 at a party, like, you know, like the hand poke tattoo. Okay. I don't remember what I was doing at this party, but I, I show up there and there's this kid tattooing people on a couch. I don't know this kid. And he's it, just like, hey, you want something? But it was poke tattooing just, when it just, wasn't a cool thing because yeah. now it's a cool thing. Yeah, exactly. So if it you say, way before it was cool <laughs> I know people are going to be like, oh, so awesome. But nah, yep. that means that it was a very shitty it, tattoo. It was very <laughs> shitty and I still have it. It's my initials on my ankle. And, and your dude, initials. Honestly, I like looking back, I don't even remember if he changed needles. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't even know. But I was 14 years old and we did the hand poke. I remember like being super excited about this thing but it was always in the back of my mind like oh this is cool maybe i, I want to try that because i was always drawing but then when i was 16 i got my first professional tattoo at a tattoo shop so your parents signed for you yes uh -huh. yes so that's to, to even get my mom to sign was it was a whole thing but like i was always getting into trouble and were you a trouble kid oh yeah i, I was i was a bad <laughs> kid man um but I remember convincing my mom, I was like, so I'll, I'll finish going to school if you sign for this tattoo. Oh my God. And so she, she did, you know? You're so, lucky your mom wasn't my mom. Uh, yeah, your mom was like super strict. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't beat you up or anything. She would like go to your room. Yeah, my mom tried, but she had, she had three, three boys, you know? So like yeah. she tried her best and she, you know, she, she's great. Anyways, she signed for me to get this tattoo. And I remember, like, walking into this tattoo shop. And, like, you remember the, the green soap smell? Yeah. So I remember walking into this place and, like, seeing all the flash in the wall. And, like, that smell hit me. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow. Like, this is, like, this is it. Wow, like, it just, man. like, clicked in my head. And I was like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. At 16. At 16. And I remember, you know, I got, like, a small dragon on my shoulder. You still have it? Or it's, it's covered. covered up. It's covered okay. up. But it was like those, you know, it was like a circle dragon with like two dragons kind of intertwined. Uh -huh. <laughs> Real shitty flash. But, Probably uh, from the same book that I was trying to buy. Most when likely. I was like, most one likely. of those flash. So I got that and I remember like really focusing around and seeing what he was doing and like seeing the whole process. And it was like amazing. Like mm -hmm. this whole new world just opened up, right? It's like I kind of fell in love with it that day. And so later that year, you know, I kept thinking about it. And later that year, I lived in the, in the housing projects um, across the street from the train station. I don't know where that is. It, but where? It, in, in New Haven? Yeah, New Haven. Okay. It's no longer a thing. I, I, they knocked it down and moved okay. people out. But um, So I lived there, and I kept thinking about it. And like like I said before, like the universe just brought it to me. Like There was this guy who just moved in and started tattooing people in the neighborhood. And I kept seeing people with like fresh tattoos. like mm -hmm. They look like jail tattoos, but whatever. <laughs> I didn't know the difference. So I kept seeing all these like fresh tattoos around the neighborhood. And I was like, who is doing this? And they kept saying, oh, Papito, Papito. You know, look for Papito. And I, fi I finally found him. And, and he was like. Puerto Rican? Puerto Rican yeah. guy. Papito. <laughs> Papito. Just got out of prison. I'm pretty sure he did like 15 years. Damn. So these were straight up jail tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> right? All like green ink. So I showed him some of my drawings. And he was like, yeah, like. This guy had a serious drug problem. I didn't, I didn't realize it at the time, a serious drug problem. But he he was like, yeah, I want to teach you how to do this. But he like he wanted to like tattoo out of my house. I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I can't have you in my house. Um, but yeah, he taught me how to make a homemade tattoo machine. You know, the typical mm -hmm. like toothbrush. Radio? It, no, it was like it was like a bent toothbrush, a motor, mm -hmm. and there was like pen part and like he, he he taught me how to like get a spring out of a lighter and like sorry stretch it out and with the fire and like file it with filing yeah with, with the same like for the needles up for the needles like so you're making every <laughs> needle and dude this thing was like it was like fascinating to me and um turns out this guy was like he was a junkie 
and he was just tattooing to get high. So Damn. like, e- either way, like I took as much of that information as mm-hmm. I could as possible, and I just ran with it, man. Like for like a solid year, I tattooed with this homemade tattoo machine. I had a tackle box with everyone's like like I'll make you a needle and I'll, I'll put it away for you just in case you wanted to come back it was terrible man so I, I I don't I don't recommend people go this route but that's that's it's different what the, times yeah, too man. exactly it's like 20 years ago it's completely oh, different yeah. world this is what the universe brought me man it's like mm-hmm. I wanted to get into this and this was my direction it was like like I said it was laid out for me like I met the right people at the right time and I just ran with it man Cool, man. Tattooing out of people's houses, kitchens, out of my bedroom. Like when you switch to like real needles and real machines, what was first, real needles or real machines? Um, so it, it all it all happened at the same time. Again, my my mom saw that I had this interest, and she took me to Unimax. Oh, cool, man! And she brought me my first tattoo machine. Wow! And I remember walking in there and like <clears throat> looking at all these needles, and I had no idea what the fuck they were. So I'm asking the lady behind the counter, I'm like, what do I need? And she's just like, oh, this is a nine mag, 12 mag. Like she's give all these things. She's like saying all these things. I had no idea what she's talking about. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'll take that. I'll take one of these. I'll take one of these. I had no fucking clue. But how cool it is, right? When you oh. first get home and open oh, and you amazing. start seeing like the tube oh, and you're amazing. like, wow, look at the yep. tip. It's fly. Uh-huh, so cool. Uh-huh. Like everything is like, it out. wow. So I also, that day I bought the... I think it's Huck Spalding, A to Z, or I forget. It was it was one book uh-huh. that had like the only information you could find. I think it was like Tattooing A to Z, it was called. Mm-hmm. And I remember like reading this thing like a like a science book or something. You know, like I had no idea what any of the shit was. And looking back, the information was probably shit. You know, like <laughs> who the fuck knew what was up back then? But. So yeah, so but you know you know what is crazy? What's that? And that very first tattoo machine that I bought, mm-hmm. I bought it in Colombia, right? Yep. My brother took me because I live in Venezuela, but my town is close, like one hour away to okay. the border to Colombia. Yep. So everybody used to go there because the currency was much better to buy in Colombia than in Venezuela. Okay. You know, no, no nowadays, but back then it was. The very first tattoo machine that I bought, it was a Unimax tattoo machine. Was it? Talking Do you about that, which one it was? It was a black one, and okay. it has the Unimax engraved in it. Yes, yes, I still have the frame. I still have mine too. Yeah, man. I have it in a little box. Cool. I, I have, still have my homemade tattoo machine too. What? No, I never, I never, I never use a helmet. My friends were using it. I never used it. You become my brother. Was like, let me take you to buy your first mm-hmm. machine. You, mm-hmm. you have to do this. You so did he, it the right way. <laughs> he took, again. It was that a good machine. It was plastic tooth disposable. That wasn't disposing. It was cleaning kind of. Oh man. And and I have like three bars mm-hmm. and the needles I do it myself but we solder in the needles stuff. yeah but the needle wasn't like made out of the spring it was like needles the mother women like used sewing to needles. sewing needles yeah, that they're yeah. very thin yep, for, yep. for putting like little bim bling in yeah, the it, clothing it works yeah they're super thin so mm-hmm. I put three together and learn how to weld them that's awesome um but no the point is yeah man Unimax so when Unimax. I got to America and I didn't know what was Unimax I, mm-hmm. I got the machine and I never read the name let's say that way the name yeah, was yeah. there that's it right it's like reading any name right yeah, now yeah, but course. then whatever years later i'm in the united states and i check in the magazines and what it shows there is unimax and i'm like let me see oh yeah my tattoo <laughs> machine is unimax and i still don't know that unimax is the place where you buy products yeah. i'm thinking it's a brand mm-hmm. but I realize it's in canal street yeah, they were already in Canada Street. And, and so we go there and realize then that it's yeah. a full supply was, store. Yeah. No, and, no. and they sold to everybody. But what is, a coincidence, what you said about yeah, the universe yeah, trying yeah, to dude, put exactly, check for you on your way, exactly, right? Man, like, just put you on that path. Out man. of all the cities in the world, I could end up anywhere, ended up in like one hour away from Unimax. Exactly. That was my first tattoo. Where you can find anything you want there. It's crazy that yeah, stuff, it's, man. So it's, 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 it seems like they sponsored this podcast, but they don't. <laughs> but still, still, they had everything that you need, man. I don't even know More if they're that, still around. Are they? They are, are yeah, they? man. Yeah. Good. We ordered some stuff from there. I have been a little argue with them, some, some oh, bullshit, over a warranty of a tattoo machine. Mm-hmm. The, kind, the kind of warranty that, yeah, you, you have a warranty for a year, yeah. except... If the machine breaks, you have to pay to get a fix. I was like, what the fuck kind of warranty That's is not that? A warranty. You know what I mean? So and are you still using coils? Uh, no, man. Uh, rotary, you you're right? still using? No. no, no. Yeah, rotary. I think about it every once in a while. Like, 
I'll pick it up. And I'm like, no, this is too heavy. Yeah. Like, so I have to do, I don't do Japanese anymore, but mm -hmm. I was doing some Japanese the other day and I have to do a full leg outline. And I was like, I'm not doing this with a rotary. I got to get my one because I have tons of machines of course, still, right? Of course, yeah. So I took a couple of those machines, set it out with a, I don't know, nine round liner or yep. whatever, round shade or whatever for the line. And now, nah, man, I couldn't you do it. You can't do it? No, nah, man. That, that vibration, oh, that man. noise, it was super loud in my face. And, and 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 the weight, man. That's what I think. It's like we... You, you have to build up that muscle in your hand and now that we have light machines yeah. going back to that it's like a brick you know? it's rough yeah. man it, it, it's heavy and vibrates and the way how I hold the machine I hold it like upside down mm -hmm. when when I was using Cheyenne up to the hook or whatever you mm -hmm. know they still have like the little yeah, you know, yeah because yeah. now I use a pen yeah that's from, what I use too I use the pen Falling Kings um, so but, but back then you know so if, if I rotate it if Rest on my finger so much mm -hmm. weight you cannot oh my god mine's so used to heat man. up like you hey, also heat up? Yeah, yeah it's like here you feel here melting heat, your man. glove and stuff yeah yeah <laughs> i do so miss crazy, man. i miss the the machines that used to have like a personality you know mm -hmm. like the coil machine like you tune it a certain way mm -hmm. like you know this machine's good for one thing yeah I, yes. I love that but i i, I miss the sound of the machine in mm -hmm. that distance. Yes. You yes. know, like Not in that in tattoo ear. conventions, you know, you yes. tattoo and you bean, you yeah, hear it. So yeah. it, you, that kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of related to the green soap smell. Exactly, the smell. Like, like that smell and that sound is mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's tattooing. It's man. already engraved in you, right? Exactly. I miss that, but I don't want to use them myself, no. man. It's, but it, but it's, even setting up multiple coil machines, like it's so much work. Yeah. Compared to like a little cartridge that just like pops in and out. It's like, yeah, man convenience compared to like yeah maybe the coil machines are better but like i can do I don't things know, a lot man. faster you know? i don't know they're slightly better i think they're slightly better and no and, and i have this conversation with many people mm -hmm. that still use them yeah, and yeah. they said the same no man they're better they're stronger they're more I, I but, believe ah, man i i don't know i it's just the convenience there's no there's no reason to go back for I, me I, if i try to think if i could do my tattoos the style that i do mm -hmm. better we call versus my brother. I doubt it, man, because mm. just how comfortable it is and how much you can yeah. rotate the machine so easy to corner and, and the stuff. Efficiency and efficiency of changing efficiency. needles, speed. You don't have to have your clients sitting around yeah. longer. But. And also, when I used to bring them to conventions, mm -hmm. I lost, I lost like, I don't know, 5,000 worth in the two machines oh, yeah. in Vegas. And I was so lucky that... Lost or stolen? It, no, lost. Okay. But I was lucky that the housekeeper... Mm -hmm. or the maid or somebody she found the box and she took it to the manager office or whatever oh that's awesome and and so i was in vegas tattoo convention right and i got this box where i carry my tattoo machine mm -hmm. but it was like probably like a kitchen pot or something that you carry food yeah, so, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that right because i tried to less weight possible so of course i needed plastic so i wrote it in paper to put in there so uh -huh, they don't knock each uh -huh. other but i used to carry around like seven tattoo machines man like you know that the one that's good for three round liner, but it's not so good for a nine round liner. Yeah, and yeah. the good that is for the shading, but it's not too strong for color packers. So the color packer that is whatever, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah, of course, so I used to carry all those machines. I went to finish the day, went to say hi to a bunch of booths to, mm -hmm. you know, you know yeah, how it yeah. is, right? You go say hi yeah. around your friends or whatever, and then went to the room. Next day I walk out of the room, go downstairs, and oh fuck my machines. Went back to the room, the machines are not there. I was like, fuck. What did I do? Man, I got freaked out. I started going crazy. Went to the to the salon again. Because, you know, the convention room, they say, is in the same hotel. Yeah, yeah. But you have to walk like fucking two miles because it's just huge. Yep. So I get there in a rush super early in the morning, like nine or something. You know, they open at 12 to the public and, and I start looking around. Happy accident. This lady with a security staff walking by. I said, listen, listen. I lost my machine last night. So I know I went to different booths. Can we check the camera to see if I put in one of those booths <laughs> and maybe my friends, you know, put aside yeah, to prevent yeah. that. She's like, what, what What? do you mean? Like, yeah, just a plastic box white like this, whatever. She, oh, I have it. I went, what? Yeah, I have it. So you found the lady who, who found it? What are the fucking chances? What? In Vega, that hotel has probably like 5,000 employees. Wow. And I asked that lady that she, so she, she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm the manager of, of security of Florida or whatever. One of the maids. So the thing was that when I got to my room, it was super late, probably 2 a.m., whatever. Yeah. I tried to open and I couldn't open. So I put it in the food cart that was there. <laughs> you left it outside your room? Outside my room <laughs> in the top of a fucking car. 
and still, man, I don't know what time that maid came to pick that and found it and took it to that lady. That's wild. What are the chances? I mean, <laughs> you, you lucked out. That's fucking like, crazy. That's like pure man. luck, man. Right? That's pure luck. Wow, man. <laughs> but, but it's part of that fucking having to try with. So now I have my machine in my hey, pocket in or pocket. my backpack, you know? So the backpack that you carry to you yeah. everywhere. And if there. you lose it, it's not a big deal. Like, you're not really attached to these rotary machines. Exactly. You know? they, like, they don't, they're they're not the that mean, meaningful. Like exactly. you said, with the other tattoo machines, like you learn how to set it up. Exactly. You replace a spring for mm -hmm. something that's hard and soft. Yeah. So they're kind of custom to you. Mm hmm. That's what I miss. Now that. these other machines, like all of them are the same. Yep. So if you that's lose it. one, you next day go to any one, not supplier, deal. give me another machine. Fuck yep. I lost 500, 700,000, but whatever, but yeah. it's, it's not exactly. much, it's, you know, it's compared not like with an emotional loss. You know? Yeah, man. <laughs> Crazy. What are the chances? <laughs> so, but you use it now when you, 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 you tattoo me, right? Yeah. Uh, you used one of the, Oh, that was, that was, that was the, one of the FK irons too. So I'm still using FK irons. Um, I'm using one of their pens. I forget. I forget the, the flux by them. any chance? I don't think so. The one that you. It's the first pen they made. Oh, I'm know. not sure what the name is. I'm me terrible either. with names. Yeah, me too. But I know that half the flux because we were just talking about it. Yep. So I bought it. It comes with two different batteries. Mm -hmm. I mean, that shit is the chair. They're, it's good, it, man. I, I can feel it. Like I've, ha I've been using it for maybe four or five years now, but I could feel the difference. Like it's definitely worn. I don't know what the pieces are inside, but like mm -hmm. something's wearing down. And so I'm just going to use it until oh, it's okay. broken. Okay. You know? Yeah. The only downside with those machines is that if they fall, they're gone. Yeah. It's a yeah. miracle oh, that, that, that you can keep using yeah, it. I know. If they fall. I know. Versus that, that coils, you can throw them from the airplane and <laughs> pick true. it up, dust pick it, it up, and keep going. Fix it up, change the spring. You're yeah. Good. Maybe, you know, let's cue, adjust <laughs> it and keep going. Dude, yeah, going back to when I got my first tattoo machine, I remember having like tuning what I th thought was uh, tuning the machine, but it was like glowing like a blue spark, you know, where, where uh -huh. the contact. And I thought like, this is cool. Like <laughs> it's got lights and stuff. Like I had no idea that it was all fucked up. Yeah, for but, me, for me was man, and this is bad. For me was like, it's not fast enough. So I used to put it. It probably would say fourteen volt. Ooh. If I want to estimate, but my machine didn't even have numbers. Yeah, yeah. But I just keep pushing it hard to the point that I put my finger in the bar uh -huh. and it cannot stop at all. Like, yes, so I feel that yes, heat in my yes. finger. Like, I was that's like, so yeah, good. that's good. Let's start. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. how I didn't freak people up, man. Like, cutting, you know. Dude, I cut people for years. Like, yeah. it's. It's crazy. I didn't, man. And I don't know how to tell you the truth. Yeah. If, if, if I try to use right now a a coil machine as fast as that I probably gotta just oh, yeah. cut like I'm using a, a bisturi or something you know <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy how far along like all the equipment and the inks and all that stuff has come you know like the industry has changed so much in the last like, yeah, you know 10 years really like there's huge <clears throat> companies actually investing money into these products which is it's great man and companies building machines and building needles but also furniture and and products yes like, yes like there's aftercare so and stuff made, like that man. yeah man and people are taking advantage of it which is awesome definitely i remember when i was in vegas that took a mention also mm -hmm. um there were people walking by the booth asking like so we work with this pharmaceutical what product do you think is needed in your industry like they were oh, really wow. interesting in interviewing like, and getting information from is from that tattooists. around the time that like the first tattoo show showed up oh, in vegas no, no no like was that OTV. around the time tv yeah like the first tattoo oh, show because i feel like a lot of people like got interested after it was on tv it became mainstream, became mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but it was after because when miami Inc. came out mm -hmm. i wasn't tattooing yet in tattoo shops. Oh, okay. yep when i hmm I don't would you know do you know what year it came out? I have no idea. No, no, no idea at all. Seems so long ago though. But probably I, I was in Vegas probably in two thousand ten, maybe. So do you 11. miss the tattoo convention? <laughs> yes and no. So yes, I miss them. When you know it's that kind of thing that you don't know that you love them until you until you don't have it. You don't yeah. have it? Yeah, you're right. So when I Remember, I'm pretty new on, on this, right? Compared with many other... Like, I used to see well, you tattooing. I was about to say, I, I met you at a tattoo convention the first time, right? The very first time I met you yeah. was in um, Philadelphia Tattoo Philly Convention, tattoo. but I wasn't tattooing yet. Oh, you were? No, really? but you were there tattooing. Okay. And and you were tattooing a lady. I remember... I wish I remember. I think you were tattooing 
a girl or a lady. Okay. But I don't remember. So, so I remember really seeing well. you at a lot of conventions. Yes. So this is the thing. Remember, I don't know anything about the tattoo industry. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. And I start tattooing in a tattoo shop. And mm -hmm. the owner of this place is a great guy to make money. But yep. he's not interested in the industry as an industry, yeah, right? Yeah. It's more about a business. Of course. And I don't I have nothing negative to say about it. I respect whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's um, that's one approach. It's an approach, yeah. right? So he never talks about going to convention. He don't believe in going to conventions. That's mm -hmm. a wasting of time. We can make more money being at home. That's his mindset. He, because he's not wrong. He's not wrong <laughs> at all. <laughs> and, but the thing is that, again, I didn't know anything, right? So I started tattooing there. I started making little tattoos. And mm -hmm. then... Little by little, people start coming asking for my name now. Mm -hmm. And I feel now responsible. Okay, if I got to do tattoos, I have to be good. And I don't want to be the one just taking walk-ins. I want to do shit that yeah. represent my name. People come asking for me, right? Of course. So I start pushing and then I bought like um, Nico Hurtado's video. I think the very first oh, yeah, one was that. Joshua Carlton. Joshua I think it was Carlton. the first one. He's the first guy who actually took on that role right? of being like a, a teacher a teacher know, and was, making this yeah. more like a professional team yeah. rather than right yeah. so um so i bought his video um then i bought nico hurtado one of the pinup girls no mm -hmm. the, the, the day of the dead girls i think yeah, was his yeah, first video yep. one of those videos. that was a good video they yeah. both were good yep. nico hurtado i don't remember exactly but i think that joshua carlton was very interesting teaching like this machine is faster or mm -hmm. it's longer strokes mm -hmm. so you can get solid black this other is more to smoother shading, yep. whatever he was so interested in still doing like the deep black underneath yeah. of the color you know kind of the traditional His approach, approach but was was realism so good at the time you know it was yeah, like man. i yeah yeah no yeah, and it's still man it's still he got yeah, that kind still, of or that black strong black underneath of the colors mm -hmm. or, or whatever right for for his tattoos so i, I went crazy i started buying those i started it was not many good videos on on youtube yeah then it was just some video if any i don't remember if youtube was big enough or not so then i bought um oh, fuck. <sighs> Nick Busters. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he got what, a book first or yeah. video or something. I, I don't remember. He, he a put book. out a book, like a, like a pamphlet book kind of thing first. <laughs> the, the very first one I got from him, I think, was a book book. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I cannot remember anymore. If it was probably painting book or yeah, tattooing yeah. book. I don't yeah, remember, yeah. but he got a lot of good. Uh, I don't remember. Like, you always learn things, right, from people, mm -hmm. and you keep them in the back of your head. Like, he always said, trust the process. I read that first time in my life out of Nick Buster's yeah. uh, book, and up to today, it's still in the back still of my head. Still think about it, yeah. Every time I'm tattooing, sometimes I'm tattooing, I'm like, why is it rose? It's <laughs> looking like shitty, right? I'm, I'm like, hmm, something is growing, yep. but I'm doing what I have to do. Exactly. Like what I do every time. But why, you know why the I steps you got to take. And then I'm like, okay, trust the process. Exactly. And then you keep going, and you're, ah, yeah, yeah. At the end, it all right? comes together. But it happened to you sometimes. Of like, course, yeah, you of course. You feel I like, mean, hmm, this shit doesn't look like right, but I'm doing what I have yep. to do. Well, sometimes when you're looking at a tattoo half done, it's like, yeah, you got the darks and maybe the mids in there, and mm -hmm. it's not going to look good until it has the other side of it, yeah. which is the lights and the, the or, highlights. Or even sometimes you have, like, I mean, our tattooing styles are different of course but sometimes for for me for example you have almost done the tattoo but you haven't put any background and that tattoo looks super flat mm -hmm. because there is nothing to really push the exactly. highlights out exactly. right so that, that's the thing so i just have to st still repeat you know it's trust the process, trust the process. It's, and it's, i learned it from him crazy right so like good man so many years ago man it's funny my client the other day asked me is it hard to learn how to tattoo now and of course not. There's like, there's so much information now. Yeah, like man. you can be a good tattooer within like three years, maybe if less. If you put a work exactly. into it, it's a lot easier. But back man. when we started, man, like <clears throat> information was so slim, you know, we just trial and error, trial and error, yeah. you know, and you know. And, and just, just that's a two machines. The fact that you can use a rotary machine for exactly. everything, you don't need to worry about setting up right and before Dude. you have to really know how to set up those yeah, cord remember machines. all the things we had to learn back then was like you have to learn your equipment you got to figure out how your power supply works you have to learn how the machine works runs how you tune it sometimes you had to make your own needles you had to solder mm -hmm. it to the bar like all these things you got to learn before you yeah. even started tattooing what kind of spring you gotta use yeah, sometimes you replace a spring ticket or thinner yeah for you gotta be power. like a mechanic and an artist <laughs> at the same time a lot of tools next to you yeah to adjust man. those I love that too. Like I 
got so deep into machines. Like I started like building my own machines. Like I would tune up all the people I worked with machines and it was like a n- whole love for these yeah. like things, you know, up to a point and then it becomes like, Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. And then there's a pain <laughs> in the ass and you're like, fuck this. I just want convenience. You know? Yes. And that's, that's where I'm at now. I just want to, I just want to get to get to the tattooing. You know? Yes. That, that, that's what I, I feel is one of the biggest beauty of these kind of tattoo machines now is that you really just focus on the tattoo. Yep. Right? You yep. don't need to focus. Exactly. So when I try to teach somebody, you know, that's starting to tattoo or whatever, any advice I tell them is just make it so automatic possible, mm-hmm. all that set up, everything, that when you tattoo, you just focus on tattooing. Just focus on art. You yep. don't need to. So drawing paper. Do many drawings you can. We, If you're going to do black and gray, for example, practicing. So when you tattoo, you don't need to guess so much about it's darker, it's mm-hmm. lighter, should I go dark? You're just doing it now. Yep. So just have your idea planned out, have your, your equipment all set up and just have something to look at mm-hmm. and do it, you know, right, like, yeah. try to make it as simple as possible. That's good advice. So I always, you, I don't know. I don't know how you cannot belong to a group of artists that have this kind of style. I don't know if you still have it because I seem you now do some realism in mm-hmm. color. You do. Uh, so you were doing it like a Native American yeah, color realism. But you have that style that w- I would say you guys created like a, a school by yourself or something. It's kind of a new school. It was kind of like a new school, yeah. But it's very often when you say new school, very quick jump to the brain, that kind mm-hmm. of cartoonish style, right? Yep, yep. As a, like Jesse Smith or, mm-hmm. or Timmy B, all those guys, right? Yep. I mean, in beautiful, amazing. Of course, to, no, I'm not trying to say like, oh, that's that. No, that fucking that. Um, but you guys start where I got a lot of organic yep. things like plants, kind of base shapes, and and you were exploring a lot of that bold black line that yep. fade into a color sometimes, yes, or, or yes. A, up to a very thinner line to give depth to the tattoos, all of so that. Right. I would give credit for me to nick baxter like yeah. when i was coming up he was the guy like right. i remember like first seeing his work and was amazed that you can actually do that with tattooing you know because there was there was people i looked up to before that but like no one was pushing it like he was mm-hmm. so it's like he brought to my eyes brought tattooing to a whole nother level and i was just trying to like figure that out and how to like bring some of that into my work Mm-hmm. you know and in the attempts of doing that it's like i created what became my tattooing you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i think all the people around me too were like sort of trying to figure this out the style out as well but now it's like i don't really think about style anymore it's tattooing for me is less about me and more about the client mm-hmm. it, this goes back to like why i don't really post much you know it's like it's it's not about me like Instagram and all that I want it to be my journey and like stuff that I'm doing but tattooing isn't really about me anymore you know mm-hmm. it's like I'm, I've sort of took my ego out of tattooing and that that does like I think it takes away from like having that personal style but I'm happier with it you know it's like I want the client to be happy yes. it's not about really I'm not going to push my client to get something crazy because I want to do it you know yeah man I've seen that so many times and I don't I don't agree with that either People like, yeah, I want to get this portrait of my ma- mother. And they're like, yeah, no, today I feel like tattooing yeah, a rose yeah. with a lightning going through. And that's what you got to get because it's the best. Or, or that's, that's, of course, the extreme, right? But mm-hmm. also people that, I don't know, want something black and gray, whatever. They're like, no, no, no. I do color. You should get color exactly, because that's what exactly. I do. It's so much about the art. Come on. And there, there needs to be a balance because that's, that's the way you do push what you can do with tattooing is like you have these ideas and you want to have a client and you want to push that idea on your mm-hmm. client, which is cool. But like the, you know, the more I tattoo, the the less I want it to be about me, you know, yeah. like where I want to be creative the most is painting now because it's just, that's just me. Yes. You know, you can do whatever you exactly. want. Something it's goes like, wrong. It's exactly. a painting. It's on you. It's your yep. responsibility. So tattooing is more of a collaboration with you and your client yeah. as a painting is like, whatever I feel like doing, I'm going to do that. And if people yeah. like it, fine. If not, I'm still cool with it. You know, yeah. I I feel like it's a good way to think about tattooing for me. Is I try to do what I love mm-hmm. and post it, 
and hopefully I'm gonna find people that love what I'm doing and wanna get and more of will. that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Will. That's so, that's the beauty of tattoo. It's like the anything you post, you're gonna find that audience and you're gonna do more of that. Mm -hmm, you know, so mm -hmm. just be careful what you post. Be careful you know? what you exactly. post. Exactly. Yeah. When when I was no, I cannot say when I was newer, but still up to like probably four years ago, whatever, I was doing a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Just because I love it. But my if you check around my Instagram, whatever, mm. it looks so messy. It looked like more like the page of a tattoo shop yeah. than of an artist. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you see a little bit of everything. And then I realized I didn't want to do many of those stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I wanted to do, I wanted to do them because it was like, oh, watercolor. I want to explore that. That looks fun. Of course. And and you do it, right? Japanese, I like it. I want to explore that. New yep. tradition, tradition, whatever, right? You want to explore them. You... But then you got a point that I feel like, Man, I I'm, I feel like I'm happier when I'm doing black and gray realism or color realism, yeah. right? And then you start posting just that, and then you realize all your clientele yeah, goes yeah, to that side. They want what they see, you know. Yeah. Like you need to show the clients what you're capable of and what your interests are, you know. Yeah. I try to see, like, I try to say, like, that the two is more like I'm I'm like a link between the materials and the client. Mm -hmm. I'm not the art itself, right? So I just have. To to put it in the exactly. person trying to get myself a little bit out of the way but at the same time it's all your experiences that are gonna come through mm -hmm. you you're, you're right you you're know? right yeah, when I mean, you paint you, a tool whatever. you are the hand that's putting it yeah. on there you know so it's like it just for me it's just not about imposing my my ways yeah at least I, I try to say I try to be very open for what a client wants mm -hmm. and I try to present interpretations of those ideas definitely to what I feel it would be more interesting as a tattoo and as a piece of art let's say mm -hmm. right um, in a humble way, I'm not trying to say like, oh yeah, what I do, don't know what I mean? but, yeah, but, course, but the P, the final project itself. But I try to always suggest what I feel is the best, but never impose it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd rather don't tattoo somebody that comes like, it has to be done this way in a noise grown. So I try, I'd rather than saying you have to do it my way. I try to rather say, yeah. let's don't do it. Find somebody else who do it that way. But at the same time, it's like you get those clients sometimes that they want it a specific way mm -hmm. you know do you ever get that where like someone comes in they're like i want this exactly like this yes I, or mm -hmm. they'll bring you like a reference of someone else's tattoo yeah. and they want that yes and that's <laughs> how do you you know that's that's a hard thing to deal with is because you you look at the situation and you're like so the original artist got to be creative they got to explore mm -hmm. and now you're bringing me their idea and yeah. I can't be creative. Now I need to do what they did. You know, it's like trying to explain that to a client. It's, it's, it's rough sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's our responsibility to I'm like, guilty. educate. I'm guilty of sometimes listening too much to the clients. Mm -hmm. And I, part of the reason that I decided to close my books is that new clients that got to come from now on, it got to be a little more like less that, mm -hmm. um, the clients are not always wrong. And what I'm trying to say is that sometimes that idea or the way how they want to represent, like they want in this little area, 20 things, and you, you say, bro, let's just do one big thing that represents all of those concepts and it's going to be a much better tattoo and yeah. they keep pushing and pushing. So I'm lucky at this point that I don't get much. I get people that show you, like, yeah, yeah. I like this tattoo, but do you think? Yeah. It's just I like this direction, yeah. right? So sometimes I'm guilty of staying too close to that idea. Mm -hmm. Because in my, at least in my well, capability. You know, you know they're going to be happy with that idea they brought you. Yeah, but you don't want to copy somebody else's tattoo. Exactly. But at the same That's time, somebody want, for example, a, a Zeus with a trident. I mean, no matter where you put that trident, it's going to look like the reference. It was exactly. a Zeus with a exactly. trident. That's what I'm trying to say, yep, right? Yep. It's only so much you can bring to it's that. It's so table. much you can bring. So yep. at the end, you just move things around a little bit. Yep. But you, you know, you got to do that reference or that. Yeah, me that I do realism, for example, it's not like I do many drawings in preparation. I just use mm -hmm. real photos yep. as a reference. It's not many other sculptures I can use for reference, right? Exactly. So I can it's change like, that trident like to a different trident, had, yeah. but still gonna be a trident next mm -hmm. to a suit or That's Neptune true. or whatever, right? So, yeah, sometimes I feel like, like, man, this tattoo look too much like that reference, and I feel a little shame of that. But at the same time, yeah. I'm thinking like, but uh, what but would again, I have done different? It's, it's not right? about you, you know. what I'm saying, yeah, it's like yeah. that client doesn't know there's like a million. Well, maybe they do, but that client doesn't know that it's been done a shitload of times. You know, yeah. because you're in the industry, you see this every day. But like that client's gonna leave with a cool tattoo. It doesn't matter if it's done a million times. Yeah, know? yeah. So I, I, I feel like 
at the end, I have to for sure know that I'm not going to copy somebody's tattoo. Mm -hmm. Like, just take that tattoo and print it out and transfer no, it, no, you know? Always got to do an interpretation of that. Yep, yep. Uh, but I'm, but if, if you use a reference, someone else used the same reference, mm -hmm. it's basically like copying a tattoo, you know? It's like we're all going to the same source now for, mm -hmm. for information, you know? Yeah. So how, what do you think about, because my mind is very uh, spread ideas. Mm -hmm. and what do you think about how people should start tattooing? Are you from the school that feel like you have to get an apprentice and suck somebody ass for like two years before you're able well, to tattoo out orange? Or you more like just do whatever you want and fuck people's skin? Or, or, so, so what is your approach? <laughs> I told you how I started. Yeah, th and how you like started, I said, I don't, I don't recommend going that route because it is a, a longer learning process. And like, sometimes you learn such a very bad habit that's so, so hard to get rid of them. Habits. Even when I got into the first tattoo shop, and I thought like I made it, like I'm in a shop now. Mm -hmm. Finally, after like you know being a scratch or whatever, like I'm looking up to this guy who owns this shop. And looking back, like everything he told me was wrong. Everything he was doing was wrong. So even though I was at a shop and I wasn't really being an apprentice, but like I was trying to learn from him and everything's wrong. Like he was just a terrible teacher, terrible tattoo artist. Wow. Good guy. But anyway, so <clears throat> I recommend tr going the apprentice route, I think is, is the smartest bet. But there's also people taking advantage of that apprentice system, mm -hmm. you know, like you can become like a shop slave and you're paying for it and not learn anything mm -hmm. like that's true as well but that does get your foot in the door it gets you to like no other artists and maybe later on you can move from your situation onto a better situation so always getting your foot in the door is the best way and if that means being an apprentice if if you have the drive to learn on your own awesome so much information out there you can do that mm -hmm. you know to have a little private studio for a while but you know i don't recommend any one way because everyone's different and there's so many routes to the same thing yeah. you know <clears throat> i feel like that apprentice in front of the two artists is the best way so far mm -hmm. uh, at least for now the safer way too because yeah you can try to learn in your house yeah. but what if you first read the, ca the chapter where okay, the, let's use this machine, this needle, and this ink, and start yeah. tattooing people, and then you learn about blood borne pathogen or, or cross-contamination or glove or all of that later on. Like, you should have learned it first, but when you learn by yourself, you Amen. might not know, right? Some people are super smart, and they might find all the information first. Some people know, but... I, I'm going to tell you a story. Back when I used to tattoo out of the house and I had metal tubes, I, I, I knew nothing about anything. I used to clean these tubes in the sink with no gloves, hmm. with a like a metal bristle brush, mm -hmm. and I would just like cut my hand up as I'm cleaning this wow, thing, and I have man. like ink all over my hands. Like I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. So it's like. So that's that what I'm saying. Like sometimes, I mean, you could have read something and learn it and do it right, or ask the doctor across the street, right, mm -hmm. and do it right. But not everybody do it that way. It doesn't mean that you dump or anything. It's just that. No, it's you just, assume it's just, based on your own knowledge that most of the time it's not enough when you're learning, right? It's lack of information. But the beauty of now is like there's so much information, yes, yes. so much free information. Like if you, you can basically be an apprentice on your computer, you know, you mm -hmm. can learn everything. You can learn, you know, machines, um, needles, you can learn techniques. You can just watch people tattoo. You can watch videos of people tattooing. That's like, the Imagine best that. way to learn anything. Remember, yes. we used to have to go to conventions or like mm -hmm. hang out at a tattoo shop and like look over someone's shoulder and hope that they tell you something. Or yes. like now it's like you can watch people tattoo. They're talking about it. Like everyone's so open about the information. It's you don't even need an apprenticeship to be honest. I just I'm just saying you should because it'll get your foot in the door in that community. Yes, I like I I like the concept of apprenticeship when you find the right place. Mm -hmm. Every time that I try to teach somebody, I respect them as an artist. I don't use them to clean my bathroom. I pay somebody to do that mm -hmm. shit, you know? I don't have somebody but that I, comes as an artist and you have to earn your way. But so. don't you think some of that's important though? Because you're learning, like for having an apprentice clean your bathroom, you're teaching them how to like 
be clean you know like you're they're cleaning your tubes or whatever like that's not really a thing anymore but like but you're the teaching them simple, how to uh -huh. break down and set I, up your I, studio yeah i teach them how to break down a station yep. put it back together how to sterilize everything mm -hmm. clean replace you know how to even ungrab the bottles and grab yeah, it again yeah. keep it in safe clean all of that but then when they're not doing stuff like that drawing drawing show me mm -hmm. drawings and mm -hmm. drawing then practice on fake skin yep. before you i'd rather use then to you i'd rather have them to use that time to do all of that than than i, I don't know man i just because again i didn't learn in tattoo shops mm -hmm. maybe that's why i don't feel so much attracted to that model right it's it's a bad model because people take advantage of it that's, that's, that's why i don't like man yeah. i know this girl she has so much talent she, she was such a good artist she draw very very well and she was in a shop for like two years mm -hmm. and she was doing just like errands in the shop and go and get coffee and clean here and organize those papers and and she have to pay like six thousand dollars for that time yeah. in that shop and when does she become a better artist like when does she have time to grow exactly you know, you know? It's, it's tough, it's I, a tough I, balance. if she was in my shop i would have her like tattooing fake skin all mm -hmm. fucking day long mm -hmm. because i know she just need that practice before she can tattoo because yeah. you know tattooing is not the same as in paper you know yeah, i mean exactly. we know i'm just saying you know for 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 for, for this recording i said you need to just the angle of the machines and that how deep how mm -hmm. much pressure how not too superficial too deep you know yeah, what? all yeah. of the kind of things you learn just doing it yep trial and error yep. try and error and, and practice and you get that sweet part of the skin doing it you know mm -hmm. okay don't overwork it move the machine a little slower move it a little fast whatever it is you practice is the only way to get course, it so i don't want to have somebody that's, that's in my any, anything in life but that you I, I appreciate when people is like okay i'm not drawing right now and i see a paper in the floor i gotta mm -hmm. pick it up and maybe i see dust there dust there whatever because they're showing an appreciation for the shop and they everybody mm -hmm. every artist should respect that shop well, not that's... just the owner it's not like it's your shop it's not mine i'm not gonna clean exactly. no it's not that it's you play the work you also also represent you you mm -hmm. know well don't you find like most shops have that hierarchy where it's like it's the owner who is on the top and all the other guys and then the apprentice is always on the bottom so they're doing mm -hmm. all the stuff that no one else wants to do because realistically we're we're, we're kind of lazy right <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah I know, I know what you're saying again I, that's what i wanted to ask you because i want to listen to different opinions mm -hmm. it's similar to the very sensitive uh conversation about the two schools uh, people disagree some people agree my I, thoughts I, are still there i have no opinion because it doesn't affect me at all yeah so. i i man yeah let's not even go yeah. that direction right <laughs> yeah. now because so, i'd rather not go i mean yeah if if you really want to get into the tattoo business you will figure out a way if it is tattoo school and you go that route that's your path i mean i can't tell yeah. you what your no no i, I wouldn't about. put nothing against nothing but if I have to advise somebody for a path, find a tattoo shop that you like the people there yep. and try to get into that shop. Sometimes it's very hard to get into that shop, but then find other shops, you know, in the same. So somebody that can teach you and make sure they don't rip you off. Or exactly. You, like shit. you remember like back in the day, man, like every shop had like three or four guys who just hung around and they mm -hmm. were like waiting to like learn something, you yeah, know, like man. whatever happened to that, you know, like, everyone feels like they're entitled to like an apprenticeship or whatever but like work on it be there go to the shop you want to work mm -hmm. at like meet the people talk to them just go there and try to learn as much as possible you mm -hmm. know and eventually they might take you in you know definitely if you, if you have skills they're gonna see that like you bring your sketchbook you bring your portfolio around like build your portfolio before anything at least know? at least that a tattoo shop is way too busy already with too many artists mm -hmm. they have no more room for nobody else i doubt that any tattoo shop will deny the opportunity to somebody that have that talent already exactly. and that and that driven to do it exactly. so if you have the talent that driven just go and pursue it right mm -hmm. cool man yeah. so you tattooing like what like two three days a week or you no i'm, I'm still doing five days yeah, five days a week now. Five days yeah, a week. Yeah, but I only do one tattoo a day now, which is mm -hmm. which is great because I'll I'll tattoo half the day and I'll paint half the day or oh, I'll sculpt cool, half man. the day or I'll just go home and play video games. Like I like having my time to myself now. Cool. What you kind know? of video game do you play? Call of Duty. Yeah. That's online. Online. You good? I'm I'm okay. Yeah. I <laughs> suck, man. I, I used to I have a what is that xbox 360 mm -hmm. i bought it i don't know like 10 years ago when it just came out yeah and I, I have like 20 games yeah 
probably have Call of Duty, but I don't know which one is the last one. Man. Because they keep coming with new dude, ones. The games are so good now. I, I, so I just seen like commercials and stuff and, wow. and in it, the stores, the graphics and, and the stories and it's the It's so speed immersive and the tool, now. Man. It's but it's such a time suck. Like that was the scene. I, I haven't played in at least at least eight years. At least seven years. Since I'm with my current wife. Like when I was single, mm-hmm. Every time that I get single, I use some time for myself, mm-hmm. and then I get away with playing video games yeah, in the yeah, line. Yeah. But the rest of the time, man, that thing is there in the drawer. And I have my son, and sometimes I feel like tempted. I gotta let him play, but no, no I don't want him man, to get into no, games. That's smart, man. Just he he's sometimes get my phone and he's playing what is um that game that uh, everybody's playing, man. Uh, I feel so dumb with we, we not knowing the name, but it's a bunch of. Same color, like well, who's the imposter and who's oh, not I have the... no idea. <laughs> <laughs> is it a phone game? It's in computer and okay. it's big, man. People is making a lot of money playing that shit on YouTube there's, dude, there's and people so watching them many playing games and... right now that kids are so addicted to. And and yeah, he's he he getting the phone and he get a little out of control. So mm-hmm. you have to like, okay, no more, no more. So he's just five. Dude, when before I started painting, I used to play literally six to eight hours of video games a day so i had to quit like like it was a drug like i had to quit cold turkey and i used that time to learn how to paint which is awesome and i still i had to stay away from it like like how many years ago we talking this was like 11 years ago cool and i just gave it up and started using that time to paint and that's where i really like put in the time wow. to learn a new skill. I've never you know? been so much into video games, man. Oh, I have man. an Atari when I was in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. I have adjusted with one button, one little Oh, yeah. Stick. I remember that. And that thing has like 90 games in it already yeah. or whatever. So I used to play the little card that goes in the fog, then mm-hmm. in the night, then in the day, whatever. I don't know. A couple of those games, but never really got into it. Maybe because a lot of my friend has like Mario Bros, Sega, whatever, yeah. whatever, and I have with a fucking Atari, so yeah. I cannot compete <laughs> with them, but... We can afford to buy the fancy crap that they have. So I'd rather stay away from that. Yeah. Then they came all the video games, places that you go and pay to the, the oh, yeah. you play in the TVs. Oh, yeah. They have a bunch of TVs. All of these in Venezuela still. Never got into that, man. That's I, good, I man. paint a couple of graffitis for those places in the walls, a decoration mm-hmm. and stuff, but that was there. Uh, Just <laughs> never got into it. Never That's, got into I mean, it, it's, man. It's, it's, but it's I feel, I feel like I missed something great, you know, because mm. people get so much into that, man. In, in America, well, it's a big culture too, man. Think of it like it's it's an art form, you know. Yeah. Like think of how many artists get employed to like create these worlds. This is why I love video games now. I mean, back then, like Mario and stuff are kind of basic games. Like one artist can do it, but like now they're creating these like fantasy worlds. You got concept artists. You got people who have to create landscapes like so many artists are employed yeah, to create these worlds that we get to walk around in and like you know it, it it's it's beautiful it is you know? it is and it's, you gotta create a story and the stories. Yeah, oh man. man so games are so immersive now <clears throat> i i can't i can't wait for like vr to become the next thing although i feel like i can't wear that fucking headset man like why not my eye i mean you're like this far away from the screen like literally like <laughs> that can't be good for your eyes but it's i would i would assume that they're working in the technology to don't make it so bad for your eye like they, I, they're making the I math to like okay i don't think let's lower the amount fuck, of man when there's like billions <laughs> of dollars to be made i don't think they give a fuck about your eyes what i feel is like people gotta be really immersed into that world man because a lot of people I, have shitty life and shitty jobs and I mean, having the opportunity i mean there's like there's games called um second world or something like that where people actually like buy like real estate in these like worlds and like they have jobs in these worlds like people are already doing it so wow. imagine when it's like super immersive super do you do you, do you watch tv at all it's have you seen of... like black mirror yeah 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 dude like that technology where they just like put a thing in their temple and they're like all of a sudden they're like and in, you in this world yeah, yeah like when that happens, I remember fucked. that episode was very fucked up. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like that, everything that fucking yeah, 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 yeah. Black Mirror. Is I love show, that man. show, man, because it's like it, they're touching upon stuff that I think is coming within the next 10, 15 yeah. years. So they're and, like. And that, what I feel like they're doing is that a little exaggeration of current things that are already happening mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that are much worse of what we really appreciate in it. Yes. For yes. example, that. People is so addicted. We all, I'm not going to say I'm safe. I'm not that deep into that, but I'm not safe of um, 
likes in Instagram, for example. Yes, it's it's, it's you very post addictive. a photo and you want to be approved. You want mm -hmm. people to like that shit. You want people. To, you want to see. You cannot evaluate how how your work is evolving based on mm -hmm. what people feel about it. Exactly. Kinda right. And it's not it's not real, but at the same time it is, right? Like if you do something that you might be proud, mm -hmm. but you put it on and you realize that you get ten likes. Yeah, and then you <laughs> then, feel like then hmm. you feel bad about it, right? Right? It's yeah, weird. it's touching nerve. Yeah. But then I don't know if this happened to you. Sometimes, ah, man, it happened to me all the time. I do this beautiful tattoo. Mm -hmm. I fucking love it. Blow my mind. Post it online. Yep. Hundred likes. Yep. And then I do little tattoo. Yep. A one hour session. Post it online. Twelve hundred likes. It's like it's, what the fuck is going yeah, on? It's man. so you cannot really change your life because you of a like or can't. not. But the point is that it's getting more and more. No, it's true. They they use like gambling you know th like theory to like they they figure out how to like give you ser what is it serotonin or i whatever? think they, they those, basically yeah. make you an addict basically yes. like they've studied this they know the way the human brain works they've it's crazy they're man. putting so much money into it. of course man it's it, social media is scary man and it like you said i i'm addicted to it i know it and i try yeah. to stop but like it's so embedded into our everyday experience now yeah it's, i think it's wild. i think it's kind of impossible to just you cannot just turn your back to social media you could you, you could but it's part of it's like when when we didn't have tvs and mm -hmm. tv was a thing everybody was like that fucking machine gotta kill everybody but now everybody's on tv you know what i mean you no, need no, it no, of course it's of a course. whole in, industry oh. in both sides people that watch it people that produce mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. it's, it's a reality so the war is moving in this social media war you could easily say like, I'm not gonna post never again a photo of mm -hmm. any of my paintings or my mm -hmm. life or whatever. You very quick gotta kind of disappear, you will disappear of the world. That's or, the problem. Or you gotta miss the opportunity to reach a, the planet in a second. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So yes, definitely, I don't know saying it's the best thing ever, but denying the fact that we need it or yeah, it's course. there for us to use it and abuse it if we want. You know what I mean? It's it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, uh, it it's, is. It's, it's using our need for like community. It's like expanding our need for a community. And like, you do feel like irrelevant if you're not on any platform. Yes. Like I have a friend who is a coworker who's like off all social media and I'm, I'm impressed. Like he, wow. can, he just like lives his life tattoos and just does his thing and like, doesn't worry about that stuff. But I like it. <laughs> so yeah. like, what, what I have learned is to stay away from it meaning i barely use it so i go mm -hmm. post a photo and get my fuck out of there this is what i'm trying to do so because before it was like scroll mm -hmm. passing and passing mm -hmm. oh this is beautiful so now and then i still do it yeah if i find myself with time sitting around a little bit i use it so I, because i follow a bunch of painters yep and i like to see you know what is going on of with that and, 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 and i still love seeing are being produced being yeah. made you know what i mean when you see people putting mm -hmm. brush strokes and, mm -hmm. and seeing final products or this stage that stage then you see that but i love seeing that yeah, so and you'll I, never see that unless you how? have social media yeah how unless you go visit someone's studio which, but then you'll be yeah. see one person's exactly. studio and might be close to you you cannot see every artist that you like that is in the other side of the planet but think about the quality of like experience you're having like just scrolling on your phone seeing someone painting it's cool you get to see a little insight but but have you visited people's studios yeah, like that's yeah. a whole another thing and I, I feel like people are missing out on that like that real tangible stuff you know yes so i would say social media is great but never to replace real life but it is that's is the problem. that the problem that it's is replacing problem. real life and you can replace especially like we were just talking about vr like that's this mm -hmm. is this is where we're headed where like you don't have to leave your house like you no, no, I know. For me, for me, it, I, I've easy example, it, and it's not that deep, but easy example is like I still appreciate mm -hmm. magazines mm -hmm. rather than internet. I can watch a million different painters on internet in that phone, yep. great quality, but never like smelling the magazine. So it's like that that social interaction of going to the store, yep. buying the magazine, or how sad I feel felt, for example, when they closed the Barnes and Noble in Norwood mm -hmm. to put another fucking liquor <laughs> store in that place. And you know what I mean? You feel like you miss going to that place, how it's quiet and it's cold, it's nice and fresh, and all the magazines, and you mm -hmm. walk around, maybe you get a coffee and, and read a little bit of a book to see if you want to get or not. But what's interesting is that you 
you miss that because you've experienced that. Yes. Now the next generation is not they gonna won't have, have that. So what they have is social media. Like mm-hmm. think about how that changes what the next couple generations are gonna be. You know, mm-hmm. like they're not gonna have that nostalgia. Like you and I know what it's like without the internet, but they don't, man. It's 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 a scary place that we could end up. I know. You know? But I, I guess for them it will be a point where where Elon Musk put everybody's computer in their brains. So people are going to be like, I miss when I have to scroll uh-huh. the finger in the screen. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't touch I a fucking screen. You'll see my brain. I don't, How far I can miss this that. go, man? Like, I miss changing fonts because that one was cooler. Now it's just in my brain. I don't need true. to. That's you know, true. Always you got to miss something from, from the times man, before, right? I guess. I can't even imagine the day where you're going to have to like update your, your brain oh chip. God. How scary. You know? I was like, oh, this one kind of like, it's... It, the it's, signal's not right. I need to get a new one. You I know. know like, man. How scary because I know a lot of people that they can wait for the new phone to come out and they have it. They learn how to use it back and forth. Mm-hmm. All the tricks, all that, whatever, whatever. Like my daughter, she's 13 and the other day I was like, man, I'm running out of battery. She was like, oh, here, pff, yeah. put it here, lower the screen, uh-huh, put that uh-huh. thing. I was like, whoa, it's and if, right there. Exactly. Oh, I was like watching something and she's like, oh, you can record your screen if you want. You go here, click here, click here, click here. Click here. Like super easy, right? And she's not all the time in the phone. Mm-hmm. Now she has phone, but it's not just all the time. You know, but absorbing so up easy. And yep. it. My son, he's five, since he's like three, he cannot read and he can open a Spotify and look for his favorite song and click it. He learned, you know. Yep. So, you know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. It's, it's so different, man. And this, the scary thing to me is um, like what that does to the social aspect you know the community sense like us talking Mm -hmm. face to face like that's it's slowly becoming irrelevant you know it's like now they they're doing school at home at home they're doing everything at home you know there's this push like amazon's a a huge thing and now like you don't have to go to the store anymore like you don't have to do anything anymore man you know like where are we going i know you know with this thing of the podcast for example right Mm -hmm. Uh, i bought a lot of this stuff in amazon Mm -hmm. super convenient Next day you get it. Plus, there is no store local where you can go and buy a microphone, for mm-hmm. example, or, or a cool head, set, head uh, headphones or whatever, yep. right? But one day I went into uh, Best Buy to buy, I don't know, to check for the computer, or whatever. And then I realized there they have a lot of stuff too. Mm-hmm. So the point is that Amazon is absorbing so much the market. So much. That because you don't go that often to a store, you kind of don't realize that they're also having the oh, yeah, new stuff in the yeah, store. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? And it's it's crazy, man. It's and, and and to finish that thought that I was telling you about about my daughter with the phone that she mm. saw a with that stuff. Ah, oh, this shit went off. Um, let me see. It's recording. It's cool. Okay. It's just that uh, I forgot to connect it to the power, so it ran out of charge. <laughs> And I thought like, ah, oh, now we wire. lost it. But no, it's still recording. Um, it's still working. I just okay. cannot see it. It's recording. So whatever. I hope we don't lose the how the, the conversation. So, but what I was saying is that imagine when they put that thing in your brain. Mm-hmm. Me, for example, my phone is like the iPhone 8 or something. So it means that I'm like four iPhones behind. Yep. I think, right? Yep. And it has a message of update. For I don't know how long I don't want to update it update. because it's I so annoying update. sometimes. Imagine having it in your brain, yep. then you're gonna be pretty much like uh. <laughs> everybody gonna be so fast talking and moving and seeing information in the eyes. Yep. Like, <laughs> your, your information is gonna, gonna go be like, real uh. slow. So, you have kids. How are you gonna feel when like twenty years from now your son says, "Hey, Dad, everyone else got a chip in their brain. I'm gonna do it." How how, how are you gonna feel about so, that? So, man. Uh, Cause I feel like this is gonna be an issue in the future, man. It's like, I man, I don't. I am, I feel, or oh, I believe in technology, man. I'm not against technology. I, I, sadly, some people use it in bad ways and, mm-hmm. and whatever. But if the world is moving to that point, he gotta get his fucking chip in me too. You know what I mean? Like, what you gotta do? Of course, in the beginning, it's gonna be scary, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know what is this thing is in your brain and explode, and then you cannot even talk never again. But if that's the technology that's gonna happen, yeah, it gotta evolve. The, the same that we just said about the VR, for mm-hmm. example, the same with the two machines, what they were to what they are. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like saying to you, 
why would you use a rotary? Why you cannot use still the poking? That was the, you know what I mean? You have true, to move true. with that technology. Of course, right now, it seems super fucking scary having something in your brain that somebody might be able to hack and control and now you killing people in the street or, or driving out of a bridge but or it, whatever it is. I don't know. I just trying to feel like if, if that's to the, to give an example, I'm a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. That's my degree. I'm not a graphic designer. I'm a tattoo artist. But my degree in mm -hmm. college is as a graphic designer. Yes. I come from a very small town in Venezuela, right? Not technology. I start work. I start going to college with a mindset. I never got to use computers. <laughs> because it was in that moment where graphic design is still people used to do the sketches and everything yeah, by hand. By hand. Letters yeah. by hand. Posters were done by hand. Then you send it to somebody who clean everything up, mm -hmm. change his tip in a machine or whatever, but computer weren't that big of a thing. Yeah, Photoshop yeah. was Photoshop 1. It was kind of very obsolete. You can barely do shit with that. And I was so sure I don't want to use computer. If I said this in front of my brother, he's going to be cracking and saying like, yeah, I remember you were yeah, so stupid. Yeah. And here you are with a computer. Bro, and every, everything around me is a computer. Yeah, my exactly. phone, my laptop, my my screen. My, no, I, I, I you know, know what, what you mean. I mean. Like we we adjust very quickly to what's going on. And no, and also that it's super hard to really imagine how things are going to work or be. Mm -hmm. If we were, if we have that capability, we were the one creating it probably, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're right. So from this part of the ignorant point of view where I am right now, trying to look up to the future, mm -hmm. to things in yeah, the it's brain. It's oh my God, it looks super scary. You yeah. know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my kingdom fucking much. But, but when everybody's, when, when, when you're in a, in a world that everybody's moving at that speed where your reflexes are going to be 10,000 faster so you mm -hmm. can drive faster in a car that, you know what I mean or you can respond or get any information you want in a second like but like what, what, what are we the first what are we much really gaining though like what are we really gaining here oh, you know I don't like we're, we're losing so many things that are important for, for human and we're replacing it with what like we, yeah we can talk over the internet but no like, definitely i'm not i'm not saying that you gotta be a better war I, I can't it's so hard for me to imagine how it's gonna be right of course we can't but because to where we are right now we're already super fucking separated from the from the humans but people have imagined it like sci-fi oh know, like definitely. people have imagined it, and it's, it's it never ends well <laughs> it's <you> super <laughs> dark yeah it's super dark thinking about it but again I don't know. 2000 was supposed to be the year where oh, all yeah, the cars were flying. And, I remember and, that. You know what I mean? And yeah. You can eat just a little tin in the good yeah. and That's why I love Black Mirror so much is because they're not like going crazy in the future. It's almost like like now, but like yeah. slight, a slight slight technology. technology, like, like, technology like things in your is. eyes are recording you. Like mm -hmm. I love that concept, but um, I feel that we're we're losing something man like i don't i don't i can't even put it to words but it's like a feeling you know? yeah I haven't, like, I haven't really sit down and think about it too mm -hmm. much i'm trying to seek right now so let's see let's let's say let let's say you defend that point that it shouldn't be mm -hmm. because you know it's gonna make us more robots uh, than I humans i mean i'm not saying we shouldn't no but let's say you're for path. the for the pressure of this yeah, conversation yeah. right now and let's say that i'm defending that that yep. the project right now for example, you spend one hour in social media checking around. Let's mm -hmm. say you can cut that time to five minutes. Let's say, because maybe now you got to use the same amount of time with more information instead mm -hmm. of less mm -hmm. time. But mm -hmm. let's say you're supposed to watch these many things or learn or review for your homework for three hours in the computer. Let's yep. say now you can cut that time to five minutes instead of three hours because the information is right there in your brain. And you might not even need to type it because you can just print it out of your butt. You know what I mean? Because you connected to a machine. But you know what I'm saying? You connected okay, to the yeah, machine yeah, directly. Yeah. So what would you type manually at to that point? You might be able just to talk to a computer what you see. It, the information, everybody have the information already in your hand. Why do you even need to go and make a test in the school? No, of course. If you already have that information. So, you're saying so like, probably you got to go to a school now to learn social interactions instead of math because you already have math. So you might be changing the world to a better place because you don't need to spend so much time trying to put information in your brain how to be a doctor instead of reading 20 books or whatever. You have the information right there to the access of the people you talk if you're going to be that person. I personally don't think technology is bringing anything positive. It's initially positive, and it's, like I said, it's a trade for convenience. But what, what kind of technology? Meaning, I mean, meaning, for example, 
like people can do heart surgery from a different country of course they can operate you here and the guy can be in Switzerland. but well, we're not taking into account that so now people are having more heart issues because they're not walking they're not Exactly. They're not like breathing fresh air, like all these downsides of technology. Perfect that, yeah. point. So what if now, let's say, let's say you are, let's say you're a smoker mm -hmm. and you want to stop smoking. Yep. And you know that chase by. Everybody keeps saying it. And you read it in the box, mm. but you don't really see people dying of cancer. Of course. Or you don't see lungs put. Now, what if you got that information that in your eyes all the time, you fucking never smoke again. Let's say, for example, you know what I mean. Okay, but who's who's giving you the information? That's this is this is the okay, problem. but now that's this is the a problem, problem we're gonna have to deal with in the future. Is like now we have like Google censoring information. What happens when it's in your brain and like and it's you life. can't access? They're manipulating to you. Yeah, of course. It's like the the idea of connecting humanity is not, it's not a positive thing, man. It's like I think that nowadays we spend so much time in technology. That is disconnecting from from the human to human touch. Let's say that way, right? Let's yeah, say. Yeah. Part of that time that we waste on technology, like the social media time that we waste, is undeniable. That's a word. Undeniable. undeniable. Yep. The, that is a waste of time. Most of the time, right? Yeah. But at the same time, there is a lot of information that you need to have. For example, if you want to paint, what kind of material is better? Or if you want to do modeling, what kind of material is better? Process, drying versus wet, whatever. So what if instead of you having to stop modeling, to go and sit in the computer and watch a 15-minute video, mm -hmm. to in some part of that video find the information of, oh, yeah, wet is better than dry. What yeah. if you have it in your mind? Now you're spending more time doing your craft. Again, this is just, I'm not, I'm not defending it. Like, it's not yeah, what but, I believe. I'm just trying point, to be the, what, the, like, the devil's advocate. I know, like, I believe in this. I haven't think about it. I'm just throwing shit out of my, no, of course, my mouth at, as at, we talk, you know? At that point, is like, if we all have access to the same information and it's just pumped into your brain, then what makes you unique, you know? Like, what makes your oh, art better you, than my art if I can just because, get the same no, information? Be, here we go, because, because it's still going to be the human in you. Not because you have the information, it means that... Like, not every doctor works the same ethic way. You know what I mean? Just, just, as, just, as, just a surgeon, let's so, say. So, so what would make the difference between you at this point and a robot? You. you. Know, like, what if I download you, since since all the information up there, what if I download you into a robot? No. And now the robot's creating art. No, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking about... Oh, we're getting crazy. Here, I know, <laughs> but I'm thinking just about an equipment that gives you access to information, but not, like, modify you. But it will modify you. But if you if if they find a way to take you, think you, there's not gonna be companies like trying to hack your brain and sell are. you ads. No, no, they like, are. Oh they my are. God. They are. That's, and and it's scary. But thought, if man. they find a way to take you as whatever you are and put inside of a machine, mm -hmm. a lot of people gotta do it right away because bodies are dying as oh, by the second, right? But it's still not you. It's still not you. It's, it's, not it's, you. it's no. But the point is, what if they can take you? the ego whatever it is ego mm -hmm. your soul whatever it is your mind you know no, not the physical heart or brain or, or blood but but what if that's you. important to what makes you you it could be you most know? likely is because I'm sure that all the gods things that you know process your food and all that are interacting to make you act in certain ways or not so, exactly so we so, think we're just a brain but like oh no what we if, are more than that yeah it's like all all of your body makes you you like the fact that you you breathe makes you think differently the fact yeah. that you you know eat certain things makes you think differently so like a brain without a body that's not you you know no a soul or or or, or, or a a mind or an ego without a body it, it, i don't know what it is because it can know. still be you but yeah if you don't have the interaction of the physical war the senses and stuff i might don't be think different. we know I don't think we know enough about what makes us us to be able to create life. And I think that's ultimately the goal of like technology and all this stuff is to create an artificial life. But I, but we're, we're discounting, like I'm not a religious guy, but I, I, I know that there's more to me than my physical body, mm -hmm. than my mental, I agree. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like there's more, like we all feel it. Come on. But science doesn't take that into account. They think, you know, we're just, all in here 
and we can just take that and put into something yeah. else or that, create that, it by like algorithms. Yeah, no, there, there are scientifics that are trying to explore both together. That, that, let's say that. How, how, how do you feel about religion? Uh, I don't know if you want to get into that. Oof, super complicated. Um, I don't follow any religion. Same. I'm pretty, how do you say, a tale? A taste? Atheist. 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 Yeah. I'm pretty atheist to many things. So you would have More no from problem a... with technology basically taking over. Yeah. Like there's no. Like, no, no. I believe in humans and, is, and, is and, there and I live in community God? and I live. I know I believe in living on the rules, uh -huh. no, not necessarily know which one are the best or the worst rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like religions give you good. It's so complicated to say, man. No, I get it. I get it. Because religion gives you such a good structure of community mm -hmm. and and social ways to man, manage yourself. Definitely. And, and 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 that sensation of you belong to a group. Yep. And and that it's like a set community, of, set right? of rules for you to interact with certain people. Yeah. For you to manage in the in the world and and interact in a social yep. environment too. Definitely. It's not just you, but you have to act in a certain way that you fit into that community too right mm -hmm. so i believe religions bring that the point is that the religions always take a hard sharp yeah i mean turn to left or right yeah, religion can be used that, as a weapon too it, that's know? the problem yeah. similar to what we're saying about technology right it's the same thing yeah my plot uh, but i don't i feel like in the core religions are very important mm -hmm. for the development of humankind as to the point that we are today because you know i'm not saying they follow the best rules Yep. But at the same time, they created some sort of social rule that help us to develop ourselves as a human being. That without it, probably would be very chaotic. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I, I'm at the point in life now where like I'm not a religious guy. I love learning about religions. I love like understanding what makes people interact in certain ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, thinking about science, science to me is just like another religion. You know, mm -hmm. it's it has good things about it and it's going to up society, I guess, in certain ways, but it's going to take away so much from us. And I, you know, we all see it with social media now, like, you know, people having all these like mental issues now and like, yeah, yeah I think that the, it is same problem escalate probably it's a little like exponentially problematic, meaning that I, a good comp comparing or comparison or comparison mm -hmm. what do you say uh religion with science or technology in mm -hmm. this case religions are good abusing of religion is bad technology social media is good it helps you to get in contact with the whole world in a second abusing of the time you spend yep. there or how you use it or what you use it for is bad so i guess it's always finding the the best way to use and don't abuse yeah that's that's kind of a hard thing to do as a human, though, right? It's, it's super like if, hard. If you give any human power, they're gonna use that. Whatever you give to human, man, yeah. that's why we all go fat. No, all because you're always skinny, but you know what I mean. Because, <laughs> but you know, most normal people <laughs> go fat. For example, because if you give them food and and, and then it's more food and more food, they just gotta keep of eating course, the, the life course, out until they or we are gone. You know what I mean? Um, and that applies to many other things. Drugs, for example, not necessarily all drugs are bad drugs, but people take them and they want to just abuse them mm. until then it's What do you problem. think that is about us, man? Uh, it's hard to say, man. Again, I never, I, have, I probably have thought about this a little bit, but never so much. But I guess we evolved from a point where we didn't have things and we have to really... Uh, celebrate or, or or appreciate everything that we finally get mm -hmm. you know that when you get a lot you fest you know because yep. most of the time you don't have so you think that's like it's so hardwired into us to I like, think it's hardwired into yeah. us to to just whatever you get just use it you know what I mean because mm -hmm. you don't know when you're gonna have it again more back in the day when you cannot really preserve even if it was simple things as a meat mm -hmm. or, or fruits you get it out of the tree you have a couple of days to eat it yeah, before right, they man. go back. You're right. Nowadays, they last like a trillion years. You buy an apple and five weeks later, you can still eat it. But so I'm sure back in the day, I, at least I come from Venezuela. So we have trees everywhere of mangoes mm -hmm. and, and things like that. No apples, but mango and other fruits, yeah. lemons or whatever. So if you take a mango that is already yellow, right? Ripe. Yep. 
Uh, right, yeah. And you take it home, you have one day to eat it too because after it's out of the that's tree, you're gonna go back in a though, second. Huh? Oh, those oh, are the man. best mangoes, bro. There's so much flavor. And, and things like that. So I, I'm guessing, again, it's not like I know this science or, or, or why no, we just, do this or do that. It's but just I, a fun thing to talk about, you know. Yeah, think, of course. You know, the idea of uh, technology, religion, just like trying to figure out where we're going, man. You know, like why are we here? Where are we going? How does, you know, we're talking about art. Like how does art kind of, you know, factor in and all this, you know. Have you, ever, have you ever watched or listened to Joe Rogan talk about he talks about what technology is or stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've listened to a lot of Joe Rogan. Yeah. But, um, I probably got to chop it because, of course, it's hard to remember exactly. Yeah. But basically, the basic concept of what he think it is, is that, you know, that butterflies, that it's a worm, then it's a cocoon, then it's a butterfly. Yes. So, yes. Something like that. So, wait, let me see. Um, so, it's like we're, we're evolving and that's our, our final state. Oh, no. I don't think it's been, Probably... I don't know if we're evolving into that or if we are just like a tool mm, that to was create created yeah, to, yeah. to create the final product, let's yep. say, and we are in transition. It's not like we are the product. We are just the yep. tool to create the final product. That, that's one way to look at it. There's also another way to look at it. It's like, let's say the aliens were real mm -hmm. and they wanted to take over the human race, right? Mm -hmm. You don't come in and invade with armies and stuff like that. What you do is you drop a seed of technology and you just let it grow and like before you know it that technology is inside of people and it's controlling people mm -hmm. you just come back and pick it up you know <laughs> now you're coming you come back and everyone's connected everyone has it embedded in them now you can control everyone yeah. that's, that's a, a good, good talk. it's a good way that's to a invade, fun invade a, a, a planet you know right instead of forcing war there's and no forcing that, you, you just let yourself. you just let you know the, the technology grows exponentially so it's like you know, you set a timer. It's like, I'm going to drop this off here. I'm going to go do something else and I'll come back and pick mm -hmm. it up in a hundred years. And the whole planet is cons consumed with now. technology. Yeah, it's easy know? now to just... Like that, that'd be a good way to invade a planet. Right. Cool. I wonder if we can use that. And we all do it to ourselves. Like yeah, willingly. Easier, right? right? No, no, no war, no nothing. No war, nothing. Okay. Do it to yourself. That's oh, an man. interesting thought. H have you ever think about this other thought of what ideas are? Yeah, that they all, got real life then all not, the time. That yeah. they're not like just a thought, but they all the time. They so, are beings pretty much somewhere out manif there, like manifest every, through you. Yeah, of course. Um, I think about that when like I'm sketching, mm -hmm. when I'm creating, you know, creatures or whatever. Like somewhere, that creature has to exist. You know, like maybe it's not physical, but like it's there somewhere. The idea. Yeah, you the mean, idea, the thought. You know, like they used to call it muse. Yes, the muse. The yeah. musas, yep. right? Yep. They come and inspire you in this moment, whatever. Dreams too. Dreams are super interesting. Super. Like, have you ever had a dream where like it's called like pre precognitive dreams, which like you you dream of something like a year later, a month later, like it happens. You ever had that? No, no, not that I can recall. Mm. But have you ever dreamed of I don't know. This is weird. And I don't know how it happened, but I have this dream so many times. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, in your dream, you are about to play bowling. Okay. And you're about to throw the ball. Yep. And you let the ball go and hit the floor. In that exact moment, something fell in the room and pack, uh, make that noise. Yes. And like, yes. And, and wake you up and yep. something fell in the room. How you were thinking how, yep. about that sound before it happened when... Yep. It's not something in the room that's provoking the sound, but just an accident. You're right. I don't know, man. You like, have that kind of dream? I've had similar dreams where, like, if I fall asleep with the TV on and, like, something that's going on in TV, like, it's, it's like, happening in my dream at the same time. Yeah. Dif different thing, but, like, it's very... It's correlated yeah, it's to the sounds dream, or whatever yeah, that's like, happening. Yeah, I would say that's kind of easier, let's say, to, to picture what it's coming from. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's more like, in the dream, somebody's... You're talking to somebody, interacting, whatever. They suddenly say, "Oh, you see who's coming?" When you turn around, this person knock you here. Hey, you! Hey. But at that exact moment, somebody's quaking you up yep. or touching your shoulder. So it's like how you were provoking, how you were thinking about a serious event before this happened in the dream. That happened also outside that's, of the dream. That's super interesting, man. That happened to me so many you, times. You can say it's like once you wake up, you don't really know what came first. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like the way you remember a dream is weird mm -hmm. too. Yeah, that could be too. Yeah. Some people, 
I mentioned this to somebody long ago, and again, I'm not gonna say it's true. I just mentioned it, and mm -hmm. this is why the person said to me, it was like, when you asleep, kind of your soul is outside of your body. Mm. And, I believe and this. It's kind of taking care of the body. It's kind of whatever, it's looking for the surrounds to protect yeah. you in case of an animal is going to attack you, whatever. Your soul is out of your body, but it's not, you're not conscious of your soul out of your body, but that soul is kind of in contact with you, dreaming you. Yep. So you, That's you're seeing and perceiving stuff in your dreams mm -hmm. that are probably generated by your brain and the things that you live during the conversations or whatever, but at the same time are being fit by what your soul is mm -hmm. or whatever. You're not your soul or, or being out of your body. It's looking around you. Dude, I love that concept. You said that your your soul is protecting your body. Like, that's great. It's like maybe it's attached by something that's just like hanging out around yeah. your body. So again, I don't know if this is true. It was a conversation that I thought was super fucking interesting. Well, there's there's a lot of books written on that. It's called like Lucid Dreaming, where like there's stories of people able to go anywhere around the world and mm -hmm. like see real shit and have like confirmation of it and like. I would love to be able to do that. Like supposedly that's a skill that you can learn. You wow. Know? Like I don't know. how meditation, maybe Deep it's like there's specific memory. things you have to do before you go to sleep and you have to like write down your dreams all the time. So it's like mm -hmm. constantly having your mind think about dreaming and like, so while, while you're dreaming, you can basically like wake yourself up and wow. be able to like interact in the dream, you know, but yeah, dreams are crazy, man. It's interesting. It, it also happened that, you're dreaming about something, and this is more norm normal, let's say, but, but it's also interesting. It happened to me a few times that you're dreaming about something, may, might be scary or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you're like, whoa, you wake up, and you, oh my God, I was so fucking scared. And then you realize something is happening. You're still dreaming that you wake up, but you never wake up, wow, you're still dreaming. I haven't had that. Oh my God. It happened also several times. Really? To me. And, but I don't perceive those as a, too complicated. I got a friend that says, that he he was he can dream of something wake up and go back to sleep and keep dreaming and keep intentionally dreaming. Yes. on that yes he said he can do it so it's I, hard for me to test it but he said he can do it i have never done that there's, consciously yeah. not conscious not uh, intentionally yeah. let's say there's dreams that i've had where i can rewind stop dreams fast forward like so in the dream you, in the dream you can be yeah you, it's, it's, it's called lucid dreaming like oh, also it's happened to me a lot it's more so like when I was a kid, but like also I was an adult. It's like, like you don't like the, what's happening in a dream. You can stop it and like, you know, rewind it. It's dreams. I wonder if something yeah, like that happened. Yeah, so don't fascinating, so. man. Yeah, man. So fascinating. When I first start reading about art, I always have, I always draw, right? And paint, mm -hmm. little, whatever. Never understood what the fuck art was. People talk about it, but when you're growing up, it's like, yeah, art, you paint, you draw, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then you start looking at, uh, art books and you see artists that just do like a, a brush truck and they're art and you're like what the fuck mm. what is that art you know mm. what i mean then okay that, that's a whole conversation <laughs> we can get into that right now but the point is that in that moment in my life and i was 20 probably mm -hmm. i was in college already i was like asking the teachers right the the professors in school what, what, what the fuck is art man i don't get it why some people do such an amazing beautiful mm. work and people discredit it as a that's a craft that's a whatever pain but it's no art what, what do you mean? But how that is art? What what, what is yeah. that? Art Trying is such to, a broad oh my God. thing. And and it's also that kind, it has that kind of, by some people, that kind mm. of, you have to belong to the group to be an art. Kind of like, this person do beauty for landscape, uh, landscapes, mm -hmm. but that's not art. That's just a craftsman doing paintings. That, that's not art. To be art, have to be like, really? It's a weird, you know what I mean? So you gotta be like, to be art, have to be then, Whatever, Let, we go there in a minute. But the point was that I started reading uh, books, right? Mm -hmm. Biographies and, and book and manifestos and all of that yeah, stuff, yeah. right? That's how I spent my college time, either in class or in the library. Yes. First time I go to now a big city and I, I found the library and I realized so many fucking oh, books man. and you can see there. That must have been mind-blowing, dude. It's ridiculous, <laughs> man, ridiculous. But, but so then I got crazy and I want to read about everything every yeah, time I yeah. read to a point that give me something like oh because that philosopher was like philosopher what the fuck philosopher wow, mm -hmm. let me see what now about philosophers and this should be something that I learned when I was 12 but I was already 20 just mm -hmm. because I was in a small town with no yeah, libraries yeah. or anything no internet again right TV doesn't show you any of that so I go now I start reading about philosophers and what philosophy is and about psychology and what mm -hmm. psychology is all of that 
So I lost the, the, I lost the idea where we were talking specifically when I started talking about this. I think it was something specific about, oh, dreaming. dreaming sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so I started reading about surre surrealistics, right? The, the group yeah, stuff, yeah. right? So like Salvador Dali. And kind of reading stuff, about yeah. that, I learned about how you can provoke hallucinations by not sleeping. Mm. And, and of course, I also read about mushrooms and all of that a little bit but i was afraid of drugs so i can't know i don't want to go there yeah, so yeah. i was reading more about i did experiments with my friends to don't sleep for like three days plus because those days we have to On present purpose? yes we have to present <laughs> works right for uh -huh. final semesters yep. and you barely sleep those days because as a good artist you left everything for the last minute yeah and then course. it's a lot of fucking work yeah, and yeah overnight you're doing it present the next day come home to do next day yeah so we do in groups, meaning I do my thing, you do your thing, but together in my home. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I cannot sleep if I want to go to sleep, right? Because first you do like Coca-Cola and coffee <laughs> to oh, don't yeah. sleep, to <laughs> don't sleep. That's like a bomb in college time. But then it was, okay, let's try. Man, you really, really get fucked. Like, yeah, you like, need your sleep, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, but it was interesting to experiment with that, right? But you can really hear people calling you. you Oh, you start listening and, and yeah <laughs> man you see people walking by and you're like oh no it was nobody there so, and then you're doing a stuff and you clearly hear voices calling you you kind of go kind of crazy yeah, man you go nuts i mean we sleep for a reason you know we sleep yeah. every night for a reason so i feel like you kind of start dreaming mm -hmm. out of the, mm -hmm. the when it's still awake so it's super weird man. i stayed awake once five days in a row <laughs> not on purpose oh not on purpose no like do you have anxiety at all? Little. So mostly when I do bash it, like mm -hmm. opening another business and then oh, yeah, I have then to all fucking the find the money in the street, then wake me up and I feel uh -huh. a little antsy, but that's it. So I, I never knew I had anxiety until this this happened. And I, I was like this was maybe I was like eighteen or nineteen or or, or my mid twenties. And um so I was moving to California and my buddy and I went to Vegas for a while and oh man I'm getting anxiety just talking about it anyways we went to Vegas and we we're having a great time and I remember being in an elevator and all of a sudden like I got these like pain in my chest and my hands got all sweaty and like I don't even know how to explain it but like I felt like I couldn't breathe no no excuse me now i know it's a panic attack but like so it went, I, it went all the way to a panic attack oh yeah i didn't know what it was then you know you feel like you're dying you know like, wow. i don't know if you ever had this but no i, I never so had I, it, but yeah. person next close to me yeah. had it. so i never had it until then and i remember it just hit me and it just came came over me and i went back to my hotel room and i was like oh shit i'm, I'm fucking dying like i couldn't breathe and stuff wow. and this lasted for like four days while i was there like I couldn't sleep, I couldn't breathe. Like just Wait, constant, but, like sweats and just like. It, oh wow! It, it, I hear people that got those panic attack, but like for like ten seconds, twenty seconds, like, like they get like very start to cry. I can oh move, yeah, I can yeah. Move, whatever, but like a minute later, it was gone. that just. But I didn't know it was that. That's the problem. It's and like, persisted. It. Well, it just kept happening because, like, I would feel it, and then I would freak out. Like, oh, oh I'm dying, like, you know? So it would just continue it, the cycle. And then I couldn't sleep the first night. And then just knowing that I couldn't sleep made trying to go to sleep harder. So I stayed up. Long wow. story short, I stayed up for, like, five days. And I was seeing all sorts of shit. Like, right, losing yeah. my fucking mind, man. So I know what that's like. Uh -huh. Just I, I did it. Not, no not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we. I did a job because again, I started reading, so I was trying to understand art, and I was so fascinated by surrealism. Mm -hmm. You know, su surrealism has this thing that you don't need to know much about art, but it, when you see a Salvador Dali, for example, mm -hmm. painting, it's just attractive because it's like a magical world yeah, happening. Yeah, it taps right? into your dream world, right? Like, you, yeah, you it's kind of attached, but now you see it in real life in mm -hmm. beautiful color. He can paint like, 
whatever it is, a, a swan in a lake reflecting elephants. And you're mm. like, oh, this is so interesting. This playing with the images. And so you don't need to be an artist to understand yeah, oh, what yeah. is happening behind the concept. Nothing. You, it's just so appealing to you. Yeah, there's that visual element, and then you know there's something deeper there. Yes. You know, and you, you don't know what it, it is, but yeah, you feel it, and you try to like understand it by looking. So at it. when you're first trying to understand what art is and understand learning about the world art, mm -hmm. is that that's a very easy way to be attracted to a, 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 mm -hmm. a style, let's say yep. that way, right? So I, I went crazy reading about surrealism mm -hmm. right and and Breton and all of those guys and so is that when Freud. you started the uh, cubism stuff after that after that because for for a long time for that first year or whatever i was just reading most mm -hmm. mostly about surrealism and because um freud was very related to to like sigmund freud was very related to the group yeah i started also reading about psychology mm -hmm. and learning all of the, uh, that about you know about the freud uh, theories and and i got so much into that and it was so interesting i was crazy about it but then suddenly i found picasso and and it was part of that how this guy that paints so fucking ugly the people gotta call the shit art and and these guys you know what i mean comparing mm -hmm. i didn't understand it, but let me read let me let me yeah in, instead of creating that resolution or in my mind this is shit let me yeah, understand yeah. why people call it yes or no whatever and then I, when i took my first picasso book i realized that when he was a little baby he can paint already like a yeah. fucking master and yeah. and and he says it right when i was a kid i painted as a Raphael or something yeah, and then yeah my whole life trying to paint as a kid so then i start reading and seeing okay where this come from and okay he's inspired by african art or, mm -hmm. or whatever and then he's trying to simplify the shapes and seeing it from yeah. different angles at the same time and then it started getting interesting so for me then it become about how i paint feelings yeah. rather than situation that you're looking at so if somebody's sad because missing somebody how i paint that mm. that reflection about being sad Try to capture that feeling in a and it being an about image. somebody so i was more inter i started getting interested about that right hmm. or or whatever um if you're in love or if you are angry, how I paint angry, mm -hmm. but not painting a face like, uh, yeah, but yeah, what yeah. something mo motivate a feeling in you, yep. how you represent that feeling. So then I start going through that style of the cubism, mm -hmm. because even though my cu cubism not be like the art that people use for that purpose, for me it worked because I can find ways to use symbolism symbols. Yep you know, to represent the person that's missing or the last letter that left for you or whatever. I can use those objects or symbols to represent that feeling. Yep. But I don't I don't need to be lost in the process of making a perfect human painting. Mm -hmm. But now that painting process is very plastic. So it's more about being go fast and I do the that, brush man. stroke and then let it drip and let, put the thick paint and the thin paint. And, and so that process, you know, of putting paint in paint and, and is more loose yep. with a cubism than with a surrealism of Salvador Dali, for example. Mm -hmm. That is so methodic. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I love that and I love seeing that. It's just I can't, because of tattooing, because I, I tattooed so long before I started painting, mm -hmm. it's so hard for me to like let go and be loose about painting because mm -hmm. we're not, you know, we're used to just like being so technical, technical and, and precise. being in there. Mm -hmm. Did I find it so hard to just like loosen up, man? Even yeah. though I have all this freedom to paint whatever the fuck I want and exactly. how I want, it's still so hard. It's just like that mental block, man. So I love seeing that stuff. I love people who can be loose and expressive. Yeah, it's great, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I, yes, I'm so, working on it. Yeah, but again, we go back to the same thing, you know, like you can teach all that you know to somebody else, but at the end, it gotta be that person coming through. You're right. You're right. So. You are that person that painted. It's true. So sometimes I try to go very loose because mm. I did cubism for a long time. Mm. And then I was like, okay, I need now I'm tattooing. This is my life. This is my career. This, I support my family mm -hmm. and all of that, right? So now I paint as a hobby. I don't try to be a painter anymore, mm -hmm. right? But I still miss it. So I paint yeah, because I still it love, you love it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it should be about love, right? Uh huh. So by now, I'm like, okay, I gotta paint this scene, whatever it is. A nice tree because I start watching Casey Bock. I don't know if you know Casey mm -hmm, Bock mm -hmm, paintings that mm -hmm. so fucking that nocturnal paintings so are so good. amazing. So, so how he does it. So now I wanna explore that. But it's not because I wanna 
be the painter. It's just, I want to explore that. Yeah, you want to understand how he got there. So yeah. rather than trying to create a style and, and be a, a name or, or an artist, whatever, I just want to explore mm -hmm. that because I feel so attracted to it. And I try to do it, practice it, and do a small paintings and, mm -hmm. and let them be. And then I want to do an animal and I want to be some dripping paints. I start to yeah, do that man. just to do it for the pleasure of doing it's it. It's so know? hard to like stick to one thing when it comes to paintings. Which, yeah. Dude, I see landscapes they are so amazing and I'm just like, I want to do that. I just, <laughs> just want to go try that. And then I see like portraits and I'm like, oh, I want to do that too. Exactly. Like, I want to do so many things, but like, you know, you just stick to like what you like to do, but it's good to explore and figure out how those people do that because you could take that back into what you're doing. I think it's hard because even this part of your brain is like, yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to do that. It's always something deeper that mm -hmm. is you that God has forced to come through. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to teach yourself to do different, yep. but at the end is that, that's what people say, oh, that's your style. I can see it, it looks like mm -hmm. you. It's like you can't avoid having it's a sometimes style. Sometimes it's not like you create a style, it's just, it's you. Yeah. It just came through, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I've seen that. You, you paint a lot of skulls, right? So I, I do, I did before and I still do, but um, the reason why I started painting skulls is because I had a bunch of skulls, cool, you know, man. like I started collecting skulls and stuff. You have real skulls? So I have real skulls. Um, you have human skulls? I have a bunch of human skulls. Um, so I've had all these things and I was learning how to paint at the time and I was like, what can I paint that I have that's cool that I have access to? Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to like get a reference off internet because it's not the same with yeah. the lighting so i've had these skulls and i was like i'm just gonna do a series of painting on skulls mm. so i you know i took photos and lit them certain ways and dude i fell in love with them man it's like there's just some some beauty in, in bones you know like, mm -hmm. i just fell in love with it um i'm trying not to do as much but like i, I still i still love skulls man yeah no cool man they're beautiful thank they're you super thank super you. beautiful man I love how you, you so you when, when you gotta take that photo, you put the lighting, the, yeah, the yeah. pink and blue lights yes. and stuff you put in for yep. the photo yep. is the best way. Man. I think that's that's the most important thing because a skull is a skull, right? Mm -hmm. Like there there's some differences between like teeth and like d yeah, the yeah. structures, but, but the way you light them is what makes them unique. You yes. know? so that's important to take your own reference. You know? One of your last ones, I don't know, he's the last one, but one of your last one, I saw that you post what with some grapes. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like that one, yeah, man. that was fun. Actually, um, I went to Salem to see my buddy Matt, and he just painted a skull with grapes. And I was like, <laughs> "Dude, that's awesome!" And right. I was like, "I was so inspired." I was like, "I'm gonna go home and paint a fucking skull with grapes." You, you know what is weird? I always been fascinated by grapes in paintings, mm -hmm. and I have never painted one. Really, it's weird because I always, I always like, I wanna paint some grapes because you know they have that kind of that film, that thing film around. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, is yeah, in yeah. the towel that create yep. those kind of gray, bluish yep. tones. Same thing. Man. It's like I never painted grapes before. These burgundies, yep. and and you like, they look shiny, but they look matte at yep, the same, same time. time. Yep, they're so, so cool. They're so cool. Cool, and I always been like, I wanna paint some. I wanna, and I have never painted. I don't oh, know why. Man, it's not too late. No, no, probably one of these days I find time again <laughs> and, and 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 paint some grapes. But yeah, definitely, man. man. You collect bugs, insects, stuff. You collect them. You, so how, how that work? Because I've seen also that you have tons of photo we. Yeah, yeah, I I love insects. And in the man. shop, the times that yeah. I've been there in the shop. Yeah, I love. You still hop gallery, insects. right? Yeah, I'm still at Hope Gallery. Yeah, I love insects. Ever, ever since I was a kid, man, I I actually remember, I don't, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember this experience of like in my yard there was either it was either termites or flying ants. You you grew up here in this I area. I grew up in, in New Haven. In area? New Haven, basically. Okay, you were born in this area. In, yeah, I was born in okay, cool. Yale Hospital. So like, awesome, awesome. So wow. my so my family came from Puerto Rico. I was the first one in my generation born here. Oh, okay. So I grew up here. But I remember this experience of like being in the yard playing with like my GI Joes, and all of a sudden like playing with you what GI Joes? Oh, GI Joes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and I remember like all these like flying ant looking things just all over the place. It turns out like tiny ones. Big no, no, they're they're kind of big. I'm oh, sorry. Thanks. Okay. They're kind of big and like, so I've learned since then that they're termites, and once in a while like they send out queens so like they get their wings and they just come out and they just oh. like explore everywhere try to find new colonies but this happened in my yard and i was just like fascinated by it you know so ever since then it's like i want to learn as much as i can about insects 
cool. Let me let me ask you. Uh, because I grew up in Venezuela, mm -hmm. so oh, he must have some cool stuff there. It's like so it's a tropic. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, my father has a farm. Mm -hmm. He didn't live without, but we go to visit now and then. And and just my town, it's a little town in, yeah. in the base for mountains, so tons of animals. So what's like the biggest insect there? Oh, shit. I would say probably the the horn beetles. Horn beetles. Those, Maybe. Yeah. They go like, oh, yeah. like this with a oh, long that's, that's, that's horn. Sometimes, I wish we had those. Here sometimes three horns. Uh -huh. Different. Sometimes mm -hmm. like two in a row, but one super long that split in the teeth. Yes, real hairy. yes. And they just like fight each other on the trees. And I've never seen them fighting. Yeah. I've seen them walking around by themselves and you try to grab them. Yep. So they go back with their legs mm -hmm. and do this. They have little, yeah, little of spikes, spores, spikes oh, in, the, in the... They're, they're so fascinating. They're like the closest thing we can find to aliens. One. Oh, we yeah. also have like very big, but super skinny mantis. Stick bugs? Oh, mantis. Mantis and, and mm -hmm. a stick box too. Mm -hmm. Does those look, I don't know, a stick box? I don't remember when it's so big, but I remember seeing some stick box. They literally look like a stick. Yeah, yeah. But mantis. Mantis big is so mantises, awesome. man. Yeah, they're interesting. They're animals. super dude, interesting. They, you can tell, like, when when you look at them, you can tell they're thinking, you know? That's what uh -huh. I love they about look like, them. Right? Yeah, they're just like... And sometimes they do, like, this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. They're, trying to, they're trying, like, like, figure you what out, What the fuck? You know? You're a dog? Yeah. <laughs> So I, I mean, there's just something about them. So what, my question was, what you have here in this area? I don't know what kind of... I never seen I mean, in my property any kind of big animal, any we don't big have, insect. Just we don't have that, that little, much here. Little have, ladybugs. We have mantises. Uh -huh. um, I remember as a kid, we had a lot more beetles, you know? Like, I remember as a kid, like you would have like a screen door and a, like a porch light mm -hmm. and at night it would be covered in beetles. But now I don't see, don't any. see any. Yeah. Anymore. I don't see that. What much, happened, man. right? Weird. I don't know. We're, and we're fucking up everything, you know? Oh yeah. Who knows? Too many smoke industry <laughs> stuff. Maybe. Who knows, man? Like Make them poisons and you know, we're just, we're just fucking everything up. Yeah, man. But, uh, so, but I seen that you have horn beetles, right? Maybe you post something with horn beetles so, or no? I don't, I don't, oh, somebody else I don't like collect anything anymore. I still have colonies of like roaches at home, like three different kind of roaches. They're like, alive? Yeah. Colonies they're alive. Alive. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Colonies, yeah. The uh, one that you paint, the, the, those kind of water, how you call those roaches? Water roaches? Or uh, something? Um, the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. <laughs> Damn, that's yeah, deep. the big ones. The big ones. <laughs> I mean, they're, uh -huh. they're the typical ones that people use like in, in movies. Like, uh -huh. it's funny because you see like a movie in New York and like they'll like move a trash can. There's these giant beetles and they're or no uh, roaches. They're not. <laughs> they don't belong there, there. Yeah. but anyways um i got like scorpions at home and um spiders yeah stuff we like have that. scorpions yeah. also there yeah. it's insect insect right a scorpion is an insect insect uh, i think i read it somewhere as an insect or not? i don't think they're technically an, they're, they're arachnids they're, maybe they're arachnids yeah. right yeah i don't think that's technically an insect but i don't know i'm not 100 percent sure i think i read it but i don't know it might be a false memory yeah but i have tons of those so I, I used to collect a lot of stuff. Like I would have, I have like friends who like collect and we would like trade species or I like, I would buy species from them, but like they don't really live that long. So it's, oh, it's yeah. like, it's fascinating to have them and like see what they, you know, how they live, you know, like interact with them, but they don't live that long. So it's kind of heartbreaking. Like when you, I when you'd love something and it, it dies. Yeah. So that like, gotta be fucked up to be somebody yeah. that love bugs as a pet because they don't last. Yeah. They don't so last gotta be in a long. constant so like, roller coaster of yeah, loving and crying. Exactly. Like, you, you, so you just become detached, you know? Yeah. So now I rather just go out in nature and like trying to, you know, Find take photos like of like, you know, insects. That, you don't have, you don't fun. have like those kind of dissected, let's say, or, or, or dry bugs or whatever. You I know, do people do bunch. with butterflies oh, yeah. and, and I do have a bunch, but you know? I don't like, I don't like buying them and I don't like the idea of killing anything. Yes. So like if I find stuff, I'll, I'll keep it, but I don't want to, I also don't want to buy it because I don't want to, pro to promote, to promote yeah, that yeah, industry. Yeah. I mean, I know they don't, they don't live that long, but like I rather not, uh -huh be responsible for killing anything yeah if you're cheating yeah exactly but th i mean they're beautiful like they're works of art and yes you yes. know like, and, and and they're beautiful animals man and it's like the horns for example the, the, beetle, the horn mm -hmm. beetles they're beautiful yeah beautiful and some we have some of them that are black yeah. but Ooh. some of them that are like a deep deep red mm -hmm. that when you're moving in the light you see more of yeah, the red yeah yeah and i don't know if you have here 
but we have those that are kind of metallic green. Yes. That change color. We don't, we, we don't we have, have some stuff here like that. We have some beetles and we have some bees that are actually like green metallic. I, I think I, I was fortunate to grow having of all course, those animals. I wish, bro. But you I take wish. it for granted, right? Because I know, you grow there, you just see them. Uh, we have also this uh, uh, this book. I don't know if you know them. They they kind of let's say like a beetle, mm. but flatter and long antennas. And mm. when you grab them from the antenna, they make the Really? Sound like, like almost like a maracas. I'm assuming it's a yeah. defense, making a noise probably hmm. other animal might get scared, but for yeah, you it's yeah. just like fun, like a maraca. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Did you guys have like a lot of like lizards and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, man, it was a time in my life and I remember those times I feel super cheaty. But we used to hunt them we with, with mm. a like a slingshot. A slingshot. Yeah, yeah. And we go there you know, to the plane, that area that is just yeah, just grass and plane and whatever, and just go there, my friend and I, and just throw rocks and hit them and oh, man, that's, kill a couple. That's it was it kid. was kind of fun being a kid. I feel so cheery now, man. I have done that so cheery. I remember that it give me, it make me sad, bro. Yeah. For real, like yeah, I mean, it, I think super we all sad. Through it. And you will say like it's fucking little, but still, man. It's, no, it's a, now you feel it's like a, a life thing that you fuck for no reason. I mean, when I was younger, I used to like burn ants you know like i before yeah. I, before i actually started appreciating i'm like i i course, used to I used poison everything them. you know you Listen, poison them? it was a time in my life i don't know why i used to go to my house and get all the medications my mom has in the house and in a little cup uh -huh. pool, a little bit of this medication a little bit of medication open a capsule open the other one and make something and go there to see if i can create a, a poison for the ants <laughs> oh and God. because we have this big kind of volcano thing uh -huh. that when you touch them it's a three of them coming out a pour in the Damn, and they come out like nothing for them was like a sticky liquid they, they, they probably was looking forward to that yeah they all get drugged out <laughs> they're waiting like what the fuck yeah, what is right? that dude coming where's the guy with the cocktail <laughs> when is the guy with that cool thing coming <laughs> a dealer <laughs> when is the right? dealer coming by oh, so man. yeah man i don't know why i was interested in science so since I was little i'm curious how was your first winter here because you, you don't have like snow over there. No, right? no. So how was that for My you? town, when it's cold in my mm -hmm. town, is 75. <laughs> what? That's cold? And average is like 92, 95. And, wow. and it goes to 140 something. Do, no, no, do you recommend going there? Like, not right now. Not right now? No, no. But Venezuela, oh, man, don't take it from me mm -hmm. or nobody take it from me. If you ask me, I would say don't go. It's too much corruption. Mm -hmm. And... Like, I don't know, the, the minimum wage is like a dollar a month. But so is, when is, you know is there the, like a touristy spot that you can go yes. and not see any of that? Oh, my God. It, that's the, the problem is that I don't know. That's what I said. Don't take it from me. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough. The biggest problem for me is that I, I will be even afraid to go into Venezuela. April. Really? So I got a friend that she went to visit her family first time since she moved here. And she have to go to Colombia, like flying to Colombia travel to a border city and cross walking like like people coming through the mexico united states yeah, border yeah, yeah. walking through the wow. edge in a river they have to do that to visit the families in venezuela holy shit is that because bad, huh? flights are limited and corruption is so dirty and then traveling inside of venezuela in bus is, is dangerous too so everything is so dangerous yeah. politics are, are fucked up you never know when it's gonna happen something else my other friend's family her family came from venezuela to visit her in in Texas, stay mm -hmm. with her for a couple of months or whatever. They live in another city that is close to the Colombian border too. They have to pay people, kind of coyote. Yeah, yeah. But to take them from Venezuela to Colombia. And driving through the, driving in those streets in Venezuela all the way to the border, there mm -hmm. are several stop points by the militars in mm -hmm. Venezuela. Where they normally they normally put one of those right. Yeah. They ask you for your ID to make sure you're yeah. not like you know doing chitty chat right. Now it's like twenty dollars, and the guy that is driving them charging so much money, or this much money. So they park the car, get out of the car, they give money to the guy, get in the car, and keep driving to the next one. Holy so they already have shit. the system. So they put those just to get money because they know that yeah, people are like, going like to try to the tolls right basically. So okay. they have to go to Colombia and fly out of Colombia to United States. Wow. With a Venezuelan passport and, and a, an American visa. So oh, that's shitty Venezuela. So I don't recommend nobody to go. It's sad because it's a beautiful I'm country. I'm sure, man. And we have like the jungle, right? Where where uh, Angels Fall is and all mm -hmm. of that. I never went there. We didn't have the money to go, but um, I wish I can go now, you know. 
And no, fuck that. I'm not going there. No, no, not it's, worth it. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. That sucks, man. And also, I lost, I my Venezuelan passport expired. And right now they're doing something that they give you like a sticker to put in the passport mm -hmm. that validated it for five extra years. Yeah. But I know somebody that half the sticker went to California, come back here, and they didn't want to accept the passport because it's expired. So my my, my friend is still showing them, listen, but I got that. It's a legal sticker, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's legal. Like United States they accepted accept it, it publicly and they're like, we don't know anything about it. So they have to call like the supervisor of the Jesus. TSA person to come. That's the worst. This person is about to lose the airplane or maybe get deported or something because using yeah. a, a Venezuelan passport in the United States that's mm -hmm. expired. And it had the legal, so whatever. When mine expired, I was supposed to go to a friend's convention mm -hmm. uh, with the people we host butter. So I was supposed to go with them to this uh, convention also in France. Huh? Yeah, and <laughs> and and yo, um, I was already booked in the convention and everything. I didn't have a flight when I was supposed to buy another. I realized my passport expired. Mm -hmm. I put the application to renew it, and I haven't had the response yet. And that was in 2015. Still? Yeah. So they say for you to to get your passport renewed, you have to apply first online in a website or whatever and then they send you the day when you have to go to the embassy but you cannot go to the embassy and ask they say go to the website first this fucking rude people fucking assholes so they go to the website first i went but no i don't care just wait first there so i'm waiting for that response since 2015. so I, yeah. I after that i became citizen <laughs> I became American citizen after that and now have American passport and I can travel. But if I want to go to Venezuela, I have yeah. to get a visa wow. to get in Venezuela. To get into your own country. Because yeah. I don't have a passport. So again, in the past, whatever, five years or four years or whatever, something might have changed that now I can travel. I don't know. I'm mm. not going to take that chance. And yeah, I, I'm not even interested in checking right now for any of that, man. Yeah. My closest family is here. My mother and my brother are here. My nephew is. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a, I it, wish, man, I could go. It's cool, though, you still have that other perspective of growing up in another country and yeah. coming here, you know, like, it's, that's it, cool. Something about, something that I learned living there and I'm missing so much, and now I, it didn't matter to me or I thought it didn't matter to me for a long time until I became a father, mm -hmm. is that I'm missing the community, man. Mm. I grew up in, in a urbanization or whatever a neighborhood that was very small like six blocks and 24 houses in each block that wow. was my neighborhood yeah so we can go to i have friends in every block and we play soccer in the street or baseball you know with your hand hitting the mm -hmm. ball with your hand <coughs> we throw rocks we threw fireworks <laughs> we 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 uh to, uh how you say it uh, the ding dong or the, the ring bells of the house and, and run, run and people get mad <laughs> all that kind of crap we did my, my son cannot do any of that here man mm. because you know we live in these kind of houses that are so separated from the rest of the people know, and people man. everybody's so busy into their own wars that you it's cannot true. just go kids grow up differently nowadays man. yeah man I've been even thinking about moving to a different city or state or whatever where I can offer that to my son mm -hmm. man because I think it's important. I think it's very important. More yeah, now yeah, that what yeah. we're talking that every time it's more and more technology and separation rather than union. I feel it's important that, you know, my kid grow in a world where he can go and be in bicycle with his friends and and, and do stuff outside, you know, I throw know. rocks and get in trouble, break people, break it's windows true, or man. whatever. I feel like we, we're losing that. Yeah, we're, man. We're losing it because of fear, you know, like we've been, or our parents, us, we've all been told that there's killers everywhere yeah, there's rapists right pace, everywhere yeah. there's everything around every corner and we we want to you know protect our kids but we're like you know you need that to be a you need to do bad shit you need to be out there you need to yeah, be yeah they need to experience yeah, the world man, man you the gotta experience world. the world and friendship like, and what, yeah what, all the stuff that we're, we're they're lacking now, like it's know? different for my kid he got friends five years old friend in yeah. a school right and he have fun there and every time i pick him up when i can Bye, Safi. Bye, mm -hmm. bye, bye. Mm -hmm. The friend, but that's it. He go home, no friends anymore. Mm -hmm. But when you're growing up, you have those friends in school, but don't necessarily they live nearby. But you have your friend from the block, so you yeah. come do homework, eat a little bit, go outside and play bush in the street all day long. So it's important to build that kind of connection to other person. That if that something happened to that person, you feel bad. 
But if you abuse, you might get punched in the face. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. need to learn all those social yeah, clues. That's and, important. And you know what I mean? So important. You need to defend somebody or be defended by somebody so you build bonds. Or, or you like the girl that live across the street and you don't know how to call the attention when you're yep. little. You do drawings and show them to see if <laughs> she likes you. That was me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yep. All of that, they don't have it. Yep. So they come home to watch TV. Yes. Uh, you so, know what I mean? So w- oh, do activities. Oh, take him to piano class. Take him to this class. Take him to that. But they're activities. They're not kids yeah, having fun a, being It's dumb. not a community. No. It's not, you know what I'm And I'm missing that. I, I'm missing it more and more for my kid. It was weird because I moved to America and even though I live with friends, I'm kind of, kind of family person. Mm-hmm. Even though my family was my mother and my brother, yeah, it was yeah. my family. Yeah. And every Mother's Day, we have to be together. Every birthday, it's not celebration parties or anything, but we together, a little present. Mm-hmm. Christmas time, some of my friends come to my house and we have dinner. Every Christmas, we have to have dinner in my house. Every, You know what I mean? Every yep. New Year Eve, we are home, hug before we go to the block and say Happy yeah, New Year to of everybody. Course, of course. We don't have nothing of that here, man. You know? So. Uh, you got to you gotta build that, I, man. Yeah, I came to America and lived by myself for like eight years. It was like nine years before I saw my first family member, my brother, wow. came to visit because they didn't have a visa and I was still illegal. So I couldn't go. Even though I came legally, I couldn't go, yeah. right? <clears throat> it, all of that kind of celebrations died on me. So it stopped meaning shit to me. Like mm-hmm. Christmas, it, I didn't care. I come home, I go to sleep at seven in the night, eight in the night. I can work the other day. I can work on Christmas day as I can work on Christmas Eve. Yep. You know what I mean? January 1st, it was the same as uh, January 20th. I mean, that's how I am now, man. I don't give a fuck about holidays. Yeah, but... They don't but, mean anything. But it's not good. Mm. It's not good. But, but that's part of what we're talking about, community mm-hmm. and, and losing, losing that kind of celebrations because it's not about... and It's not about, okay, let's go and buy presents. Let's go and buy the best things for the kids. Let's buy. It's not about that. It's about teaching the kids, for example. It's so important that on Christmas Eve, we together as a mm. family eating together and laughing and, and enjoying this moment of the traditional food no, totally, and stuff totally. like that. So but it's, I, it's about like, that. But I feel like you don't really, you shouldn't need an excuse to, to be a family. Oh, no, no, no. You know we, what I'm saying? No, no. In my house, we have dinner together. Yeah, yeah. 85% of the time, except if I'm traveling or or sometimes I come too late, they already eat. But mm. we try to have dinner together in my house every day. Yeah. Now they have a family, kids and stuff. But it's different, you know. It's it's like, even though it might be just an excuse, it's kind of good to have those excuses. No, like, like Thanksgiving. You have like certain days where like, yo, this is happening. Like Thanksgiving. We don't have Thanksgiving in Venezuela yeah. because Thanksgiving is an American yeah, celebration, American. right? And But we celebrate it and we thanks to this country for all the opportunities that have given to me and my families and, and each of one family have to say thank you for any reason. I'm thank you for having you in my life, guys. Mm-hmm. And whatever. So again, it's not about Let's go and buy things and buy things and buy things. It's about that. Being together and be humble and yeah, say thank you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Totally. Appreciate. Take the moment. Even though we should do it every day and, and and I'm very thankful every day for everything I have that this country have gave to me and my family. But having the opportunity to sit in front of people is also teaching the little ones. You have to appreciate. Mm-hmm. You have to be thankful. Mm-hmm. Things not, are not taken for granted. You know what I mean? No, it's true, it's, man. So it's, that community important. is important. But for a long time, man, for a long time, I feel a little sociopath. I don't know. If it's a, uh, I don't know. Psychopath. Psychopath. <laughs> but a little. No, for real. Like, meaning, I have to learn to give meaning to those dates because they lost meaning to me. Mm. So because the beginning for the first year or two years, I was like, man, I miss my family. I wish I can see them for Christmas. I wish I kiss my mother for give it a kiss for, for, for Mother's Day or whatever. So, but you feel sad. At some point, you're like, I cannot fucking keep feeling sad for this shit. So you kind of block it, right? You f- yeah, block the emotions. Yeah. But when you start blocking them, at least this happened to me. I'm not saying that happened to every immigrant. No, it know? makes sense. But to a point, you 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 block so much feeling sad for sure, missing people that you really stop feeling. You know mm. what I mean? So when then you build, bring people into your life, like a, a, a girlfriend or wife or, or whatever, or a kid, it's not fair for them that you're not feeling exactly nothing. So yep. you have to <laughs> first start like, okay, I have to kind of fake that I'm feeling good, yep. but it's not faking. It's just more like forcing yourself to lift again those feelings. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you, I remember it was important. I don't feel shit. It's another day. I 
fucking want to go and rest. But this day is important. I remember it. It's also important to them too. So you, it's so yeah, important to yeah. them. Yeah. It's not just about me. It's about them and, and, and giving to my kids the experience yeah. that I have to remember this feels good even when I'm not feeling it. But it's easy to then start feeling the game yeah. because you start enjoying again the little things, right? Dude, I have such a hard time with holidays, man. Yeah? What is that? Well, I mean, my family wasn't really... I guess we, we made a big deal of it when we were kids, but like as we grow older, it's just like that connection wasn't there anymore, you know? Like, okay. yeah, it's similar things, like... There's so many years where like it didn't mean anything to me, and like now it's it really it still doesn't. You know, it's it's it to me is an excuse for us to get together, which I feel like shouldn't be mandatory. It should be like, hey, what are you doing today? It doesn't matter yeah. if it's Christmas or not. You know. Yeah, no, definitely. We do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Every yeah. time we have opportunity, let's do a barbecue outside yeah. in the house, and and people come over. Or oh, my wife cook, and mm -hmm. she call her mom or her aunt. Uh, siblings uh, sister whatever yeah you want to come and eat some soup today i think those days are more important than yeah like, no. the holidays you know yeah yeah so. i i i learned i learned that it's sad man because it was a point that i saw around me people celebrating christmas mm -hmm. and it was just 500 different gifts and kids were waiting for the gift and they were so annoying mm -hmm. like when we got up in the gate when we got up in the so that I don't like, you know what I mean? Of course. But I still feel like it's important to have those dates, you know, to no, celebrate. That's true. That's true. Because at Even least, though at least might... you have those dates, you know? Yeah. Like if anything, everything else falls apart, at least you have those dates yeah. to like but, do the family. But... Yeah. But not even. But I mean, also it's good. Like it's hard for you to have like your grandpa that live in Puerto Rico, let's say, mm -hmm. for example, over every dinner. But you know, for Christmas, he's coming. So it's important. Exactly. You know, my yeah. aunt is finally coming. My grandma is coming home. And they bring me a little present or whatever, yeah. but just having them there and maybe they're together cooking now and, and they live in different cities, but finally they find a way to come when everybody's on vacation for the holidays and stuff. So, you know what I mean? It's, mm. it's about that. Uh, yeah, man. My, my family sort of, we, we kind of lost that, man. It's yeah. like, it's sad, but like, we're still close as, as like a family unit, but like we lost that, that, that fam, mm -hmm. that holiday stuff, like. Like in my teens, you know. So. You might need to at some point yeah, get it. You, you know, the, the more I think about holidays, the more I see that it's like. A business? It's a business way to sell shit. It's like, mm -hmm. I try not to think of it as like those days are important. Like I said, like other days are important. Every day is important. Yeah, you know, it's like definitely. you have an opportunity to like do something with your family every day, you know, so. Yeah. I, I, I get your point. I, yeah. I completely understand yeah. that, man. But yeah, holidays yeah. are weird. Holidays are weird. <laughs> I love them, man. I love holidays. What's your favorite? Which one is my favorite? In this country, I learned to love Halloween. Mm, a lot of artists like Halloween. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, and mostly because of kids. No, not before mm -hmm. I have kids. Um, so my daughter came into my life when she was seven years old. Mm. Uh, so before than that, I didn't have much of yeah. that kind of family. Yeah. Uh, you know, traditions and stuff. So I last started because I want to do it for her too. We here, you know? yeah. But don't you, now, now Halloween's even fucked up. It's like kids aren't even allowed to like walk around anymore. They're like taken from car to car, you know, from car to house to house. Yes. It's so weird, man. This, how, how parents take care of the kids. Yeah. Now. Um. Definitely, Kobe was another whole different thing. I hope next year it's gonna be a little more normal. Mm -hmm. But we we have this section of town that's super cool because we drive there. Mm -hmm. But we parked our car and then walk, walk around, yeah. out, around a few good. blocks. And it's super cool because all these neighbors kind of, I don't know if it was intentionally the plan or was happy accidentally mm -hmm. happening, but all of them kind of decorate their houses, sit outside. Oh, cool. they, they probably, some people have like fire pits, yep. beautiful house decorated, nothing too, you know, so much but beautiful yeah, nice yeah. They, they, you, you feel like they want to do something special that's cool it's good to have it and some like houses that. have just the lights on so the kids go there and, and seeing the kids like happy Halloween whatever and people mm. coming out oh my god you look so <laughs> cute and, and then we go to the next house and the next house around the block we have that kind of tradition after that we go to a restaurant eat pizza mm -hmm. or like two three families together with all the kids right that's cool and, and then we go home everybody got there you know? that's the beauty of having a young kid you know it's like you get yes. to see them enjoying that yes know? yes so that it's cool that the first house of that block they have the kids and they have yellow 
vodka or tequila and shit for the grown up or the so grown you get a couple of yellow awesome. shots and keep going get you guys because started. it's super cold man oh you were asking me about how it was cold for me yeah yeah your first winter so, yeah so I always like cold I never mind it um, okay. that's because you didn't grow up with it yes <laughs> <laughs> that's right. but but I don't know probably is that thing that you know your bigger brother is kind of your role model when you're mm-hmm. growing and he's if he says I like cold you're like yeah I like cold too so then yeah, but I don't feel cold. So cold for you guys was you said it was like not, 70. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's my town. Okay. You drive 25 minutes and it's like 45. Okay. 50. That's that's but then bro, let's say 50s. And then you drive one hour or something and you're in Venezuela, Andes. Mm-hmm. So it's part of the Andes. Okay. And the mountains, uh are they snow cat mountains? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then and then you don't drive up to the those mountains, you have to take a cable car mm-hmm. you, you know uh, yeah, how you yeah. call like those? a ski lift kind of thing no 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 that, that one that's like a little yeah like a, like a yeah that you, cable you car walk, huh? yeah. i think it's a cable car cable car right yeah. you walk in probably 10 people fit yeah, yeah. or something and, and they take up. you up yeah. you have to take those or do go really mm-hmm. you know scale, scale whatever did you do that no i never ah, tried you it i don't like cold that much huh no oh <laughs> we didn't have money to do it oh. <laughs> and then after a certain point it broke down bad politics kept it closed for a long time they reopened it after i moved to america but growing up, it was expensive to do it. No, so okay. we didn't have time. But what we used to do, you can drive up to a certain point that is like, you know, it's foggy. Yeah. You, it's not, the only vegetation pretty much are like uh, pines kind of, or we have this kind of, I don't know. It's, it's a kind of plant little. I don't remember the name. Oh, fuck, I'm going to remember at some point. It's a little plant with a little yellow flower or whatever that okay. just grow in that cold, cold weather. Yep. So it's not much vegetation. You have to go there. You can drive up to a certain point with little like uh, lakes, mm-hmm. kind of ponds or whatever, not like a lake, more like a ponds or whatever. That are famous, that's super cold, that water is chill, chill as fuck. We used to jump in those. Ooh. So, you know, super cold, but we love it, right? Uh so what we do is that we at home, let's say, well, let's go to the El Paramo, right? To the yeah, mountain, yeah. the call. So my mom cooks something like chicken rice. Something warm. Yeah. Bring the chicken rice with bread or whatever, put in the car and drive. We get some point there, eat together. That's awesome, You know, man. my mother, my brother and I, sometimes his wife or, or my cousin or whatever. And we drive there, sit in some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, you know. They sell something called calentadito. Yeah. It's like a little warmer or something. So it's a it's a, a drink mm. made with anise, alcohol, okay. and some herbs and whatever. And they make it hot. They cook it. Yeah, so yeah. It's, they give it to you hot. You have to drink it carefully because you don't feel it's hot because you're in the fucking cold. And a lot of people burn their mouth. <laughs> But when you drink that, your body gets super warm in nice. a second. And nice. you can drink that. Being in Venezuela, when you're probably 12, you start drinking those things. You drink like one of those, you know. Yeah, you yeah. don't drink more because you get you drunk very, very quick. Nice, but you be warm. Be they, but they have that little place. You don't see anything else around where really? they sell those or maybe hot chocolate or, or some, I don't know, arepas from that area in Venezuela. Some well, that's food cool. You, you had the option to get cold. Oh, you know, super nice. cold. Yeah, yeah super cold. cold. When I went to college, I, I went to college to two different cities, half mm-hmm. and half, right? The first city, when I was reading all those books and stuff, um, there it was it's in the, between like 50 and 70, let's say 60. Mm-hmm. So it's a little fresher. Yeah. The second half is in between like the... 45 55 mm. so it's, it's chill and you have to shower with no heaters or anything and and you know it's so your room has no heater you have to put blankets and the blankets feel like they're wet yeah because it's fucking cold do you remember the first time you had to shovel your car out here no i remember the first time i drove in the snow mm-hmm. okay the first time i saw snow it was like magic oh my god it's yeah, just so yeah. beautiful we were painting a, an apartment for my friend that he was moving in at some point and he said oh gotta start snowing let's go home so he was driving and i was like oh my god it's so it's like beautiful magic. It's just like magic. <laughs> and next day everything is muddy oh uh, yeah but yeah. still next day it's still beautiful it's your first time seeing yeah. it's not everywhere not just in the cap of the mountain so i, I love it when it like it's rains beautiful. and it's like everything gets icy and like uh, it all beautiful. the trees are like yeah like glass I love oh that. you seen that when it's that not often that happen but sometimes happen that it's a lot of those mm-hmm. like 
glassy Glass kind of everywhere. dripping it's great it looked beautiful yeah. super dangerous yeah. to I walk know. around whatever <laughs> is dangerous as fuck but then that was the first time i saw snow right and then like a week later we i was working construction mm. and we were painting a house okay it started snow let's go i drive i don't know why i said i drive so yeah, I'm driving very carefully, very nice. I make a right turn. The car kept going. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's your first time. <laughs> <laughs> then got, he went out of the road, but nothing but happened. It was yeah. it was tense guy in the area. It's very flowy, gravel, gravel, gravel. Yeah, gravel. Yeah. Gravel. So you locked out then. Yeah, I just got out of the road and kind of stopped. Right, that actually helped it to stop because the yeah, gravel. yeah. But trying to back up into the all the windows were like fuck you know and you gonna see where the car are coming and oh man it was a yeah. mess yeah <laughs> snow was a mess yeah that was the first time i don't remember what was the first time shoveling but i remember i hated it every time i never liked it not even the first time like this is so nice no I never fully uh, like shoveling i, I like it i like i like stuff like that man yeah, yeah. no i don't yeah. man i like it, it oh. i have to work shoveling snow in a winter broke as fuck mm -hmm. no job no, i've done that man. i used to work construction painting houses so it was mm -hmm. no job for like three months already and one of my friends found this contact let's go let's shovel some stuff mm -hmm. so you put like a sweat pen plastic bags then you socks plastic bag because you have proper shoes yeah yep. another plastic bag another sock then you blue jeans yeah then you're just sweating in plastic no you, you go there and it starts shoveling, and then your pants get wet, oh, and yeah. that wet kind of crawl up, and then yep. you wet up to here. Yep. <laughs> and then you start getting cold. Oh, yep. man. Everything is super wet, super cold in the middle of the night, man. Yeah, I definitely don't want don't want to do it for a job, but I don't mind shoveling my yeah. own car. No, so, yeah, I, I can clean the fun. cars in the house, and I try to pay somebody just because they come and clean the driveway very nice, mm -hmm. you know, and the path so people don't fall and sue me. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not, man. But, but, but yeah, the cars, I can clean them myself. Stuff like that is easy. I, I find always that, I try always to find, so what I do to travel the top of my car, I use a broom, I have a broom for that. So yep. it's easy because you just yep. turn in just one side of the over. car and sweep it, don't scratch the car or anything. But yeah, that's all for me, man. No more, no more <laughs> of that shoveling. So what, what is going on with the paintings nowadays for you? Like meaning you, you, you just trying to sell through your social media, so, you're doing shows. So I don't, I don't paint to sell anything. Like that's not my goal. Uh -huh, my goal is just to paint, just to paint for myself. And if people like it, you know, they'll offer whatever. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've sold, I've sold a bunch. You know, just just from like posting on Instagram, like people hit me up, like is mm -hmm. that for sale? Yeah, but that's not my motivation for painting. No, I know. If but... they sell, it's great. But yeah, lately I've been selling a couple. Awesome. Man. Like the last two I did are sold. So the grapes. Yeah, the grapes are gone. <laughs> cool, and man. Actually, the same person who bought the grapes just bought the one I just finished. How, like, how long I would it take you to do? How big are those paintings? 1824 or kind of? Well, the one I just did is 30 by 30. Oh. So it's pretty big compared to, what, like, mm -hmm. the other stuff. The other one was, like, 16 by 12, I think. So. Oh, smaller. Yeah. I, I, I like trying different sizes like how long i would actually take you to like 50 hours 60 hours 50. it depends it depends on the size yes. you know the, i like to get really detailed yes so it's you know like i said i'm not doing it for money so it's what kind of you use canvases right you paint no, on canvas I, or on board I, I like boards oh boards. i hate the texture of canvas yeah I hate but it. the kind of work that you do kind of makes sense because so yeah. many little little details that you gotta get lost inside of the texture of the canvas yep. I, would, I would say so a bunch of them I did before on gesso board, but it's like really smooth surface. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started using linen. So it has a little bit of tooth and it's so much better. So linen over board? It's like a board. It's actually the... The linen is, so is it's glued like a, on the board? Yeah, it's like a foam core board uh -huh. and then the linen's over it and it's gessoed and it's like sanded really, it's like really fine. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of texture, but not like... Like a canvas. Yeah, no, um, definitely. I, I definitely. hate that that texture. Um, I, yeah, I, I mostly do canvases. Yep. And when I first start trying on on, on boards, mm -hmm. for me it was super annoying, complicated because that's because so, it's so smooth. smooth so yep. The brushwork just go everywhere. It doesn't like grab it so easy. Yep. At least because the way I was used to paint, right, with yep. the action paint, more like so linen and somewhere in between the mm -hmm. two. Which yeah, I have some like of those perfect. here. Yeah. In the story that you saw, yeah, I yeah, have some yeah. of those. Yeah. And 
you do oils, 100% oils, right? Yep. Yep. I you try. use any kind of mediums with your oil? Yeah, I use, um, I think it's called Galkid Gel. Uh -huh. And I use some liquid every once in a while. But I try to use this as little bit as possible. Yes. You know, like sometimes, um, so in between layers, like I would, like when you're ready to paint again, you put a little bit of uh, medium on the, the area you're going to paint. Mm -hmm. And then you'll paint on that and it'll dry. And that's mm -hmm. how I use medium now. But <clears throat> very little. Yeah, that because... I tried to do it without reading. That mm -hmm. was a big mistake I did, mm -hmm. painting over the dry oil. Not mm -hmm. just because that, the way how I got attached to the new paint over the old painting, not just that, but also because the false tones. Mm -hmm. When you don't put anything yes, on it, yes. you don't really see. Yeah, it's like this matte, weird. It's kind super of finish, matte. Yeah. And even the black looks like yep. gray. And, and, yep. and that's why it's good to put a little bit when of When you put medium. it, you really come mm -hmm. out and don't you really see what yeah. you're doing. So that was a hard way for me to learn it, doing it the wrong way. Yep. Because I was just painting I'm over same, dry paint. Same, man. A week mm -hmm. later, come over, try to paint a little more in something. That, mm -hmm. Because most of the time, when I paint, it was like one shot, you know? Yeah. Sit yeah. down and go for it and finish it. Two, three, four hours, five hours, depending on what it is. Did you do that? Remember we had the art show? Did you do that for those paintings? Was that one shot or was that layers? I don't remember what paintings. I remember that show. There the, was the, um, one at Gallery, right? I you think mean? it was, yeah, it was a bunch yeah. of figures. It was kind of like Casey Bell's style. You know, it was like mm -hmm. figures and like lighting. Most likely, yeah, it was yeah. one shot. One shot? Most likely. That's cool. Yeah, because that, that's the way how I kind of. I can never I do like that. To approach. Like, it, it, it takes me so long to do a painting. Yeah, because, but that's the thing. Because the way how you work, you put mm -hmm. so much detail and, and you're doing kind of realism. Mm -hmm. So you would need to capture every single value and tone. And, yeah. and, and then when you come back, you have to again it's adjust layers, to make man. sure that layer is yeah. exact. That comes some time by itself. Mm -hmm. And you use a lot of small brushes. Mm -hmm. Little part, me, I get a big ass brush and. Yep. The first layer is a lot of dripping with a lot of medium or yeah, something. I love that. I wish I could do that. And when it's dripping, then dries a couple of spots, you know, clean to get a white spots where mm -hmm. I need the light highlights or whatever. And then it starts just going, 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 yep. going, going. Not always is a it's a successful painting. Oh, of course not. <laughs> sometimes mean, you finish and you're like, Ugh. yeah. Sometimes I, I got a few of those. <laughs> sometimes you go to, you go to sleep like yes, ah, oh, I finish. Go to sleep, come back next day like fuck. What yeah, the fuck was happening in my what mind? I, what I like to do is uh, take photos of what I just did, and throughout the day I'll just keep looking at it and like make yeah. notes of like what I'm gonna do next. You know, so I'm always it's, like, it's a good way. It. Yeah. Have you ever tried that? The same look at it through a mirror. Yeah, it's good too. That shit's man. weird. It's like, weird, but it's good, right? I know. Like I, I remember um, painting like a alien thing, and I looked at it in the mirror, and you could see how fucked up it is. Uh -huh, it's like, uh -huh. That's weird how the brain works, man. It is crazy, man. But it helps a lot. Oh, of course, of course, it helps a lot. It's a bunch of little tricks, right? Oh yeah. I miss painting, man. Do it. I mean, no, yeah, it's easy. I mean, to you're say. spending three hours here or whatever you could be painting. I know, but then I will never learn about you. That's true. That's how, true. how often we sit and talk we, like we this? We can sit and talk and paint. We can do that, definitely, man. I'm and all and, for that. and the other day I have this guy who wrote this book, mm -hmm. uh, um, awesome painter, man. The art of still life. Top, yeah, top MKZ. You can check the book before you leave. Mm -hmm. One man is a lot of information. Did you talk to this guy? Yeah, he was the Holy first episode. Shit. What? He was the first episode and awesome dude, man. Amazing it's artist and book. person. Huh? This is a hell of a book. Yeah, he's he's coming out with two more books soon. Holy shit, I want to talk to Look at those paintings. Oh, man, check the first postcard. The first episode with him. And you can we can sit up and talk one day with him. He's amazing. He's an awesome dude. See, this is like the stuff that impresses me so much, man. Like these super realistic still lives. Right. So impressive. But but when you see it closer, you see all the brush strokes still. Yeah, man, just I look, love that, looking man. at the cover. Yeah, it's like you can see all the textures and stuff. I love that. You know, I love when you see a painting and it looks mm -hmm. super smooth. Mm -hmm. real. And when you get closer, you see the quality mm -hmm. of the paint process. I love that. I'm trying to get there, man. It's just so hard. It is, man. You gotta get. I uh, know. You gotta get because seeing that happening to a lot of artists too. That they they were super smooth painter. Let's mm -hmm. say super pros with with age. They get more loose, oh, yeah. more you loose, just, and more loose. You just stop giving a fuck, you know? And that's probably when you do yeah. your best work. You Either know? you, you start giving a fuck or you get so confident mm -hmm. that now you know you, you know you can represent what yep. you wanted it mm -hmm. without going through the process of yep. every single little stroke. Plus, I think a lot of artists, for them, is important not only the subject matter, but the brush strokes, too. Yes. Like, I'm not there. Like, I don't really care about brush strokes in my art, but like, like you said, seeing it, 
and like you can almost like picture how they did that painting by mm -hmm. the strokes and that's cool it's man. cool man but I, cool. I i just i'm so worried about doing the image that like brush strokes <laughs> is like the last thing i'm thinking of so i know so it, i don't know if it happened to you ever <clears throat> i grew up seeing art just in books right mm -hmm. grew up meaning from my 20s um okay um, probably i saw some art when i was in high school but very bad quality art history books from high school mm -hmm. you know black paper kind yeah. of newspaper print color so you don't see shit in those right the quality is not good. But then when you went to the library in college time, I saw better quality prints. Yeah. No, even then, when I first saw a Velasquez, for example, or a Rubens in life, I was so mind blowing of brushstrokes, brush of strokes. simplifying. Brushstrokes, man. Like you see the painting, an armor, metal, shiny, perfect. Mm -hmm. You see it so smooth. You get close, man. And yep. You the, see the, the highlights paint. are like these glob, like white things. A oh, thick, super thick white. So cool. And, and the grays are super thin. You yep. see that the underpainting coming mm -hmm. through, but all of that make it so rich. The texture of the fabric, like the carpets with yep. so many partners. And, and you see it so, so perfect. But when you get close, it's just a couple of brush strokes, yep. a couple of highlights. And you could tell those are like working artists. Like they had to figure out shortcuts, you know, that did mind. the job as fast as possible. And in a time where it was not much uh, no. where to learn from, you know, you have to create those, mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. language of yep. pain, you have to create it yourself. Yeah. Fuck. It's, it's so impressive to see it's that crazy. in museums, man. That's why, like, during this whole pandemic thing, the museums were closed. Man, it's, I know, it's driving man. me crazy because I love going there to get, like, yeah. inspiration, man. You have those good galleries there in, in your hair? So we have, it, yeah, we have the Yale. Yale Art Gallery, and the one across is the British Art Museum, which is... I've never been there. Oh, man. It has go. one of my favorite paintings in there. Like, I don't know the name of it, but, like, it's, like, this huge painting, and it's, like, super dark. Like, it's almost all black. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you really look at it, there's, like, a bunch of little people, and there's, like, a lightning bolt, and, like... There's Jesus in there, and like, like the more you look at it, the more you realize that like this wow. is a whole scenery of like stuff going on, and wow, it's so man. impressive, so cool. I love that place. Yeah. Do you like the Met? No. No way. Oh, hold on, the Met Metropolitan. No, 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 I'm thinking of the MoMA. I don't. Like. Ah, the MoMA. I don't. Like the Met. I don't like. Yeah, the Met, so much of that new like. art that you don't understand. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, whatever. yeah. The Met, I like. The um, Met have a lot of Renaissance and a lot of. Master of the classic, like Rembrandt and Rubens, all the, those people. The, the history, the, um, with the science, no, 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 fucking the one with all the animals and shit. Yeah, science, uh, um, history uh, museum. Um, oh, shit. I, I can't even think of it now. <laughs> Museum National, uh, no, Museum National History, no, yeah, Museum yeah maybe, whatever, something yeah, like that, that, that <laughs> with the dinosaurs. <laughs> the dinosaurs yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love that place. Ah, that place is so, so big, man. It confused me so much, man. When I tried to keep a track of uh -huh. the dates where the those animals lived like five billion years ago, you're like, what? Mm. What? Crazy, man. Yeah. So, um, oh, I was telling you, Todd, uh, he he came to my shop once and did a workshop for us. It was oh, really? super cheap. I don't remember how much we pay per person or something. That was before he came out with a book. Yep. Now he's super book all around the country to do it's a those. serious book, too. But he might come again to the shop, so I'll let you know. Definitely. If he's all doing right. it, so I you can talk to pop guy. and and talk to him and paint. We paint together and talk some crap there. Yeah, man. man. We got to get you to paint again. Yeah, I, I still try, man. I still try. I, when was the last time I, I was doing a little painting there for a friend as mm -hmm. a gift, but haven't finished it, and. I did a couple other paintings that in the shop. I paint a mural in Norwalk. Yeah. And so I tried. How, how big was the mural? The last one, I think it's like 40 feet tall. Wow. Or that's, a little more. Dude, that's so impressive how people do that. Yeah. Like, it, how, do you, how do you step back and then know what to do? Like You don't. <laughs> so you, no, yeah. You, do. <clears throat> you just have to get. It, it's, it's, it's complicated. This one was a very easy mm -hmm. uh, because it's a big as seagull. So I did a design. Yeah. And then I try to focus on sections that oh, I know this color is going to go here or whatever. Yeah. And I'm in a lift, you know, one of those uh, automatic lift that you control, mm -hmm. whatever. So it allows me to move it also a little backward, but be careful with the cables or chair. You don't get electrocuted. <laughs> so you move a little back and then, or you put it all the way down and cross the street and try to block the yeah. fucking sun coming above the wall and look what you're doing. But it's just like that, just little by little, man. You kind of... Yeah, that stuff's impressive. You kind of have... I, what I do is I, I print a bunch of images of the, the mural, right? Yeah. So I, I trace the wall in the 
in the paper and then certain section I print it out bigger okay so I have all the references there so so you do like a grid right on the wall for uh it depends on the mural let's say for that one I didn't need to do physical because it's already kind of half a grid and mm -hmm. because the image is so simple it's just a okay. huge yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. bird I, I just follow the the grid that they already have mm -hmm. so I know like in this section of this square, it's gonna be the tip of the wind. Got it. So I can just freehand the wind there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I have done others that are more intricate, then I have to either. There is a way that I learned from a friend. I want. Uh, there is a couple of guys I know that do murals. Yeah. So you're using spray paint or using like. Brush. I did that with brush okay. and, and, and kind of exterior paint. Yeah. yeah. That is priming paint, yeah. semi gloss, so it, it yeah, resists it's, it's more last, the, yeah. the weather and stuff. Um. <clears throat> But this guy that I know, he showed me, a, and then I realized many of those muralists that do huge, mm -hmm, huge, like mm -hmm. like like twenty yeah, fucking man, that's stories wild. buildings that's or, or water tanks are like fucking I don't know huge. Yeah. So what they do is that they just do a bunch of doodles in the wall. No sense doodles, like just doodles, doodles, doodles in the area where the main, let's say the face is going to be, and probably they take a photo of that and mm -hmm. put in the image. And then in the image, you see the doodle. So you just follow. So instead of doing a, a square, because you're going to take a probably long time to do that, that mm -hmm. squares. Yeah, yeah. They just do, with a brush, doodles in the wall. Huh. Just doodles. And then those doodles you see in the drawing, you know, you put it like transparent on the yep, drawing. Yep. And then you draw following those doodles. I think what your, 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 whatever you call it. That. Yeah, I'm sure everyone figures out shortcuts how to do. That you know, one is very efficient, that's, man. That's I was awesome. like, wow, that was clever. I never thought about it. And, and first I was like, how I got to translate the drawing? It's going to be so comp No, it's super, super. I always thought like you would need man. someone in the bottom and you would need something. Like I you have, need to be able to see it from a distance, right? It's yeah, like, I have done that. I have, I asked friends that go, or people walking by like, can you take a photo with your phone and, <laughs> and, it and drop it to me or whatever, you know? <laughs> and, and people yeah, do that, man. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Because it's hard sometimes, like go down and walk across. Plus, when you're standing up there for so long, it's hard to even cross the street walking. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like man. Your legs are so stiff, man. Yeah, I'm sure. So what you been doing this whole quarantine, man? You've been like working out, you've been exercising, anything? man. I'm ashamed to say no. Nothing. None of them. Like I was working out before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I have a whole system with saunas and exercises in the morning, the evening. I, I was doing jujitsu. Um. And then the pandemic came, they closed gyms yeah, and pandemic. So I, yeah. I kept doing exercises at home, like, you know, how you say it, calisthenic, whatever, Gross. in the yeah, front. Like body weights. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. But after a little while, I got mm -hmm. bored, man, of being at home, sitting around, watching TV. Okay, let me go to my room to change my clothing, to mm -hmm. my gym clothing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's so hard to work out at home, man. It is. It, it, for me, it's just not finding the motivation to start doing it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. once you start doing it it's fun is that the problem with everything though it's like, the same thing yeah. with painting it's the same thing with anything man. right it's like getting started yes you man know? once you do that first step it's yep. so kind of easy from there on i found that like when i do a painting if i don't finish it i don't have the motivation to for go the back next one. Oh, oh so it's like i need that 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 finish to like bring me to do the next one you know like mm -hmm. you need that energy to just keep going man yeah what what for me because i remember i told you pain like very fast let's mm -hmm. say once shot for me what's hard is like if i don't finish the painting in one session mm -hmm. or, or maybe sometimes it's like two sessions right next day i come back and put highlights whatever yeah yeah if i don't finish it like that and i put it aside for like a week it's gone it's gone never <laughs> go back to it man i have a bunch of paintings like that yeah people come sometimes and see them and, and i give away a bunch of paints yeah, right. <laughs> like, like halfway through because they love it like that and for me i don't want it to keep getting damaged in the floor exactly you know? i mean you, you so, got some cool paintings here man you gotta, thank you man you gotta hang them up no i had i had like i did a tax sale man long time ago it was a kind of mistake error or i don't know how to call it but i needed it to do it but i sold painting for five bucks no that's a mistake yeah. <laughs> yes so, but know. but listen to this between 20 and 10 bucks and five bucks paints mm -hmm. and blank canvases for five bucks because i was married my first the first time i got married mm -hmm. <clears throat> every time before that i moved like five times every time that i moved so many paintings it was mm -hmm. hard man yeah i got to a point i have a little apartment so i have to pay a, a storage unit 
Just for paintings. Just for paintings and, and canvases. Yeah. So when I moved to this house after I married, I put in a, I have a big room to put in, but mm-hmm. then I have room to paint. Mm-hmm. I sold in one day and a half because the second day was raining as fuck. I sold almost 300 paintings. Holy shit, you had that many? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you needed to get rid so of them. So that's the point. And yeah. Those paintings moved so many times from one house to the other one that they were, that they were getting damaged. Yeah, because, you know, up, yeah. every time I move them, I have to put in somehow that the other painting is not touching the canvas, but the edges. So mm-hmm. it's by size, sometimes upside. I have to be very careful, but people is helping you. Sometimes they're not that ca- Just grabbing a canvas from the back and oh, putting that finger against yep. that, the, the market. Yeah, I know. It's I know. so hard to get rid of that. So it was kind of dumb having the paintings getting damaged. Yeah. Instead of but five dollars, that's that's pretty cheap. See, yeah, man, but uh, I was, it was like my probably third year tattooing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was getting so busy tattooing. I start traveling. Uh, I wasn't painting that much ma- that much anymore. Mm-hmm. And they were just, it was it was kind of two different feelings. One, it was sad to see them getting damaged, mm-hmm. and two, I was feeling kind of selfish that people might want in their living room houses whatever and i'm having them they're throwing yeah, just because yeah, yeah. i think they might worth more or whatever so i was like <coughs> you know what i mean no i get <coughs> that it's like so- I, I just need a space room and don't get any mm-hmm. damage you know what yeah, I mean? you, you don't want to be attached to everything you create yeah, or that- else you, you, <coughs> you literally run out of space so like yes. get, you know learning how to let go it's 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 an important thing as an artist i think I guess, yeah, man. Because it's hard, you know? Yeah. You, you feel attached. You feel like, oh, my no, God. No, yeah. I mean, you, you know? created this thing, and now you got to give it away or sell and it. And also, you know, in the art world, it exists that thing that you have to create a value for your product, and you cannot fuck it up because, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you d- damaging your own market. Yeah, of course. So I didn't have a market. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Was, I wasn't living out of art. Yeah. So they were really just waiting time to get destroyed. But isn't that cool that, like, <clears throat> one day, like, that painting might be, like, given to, like, you know, someone's kid and they get to appreciate it? Like, it lives on beyond you, you know? It's now, so, yes. Yeah. That's the point. Now, If yes. you keep them in your closet, then no one ever sees them. Nobody it, sees them. Know? They yeah. get destroyed, you yeah. know? And, 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 and they're on my way and I have to see them every day getting destroyed. That was frustrating, oh, man. man. So a lot of people were super happy. I have photos of that people a bunch of paintings <laughs> in their hand and they can appreciate yeah that. and, that, and cool, like man. there is a school of uh dancing and art and stuff and mm-hmm. they have like 10 of my paintings there you know because they were That's just awesome. opening the school they didn't have much money but now they have a bunch of paintings there so kids yeah. are coming to take classes seeing paintings yeah. dance classes or, or piano or guitar yeah. or whatever and now seeing paintings around so it's at least they're serving a purpose is what i'm trying to say you know dude i'm at that point where like i have no more space so I'm happy if everything sells. If anything sells, yeah. like I, I don't hold on to anything. There's a few paintings that are like sentimental to me. You but... always want to have a painting. I have a painting. Yeah. I have a painting there that. Remember, I told you a few minutes ago that I stepped by in that gallery. The guy looked at me. He said, "Talk to the man. Yeah, bring yeah, the yeah, paintings." Yeah. Yep. The first painting I brought to her, I have it there. Yep. So those kind of it's important for me. That yeah, painting. yeah, that's... it's that connection to me, mm-hmm. and and it's a symbolism about them. Minotaur, Minotaur, how you say Minotaur? That you know the body, human, and, and both oh, head. Minotaur. Um, Min- Minotaur. Is that a Minotaur? Yeah, it's a Minotaur. Yeah. I don't know how you pronounce Minotaur yeah, yeah. in Spanish. I don't yeah, know Minotaur. how you pronounce that in English. Uh, so it's, is it's, that what the painting is? Yeah, it's yeah. a Minotaur on his knee, head kind of down, and it's a girl kind of touching him. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you know you being human but dumb kind of strong like <laughs> acting acting more out, out of being yeah, yeah, you know animalistic animalistic yeah, more about yeah, instincts yeah. That, than really like you know yeah um but still you need to be support to help it by somebody even of course man we all softer need that. than you and all of that so it, it, for me it was an important pain it represents something important about mm-hmm. the world of art and trying to be an artist and all of that and it got me into the gallery my first show. Yeah, so man. I still have the painting, you know? Yep. A couple of those paintings I still have. I, when I was in Venezuela, I did... That one... I... My friend steal the canvas from the art school where he was attending <laughs> and get gifted to me, right? Nice. Gave it to me. And I did that painting in 1995, I think, wow. six or something. So I sent it to the United States with my friend. I rolled it up and sent it with my friend with yep. a bunch of my paintings. Because she was trying to find the way to get me in a gallery in Miami. <clears throat> she moved to America a couple of years earlier than me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
So then I moved to Miami, the first time I moved to America, and I went to the galleries and I chose one of those paintings, and they said like, yeah, yeah, we won it. We want you in the gallery, but you have to sign like you cannot be in any other gallery in Miami. Oh, so, so they want a contract, yeah. That's... Yeah, so big, but I was so new in this country that I was afraid. I was like, what if I can find a better gallery? What if you're smart? I didn't, I don't know, but it was a smart, but I didn't know, right? So I said no, but just when I said no, like a week later, it was 9 11. Mm -hmm. In 2001, I was in Miami. Then everything closed. Yeah. Everything was dead. So I was like, fuck, now wow. what do I do? So I went back to Venezuela for a few. Came back again here to Oconorico now. Wow. And it's been here since then. And those paintings I have in there roll up. They're in the closet. They roll up. So they're fucked up. <laughs> they're super fucked up because they've been... They were in Miami. They, they were in Venezuela. Yeah. They were in Miami. Then they came to Conerico. And been in every house that I live in Conerico. Roll, but not protected by something outside. Your roll. Oh, just rolled that, up. Yeah, not outside is the painting too. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And that got flat with heavy things in the top. Yeah. But it's, I'm talking about what? Uh, this painting is 96, so do the math for me. Like yeah, I mean, fucking 20 something years 20 or whatever. Years I don't know yeah, what year like we right now. Years, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, 25. so you've been painting a long time, man. That's, that's... I've been painting my whole life. Yeah. Painting and drawing. First was drawing, then painting. Yeah. Same. But, I, but I, I didn't paint for a while, but like drawing has always been a thing. That I started exploring painting when I was kind of college time, a little yeah. earlier maybe. But so, so did you go to art school? No, graphic design. Graphic design. And and that, there you have a couple of classes of art, but nothing serious, mm -hmm. nothing like really uh, much. I took a couple of illustration class, but mm -hmm. they were again the graphic design world was passing from being everything done by hands to, to now digital. being by com yeah. digital computers. Still, a lot of people do a lot of stuff by hands, a lot of illustration for books. I, still nowadays, people do books, illustration yeah. stuff, but, but for covers or magazine stuff, you still do a lot of illustration. So I took a class that did teach me a couple of tricks to do mm -hmm. hyper-realistic drawings. And, so do you use whatever. your iPad at all now? For I use for it for stuff. reference. Yeah, yeah. But that's all. That's I put it. my reference there. Yeah. in the iPad and sometimes I get a little closer for some details yeah. that's a battle when I first got it I start poaching around with Procreate a little bit and it's such a good program it is amazing man it's it's, it's, it's like almost meant for tattooing it's like a Photoshop super easy exactly the super basic versatile. model of Photoshop just that way how yeah, you can move your hand the, your screen around to mm -hmm. keep drawing and stuff so I did a couple of designs for an event that I have in the shop mm -hmm. uh I don't remember what that been. Probably for my birthday, I do like hundred fifty dollar tattoo for my birthday. Yeah. I, to the first amount of people that can come and can get them before I run out of time. So I do a bunch of designs, simple designs, small designs, and put yeah. it there, and people pick them, right? Uh, so I did those with the iPad. It was so cool, man. Yeah. So easy. But I'm so used to work with Photoshop um, that now I heard they're putting better Photoshop in iPads, but I haven't tried it never again. Mm. Before it sucked, it was not good. I can't go back to Photoshop after using Procreate so long. I go back to Photoshop. It's like uh -huh. it's so hard to do anything compared to like how yes. easy Procreate makes it. But the thing for me is that I design with my client in front of me, mm -hmm. and I have that computer in the shop with a big screen or whatever. Oh, that's cool. So I'm I'm looking for references and showing them to pick yep. their brain, what they like, mm -hmm. or how I feel, or how giving them my input, their input, whatever. So I'm showing them, and then I start doing the Photoshop right there on nice. point, and print nice. out and go. With the iPad, it's more like the iPad is here. So uh -huh. you cannot really like, you know what I yeah, mean? It's, yeah, yeah. And, and also, again, I'm so, I've been using Photoshop since 1995, 1996 or seven, whatever, when I was in college. Mm. Like I use it, I stopped using it, but I always was, I always uh, were designing stuff, like business card, logo type, mm -hmm. whatever, for, for whatever, my cards or my friends or whatever. So I always use Photoshop. So yeah, I'm yeah. so used to it. That, you got all the shortcuts down. Yes. Yeah. I work with the keywords and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So now trying to learn the Procreate, it, it's no, I don't really need it, what I'm trying to say, but yeah. still I love having the iPad there for my reference. Have you have you played around with any of the sculpting programs? No. Dude, they're so much fun. Like, like they're so complicated. But 3D? Like ZBrush or... Like, um, like 3D? Yeah, things. like 3D sculpting. You you know, you seen Darwin Enriquez? Oh, yeah, way, yeah, Enrique yeah, work, yeah. He used a lot of those. Yeah, he used man. that for reference, right? Yeah, yeah. To do his reference, he get 3D images mm -hmm. and rotating around. Fucking cool, Dude. man. You do stuff like that with 3D? Uh, not for work, but I've tried like sculpting in it. Let's take a second. I need I, to take a look. I got it. I got to piss too good. I'm Let's go. Let, let it roll. Let it roll. <laughs> oh, he got me holding a four. <laughs> <sighs> Out of breath. 
that was <coughs> I very needed pee break. Man. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> it's not turning around. I don't know why. So, <coughs> so where were we? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, uh, pro, uh, procreate. Sculpting. Oh, the sculpting. You, so you're using 3D software? So I have it. I've tried. It's so complicated. Yeah. So where, where are you running? Not in the iPad. No, no, no. I, I got a PC at home. Uh -huh. um, Sometimes the problem with those software is that they require a lot of computer, right? Yeah, yeah. And I got a pretty good computer for it, but it's just there's so much information. You know, yeah. it's like you you literally need to go to school or you just need to put in so much time to learn at least the basics. You know, like even the controls, how to move stuff around and all that. It's just so complicated. You too, man. You know? No, trust me. I, I dude, I, <laughs> I got like a seven-hour DVD on this program. It's like I, I wrote notes and everything, but when you're actually doing it, mm -hmm. it's hard to remember all the steps. You know, yeah. you know how how it's yeah. like learning yeah. Photoshop and all that. It's so complicated. Right now, for me, it's happening with a podcast software. Mm -hmm. That yep. it's not a podcast software. It's the one that I'm using to edit the videos and yep, stuff. Yep. You can do it all myself. Um, <clears throat> I've been learning how to use it, but the software. It's like I'm using this much of a very, very yes, huge yes, button exactly. software that you can use it to edit whole movies. I bet. You can edit the sound. You can edit the video. You can put them together. You can do stuff here But you can there. do a lot with a little. That's yeah. With a little. A li yeah. I'm using just what I need. Yeah, you know, put the basics, together this. Yeah. That's how I am with Photoshop. <clears throat> and I have the hopes. So I understand what you're saying. I have the hopes that at some point I'm going to have time to keep reading mm -hmm. or watching videos because they do a lot of like, they call it color gradients mm -hmm. so when you watch movies that they have that sensation of feeling that look like like deep colors and, oh yeah, and yeah. Gray so you get to adjust you like can do all of that of it, yeah you can get rid of this thing that i don't like and put this other thing in whatever oh, you can cool, do man. all it's super start making movies super <laughs> i don't know about <laughs> it don't no don't give me more ideas <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very 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 strong strong tool man yeah. that i just use what's it, that like, called the uh da vinci restore uh. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, man. No, no. <laughs> da Vinci. got to be name. <laughs> No, like, it is real. Like, again, when I was trying to find a way to to edit the podcast, uh -huh. learning in the process, yeah. one of the tools that I bought, it come with a software. So I was like, okay, I use that one. And then I realized that that software is actually used for movies. Really? Like, for movies and TV commercials and stuff. Nice. It's like a very huge and strong tool. Nice, it's, man. It's kind of the Photoshop of that. <laughs> it's like, you know... <laughs> It's big, big, and powerful tool. Exactly. Man. The same thing with sculpting programs. Like, there's so much, so much information, so many things you can do, but it, I'm still trying to, like, figure out that you start with a circle. I'm still trying to figure out just the pushing basics. Pushing things. Yeah, yeah, pulling exactly. things. Push and pull. <clears throat> when this I was, is fun, though. When I was in, I work in a graphic design agency in Venezuela, mm -hmm. and they have co big computers there, super powerful stuff. I was fresh out of college, so yep. everything was like, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. I'm sorry. And they have 3D software there. I'm talking about 1998, probably, or something. Wow. So everything was a lot more basic than yeah, what it is course. now, you know? Even Photoshop was a lot more annoying to work with than what mm -hmm. it is now. Um, but but still, so then you can start getting shapes and, and do this and make a, a 3D and then yep. push things and pull things out, add texture. You want it yep. shiny, you want it matte, exactly. you want it... The best where thing where you want the lighting to come and all of that it was amazing the man. best thing is like the symmetry on the program so uh -huh. if you do something here it'll happen there mm -hmm. like that i think that's the hardest thing of physically sculpting is like the try symmetry. to make the same thing you know it's like that's what i'm learning now for everything right drawing yeah, paint, yeah, everything yeah, exactly. is super so, hard yeah. to work symmetry so there's that shortcut for the digital version of that mm -hmm. cool man yeah i've seen i've seen the darwin enriquez uh designs Fucking yeah awesome man yeah it's super I mean, it's, cool it's, the way it's a I useful tool if you have the time, you know. Yeah, I I don't mm, I don't see it. I, yeah, I, can, I could use it for my for my work. For the style of tattooing, I'm still trying to catch air because I'm, <laughs> yeah, I need to exercise. I know. Um, for the time of tattooing that I do, I don't know if I need it that much, but mm -hmm. it's always good to have an extra tool. If you learn to use it, you find a way to apply. Yeah, you, you know. It gives more personality or more authenticity to your work, I would yep. guess. If not, at least you're having fun, right? Doing Yeah, there's this thing. um there's this painter that I follow, his name is Martin Wolfman, Wif and he paints a lot of like animals, right? So like 
huge landscapes with like animals doing stuff right mm -hmm. real like surreal kind of stuff and the whole you know i was always wondering like how the fuck he's getting these references because there's just, like these crazy animals doing things that you never see in nature but then i found out later on he's using a 3d program oh. to like sculpt these animals and light them and use that as a reference wow. which so, is like so but they're real animals or fantasy war kind of fantasy no they're creature. like real animals like mm -hmm. he'll, have, he'll have like a like an elephant running down the street with monkeys on his back like doing weird shit mm -hmm. but like how do you find a reference for that yes. so like that that always like you know yes. boggled my mind it's like there's no way he's like making up all this stuff and then i found out he was doing 3d programming you know no definitely man thinking about it so yeah. useful like so most more than once I have to do a tattoo and you like fuck I need a face but this angle to work with whatever yep. it is around and or or you gotta do a girl with a wolf thing in the head yep. but they're not same angle so I guess it would be cool having tools yeah, it's just or lighting man sometimes you find reference from this and reference from that mm -hmm. but different lighting you have to guess and change stuff well, that's the thing it's like how much work do you want to put into your reference you know? yeah like you can spend a week and sculpt something oh and light God. it but like that's not efficient really no. like you can't do that for every client or no. you could but you're not really gonna no, yeah, too no. much you know i would say it would be cool to do i think i think you can kind of buy a catalog of 3d images already mm -hmm. so it's like you buy a bunch of tiger heads and yeah, yeah. whatever and then you just move them and put the color you want and yep. the lighting that you want to that yeah. I think you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah I guess I, I saw it somewhere. I'm sure you can you can buy photos scenes oh, yeah. all the time so yeah. for reference if you need to buy. Problem, yeah, you just want to have a unique reference. I think that's yeah, that's what's important. It helped with that problem that we talked at the beginning that yeah. you tattoo look like. I know the other fucking yeah. that to have done because you just yeah. defy images that are on There's Google. like, you know that that one lying head that looks, you know, he's like roaring. Uh -huh. and like everyone's done that oh, one line. Like a little head. three quarters. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Everybody puts crowns on it, but it's still like the same, the same fucking lion. Lion. Yeah. I have done it 20 times myself. I know, I've done it at least four times. Oh, yeah. It's hard. But you always try to do something to it. You yeah, know, play with so the hair a little bit, own, or maybe yeah. someone smoking the top, or, or whatever it is. Yep. But it's tough, man. It's tough. I realized that with my roses. Trying to find good roses for mm -hmm. tattoos as a reference sometimes tricky. And and sometimes I spend a couple of hours looking for good references yep. and at the end I pick the same, the five same roses yeah, that yeah, I pick all the time. Because that one looks good for a reason. For a reason yeah. it looked good uh, the first time. Like yep. it's one of those things that you're like, yeah, roses are beautiful. Yep. And there are a trillion roses. So you can pick one and do it. Yep. And then you go for a reference and you're like, oh, fuck, mm -hmm. no. Like no, this doesn't look right. Like doesn't have yeah. the feel of a rose because even like roses even look so like, different, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I know tough. what that. I know what that's like. Man. Yesterday I have to do this tattoo for for this girl, and she wanted me to use Gabby Espino, that is a Venezuelan actress, okay. as a reference, the face of her. And I was like, when she said, I was like, awesome. She's beautiful, mm -hmm. nice features, and I know these are three you know, photos of her. Uh -huh. So, okay. Give me 10 minutes and we're going to be, bro, I spent like five hours <laughs> trying to find a photo. Yeah, because I didn't want it with a big smile. Uh -huh. Because I don't want to do a bunch of teeth in my tattoo that don't go with the tattoo. And it was almost impossible to find one where she's oh, not man. smiling. Yep. And, and her biggest smile is one of the biggest or most beautiful things that yeah, I yeah. made her, her, you know. So did you end was, up doing a smile one? No. Nah. Oh, okay. But we finally found one. <laughs> and, and, you know, and this is one of those things that... You think that you're happening in the movies? Mm -hmm. It never happened in real life, but actually it happened. It happened all the time. We look, man. Look. So I always what I do is that look. This one might work. Put aside. This one. More, so I save yeah. like five photos, and yeah. then nah, this one. Uh, this one gonna be the one, right? Nice. But this girl in that photo had all the the hair up here, and we wanted some hair. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me try to find another picture of the same girl, similar angle. Photoshop. Doesn't matter with the teeth. Just photoshop the hair, right? Open for open Google again, her name, first thing, a beautiful photo of her face with a beautiful hair, beautiful angle. Just the perfect Just shot. Just the perfect fucking <laughs> shot. And I was not looking anymore. Oh, that's awesome. It was, it was a compromise. <clears throat> In the beginning, I wanted the face to be three quarters. Yeah. Because I always like it better than always front. Yeah. Mostly because also those models use so much light makeup that front photos have no shapes. Or, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No Such shadows like flat, or anything. Yeah. It's super flat. We ended up doing one front face, mm. but it was a great photo with good lighting, nice. good shadows and stuff. So it worked perfect. But. So do you prefer to do black and gray over color? Uh, I like both, man. Yeah. A lot. It's just uh, yeah. the, there is some. I like black and gray that is a lot faster. Mm. And like you see your final product coming 
faster. But the main reason that I do most black and gray than color is because people request it. So everybody wants to come for a yeah, man. black and gray, so I do it. You know, I want to always, always want to add more color yeah. realism to yeah. to my portfolio, but people keep requesting black and gray, and and it's not like I hate, I love it, so yeah, I keep man. doing it. You know, I think it it makes for a better tattoo in the long run. In the know? long run, yeah. the way how it holds, right? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I have. I feel with colors, for me, the biggest problem I find with color tattoos, it, my color tattoos, is that the black are not that deep. My mm. blacks are not damn over the time. When when the black lose a little bit of yeah. intensity or deepness, and then that to look a little aged. Are you doing a black and gray on the coat first? first? No, that's the problem. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I do, I do. That's straight. Let's say like Dimitri or or, or any of those. Mm -hmm. I do realism, mm -hmm. color realism, right? <clears throat> I put color. I put black where black is and color mm -hmm. where color is. But the problem is not that the color look weak because it has no underlying black. It's mm -hmm. that the black itself doesn't look black anymore. It looks yeah, gray. Yeah. You know, like, for example, you can say this microphone is black. Mm -hmm. But when you see it close to yeah, this, it's, it's not, not fucking gray. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah. But in your mind, what color is the microphone? Illusion, yeah. You want a, a white microphone or a black microphone? Yeah. Oh, no, the black microphone. But yeah. it's not black. It's not black. Right? Yeah. So you see it next to this and clearly it's yep, yep. gray as much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you tattoo... And you want these two tones, it looks good. But in two years, this black gonna look almost like this gray exactly. too. Because yeah. black don't hold down black. It's because true, that the skin that you're growing. There right? is some black out there that's oh like, no, I don't. I, have I don't couple. have that black, but I, I know I'm looking. I'm still looking for that black. Yes, man. I have a couple, and and they're working very well. Yeah, but never, what's what's your main black? I, <clears throat> when I do colors, yeah. I use uh. Star Bright, uh, okay. the tribal black for for what is black black uh -huh. is the tribal black. So it's a it's a nice black, mm -hmm. and I try Eternals and I try uh, intense blacks and I try uh, all of those blacks I try and I don't find much of a difference. Mm -hmm. And I still I feel like what I like a lot about the inten the Star Bright colors is the not just the awesome people, but the ink is liquid, mm -hmm. but it has pigment at the same time, which is a, a rare. You know what I mean? Because, for example, eternal color has beautiful colors. Yep. And they're very opaque. They're not so much, except the one that no, I think. No, I know they're opaque, it, but they're it too flows thick. better. Yeah. They don't flow out of the fucking yeah. machine. You have to deepen it. Starbright flows pretty good. And it still has a lot of pigment. Like the color saturday nice yeah. and it lasts nice. Hmm. So I have tattoos that I did like seven years ago. Yeah. And the color is there. I used to use Starbright with like my first five years of tattooing it flows so nice yeah. it flow, what you i know they now? got good white and i oh, know they got good oh, yellow I, I would say that i use eternals mostly i would say that white the the the, the star bright white yeah. is the white is the, yeah it's for highlights it's in black white. and gray yeah. i don't know i don't know any other white that my only concern is like what what it's made out of you mm -hmm. know i don't want to really talk about that here but like there is some issues of like what do you make your ink? Uh -huh, you know what I mean? I hear you. So, so uh, when something that I heard with Star Brights, for example, they are accepted in some countries where the restrictions are very tough. Mm -hmm. More of over all the inks, American inks are not yeah. accepted mm -hmm. because they tested and they approved it yeah. in those countries. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't know much about in and, and I never really been interested in learning everything behind. You yeah, know, yeah. One needles are those. One materials are those. My needles. Who did my needles? Or, or my tattoo machines or the model. Where it come from? I, I never learned much about it. You know. So working with Joe, he he's all about that stuff. Like he he cares. He's all me. about the machines. He's all about like he you know he talks to people who who make inks. When you say yo, inks. you mean yo Capobianco, Joe Capobianco. In case that somebody don't know. Anyways, the Capobianco is big. <laughs> part of the he, industry he's a, forever. He's a big deal. But um, yeah, I work for him. And he's, he's awesome. Like he's, you know, been tattooing so long and mm -hmm. he's still like, he's in it, you know, like his head is in it, but he, he has had people make ink for him. So I've heard all these conversations about like what inks are made out of. And it really made me consider is like, you know, you're using this thing that you're putting inside of people every day. Yes. You need to know what's in that. Yeah, no, definitely. You should definitely. know what's in it. You know? Definitely. And an interesting thing I've, I've learned recently was, um, 
So you know how people are getting laser tattoos mm-hmm. and some of the ink are stable as long as heat is not applied. I, I, but, but once when you break it, once you apply a laser to it, now you've released all these negative things inside your body. Now mm-hmm. your body has to deal with this stuff. Yeah, I so. heard about it too. Again, I don't I don't want to mention names or yeah, names yeah, or not, anything because yeah, it's not the point it. of the conversation yeah. right now. Whoever want to learn more about it. Yeah, it's not about Google brands. It. I'm not talking about brands. No, I know, now, but, but what like, you're saying is... is yeah, it's, it's, like, it's a thing we need to think about, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I heard that from the people from... From some people who do laser, they mm-hmm. were telling me about it. That was the first time I got, um, you know, call attention about about mm-hmm. the fact that you break the capsules where the ink is yes. trapped because yes. basically ink is just tiny capsules Ti- yep. that hold the ink mm-hmm. inside. Now it's in your body, right? Trapping your skin. But then you, when you laser it, you break it. The whole point of laser is that now your body digests that. Yeah, now your that, body has that, to process it and get rid of it, hopefully, that, right? That's what, you, that's what laser basically yes. is. Breaking the ink for your body to absorb it and get rid of that. But the thing is, the, but inks, what is in the, the inks, inks aren't tested for, for that heat. amount of heat. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they could be safe while as long as you don't fucking explode them in your body. You know? Yes. So, it's just a whole... Another thing that people should consider, or at least artists should consider, when they tell clients, "Hey, go get this shit lasered," you know. Mm-hmm. But it's tough, man, because I, I, how, how do you client gonna know what kind of ink he got to well, do that's, twenty that's years true. ago? I mean, how, how do any, who know where by who? You know that's what the I thing, mean? man. It's like, how do any of us know what? what we're doing here to our bodies you know it's like yeah it's it's stable. But it's good to keep that in mind yeah yeah it's just, good. It's just good consider that you, you, we're dealing with people and, and health is an issue man like yeah i don't know it's a whole fucking thing yeah i know that those <laughs> crazy <laughs> rabbit holes that if, if yeah you can spend your whole yeah. life just trying yeah. to review and understand that process right mm-hmm. but even lasers are being evolving so much the process of dude it's it's wild man. more efficient less trauma mm-hmm. it's crazy man dude, i just saw a video the other day of this like this girl she she must i don't know what, what happened to her but she had like her ass tattooed with, with butterfly wings but mm-hmm. her asshole was the fucking thing so she tattooed it black too so, so it was tattooed i i didn't see her asshole but uh-huh. like in the video she's getting it lasered uh, so, so somebody she, holding yeah so she's like spread all to, four oh. spread and they're just like oh my god bro it's gotta be so fucking painful i've never gotten lasered i, I got lasered it like and it's horrible it sucks right yes but no oh, i can't rem- that. <laughs> i'm trying to process that they <laughs> have to go through because it's not just the process of getting a laser but healing because you get blisters yeah and 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 your skin is like very bad on born like and super bad on born it's never one time and you have to go back yeah. to doing it oh. but just that one like when I got in this arm and I got two sessions mm. but the guy was my friend so he was trying to let's do it faster <clears throat> increase oh, the machine it up on you? oh my god so I, the way for me to explain people how I feel it's like somebody get a rubber band and mm-hmm. Yep. Thingy with it, but like every time the sun, it's like a rubber band hitting you over a sunburn. Let's say so, it's it feels super annoying. You start like that, and you're uh-huh. like, <laughs> like that. two minutes later, dude. I hate some of my tattoos, but they're they're here to stay. They're yeah. here to stay. They're the memories, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> it's kind of war. <laughs> nah, you could, you could get a laser, man. Nah, I dude, I don't even see my tattoos anymore. You know, it's like I know what you mean. I don't. It's more when people say yeah, something. Oh, that's, that's the only good. time I know. Like, oh, yeah, they're like, oh, your neck must hurt. I'm like, what? And I have to think about How it. How old is that neck? Um, three, maybe three? like seven years. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. Like, I kind of remember seeing in you or posting or something, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a like, while. Like, when you tattoo me, I don't remember you have it, let's say, for example. Yeah, maybe like five years. I don't, I don't remember. It's a month, but... right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's a fun spot. But like, you know, we're so used to seeing it on ourselves. Let me like, see your hand. Man, that stayed. It's solid. It's solid for being the hand. How it's many passes? One? Just one pass. How painful. Oh, it's the worst worst pain ever. Like, that probably is more painful than laser. Dude, that's... I've never wanted to cry during a tattoo, but that one... Man, I so cannot close to tears. imagine. When I was very young... Man, thanks God. <laughs> thanks God I did it so wrong. When I was young, I did a pop tattoo. Uh-huh. And I just remember, I for, kind of forgot that... I mentioned a couple of times to friends, but it's not something that I have in the top of my head. Thanks mm-hmm. God. I tattooed myself mm-hmm. in that oh, in my hand. hand with a pocket needle, like, you know, poking tattoo yep, whatever. Yep. A little spider and the spider way open. And I did it with pen ink. 
in a needle, right? So I opened the pen, cut it, and deeper yeah. there, and, and pocket my tense guy that was so superficial that it went away. A whole hundred percent. You even... out, right? You were regret oh that now. Oh, my God, man. I would have regretted so I actually bad. did this on myself when um, the first shop I worked at. What? What is it? It's just dots. Just man. dots? Yeah. <laughs> they were circles. Uh-huh. You know? And, and the, the other one was with a coin machine? This was a coin machine, yeah. It was like... Dude, she cranked it up. Yeah. It fucking hurt. I'm surprised how much it stayed. It's solid, man. It's super I, solid. I mean, how... I, I, this was maybe like a couple years old, maybe like two. What but make you think that you wanted a you hand tattoo? I man? actually wanted this one too, but it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening with my food. I got my food done and I was like, I'm going to do two of my food. Uh -huh. right? One I want um, kind of because I have you tattoo and I have yeah. Tim, Timmy B. Yeah. So that leg, I wanted a kind of new school, nice. right? So um, what is his name? Fuck. Man, what happened? My brain today is fucked up. It's, it's Sunday, you know, exactly. Anyway, uh, he did the top of my food. I'd rather don't mention the name because yeah, I'm not yeah. even happy with that tattoo. Yeah, so. yeah, it's not a big deal. But I wanted it, my other, uh, what is the name of this guy? He's, oh my God, bro. <laughs> and, and it's not like a weird name. It's somebody, <laughs> Chamber, Chamber, uh, the oh, traditional. Uh, Mike Chambers? Mike Chambers, yeah, the traditional yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the Pennsylvania. Yeah, 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 Mike Chambers. Yeah, Mike. Um, so I wanted him to do my other food, right? So I wanted one traditional and one new school or whatever. Mm. Fuck that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I got my first food in a convention, man. Fucking yeah. embarrassing myself so there. So bad. I should have done both hands at once because this is never going to happen again. Yeah, it's man. Not. I don't know if I ever got to do my food. Because it was super painful. And... The healing. The healing. The healing's terrible. My food was like a fucking mm -hmm. football. And... I have to cancel like four days of tattooing because mm -hmm. I go to the shop and just being sitting down, oh, yeah. I inflated. So I have it's to go home and put it up. And a lot of people that listen, if when people listen to this, they're going to be like, fucking baby drama. Dude. <laughs> fucking pussy. I don't give a fuck, you know, man. Like, that shit hurts. Yeah, man. Like the older I get, the less I want to get tattooed. Right? The less I want to deal with aftercare. Yeah, because we're surrounded by tattooing all day. It's like the last, know, last thing I want to do is get tattooed. Man. I feel like I want to, I want tattoos, but yeah, definitely I'm wimpier, wimpier with the time. Oh, yeah. Before I see for like I got this tattoo here by Steve Wimmer that took mm -hmm. like eleven hours, and and I was like, yeah, let's do it, whatever, yeah. you know, it, whatever it is. Timmy B, the mother leg was mm -hmm. yours was like four hours. That yeah. was super quick. Timmy B was like eight hours. Whatever, my chest two session eight hours. Whatever, Not a big you know deal. It, it hurts a lot. But yeah, you like you're so pumped because you want a tattoo. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like do I really want a tattoo yeah, that right? much? It's like you don't want it that bad. <laughs> but but yeah, I still want it. I still like it. Yeah, I don't want to go through the pain. I know I'm I'm more wimp now for to taking the needle. Do you but. still like? Because when I'm tattooing people, I don't even think about their pain level as much. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like I remember. I, I remember yeah, you weren't thinking like, about I, my I try, pain. Yeah, I try to remember. It's like how does this feel because it's been so because the last few tattoos i've gotten are small you know oh, small okay. little ones yeah yeah but, so you mean like if i think about their pain or if i care or if i relate my pain to their pain then what were you asking I, me i i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> all of above anyway all of the above yeah like i I, I always try to keep that client like, come on, stop it. It's not that much. Yeah. Relax. You just yeah. focus on what you feel. You're going to get over soon. But so I know it hurts. So yeah, I try you to. You still have a job to do. Like, we know that it doesn't matter how, how hard uh, or how much they're in pain. We still got to do this job. You know and we have to so do like, it in the only way exactly, possible. It's not exactly. like I can like we can't put the machine slower yeah, exactly. or, or, or don't poke the skin. Like, just exactly. Like, you just, just got to get, still have to do it. Got to get through it. Yeah. But, but yeah, I try. Again, I try to, you know, play with my client's psyche. You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you got to get it. No worries. You, yeah, man. It's just, you get better in a minute. All the crap that we repeat. Sorry, All people. the lies. <laughs> <laughs> no, done. some of them Almost work. Done. Some of them kind of work, oh, of right? Of course. Of course. Um, but, but at the end of the day, yeah, we have to do what we have to do. And, and I try to, you know, don't let them get out of control. If they get too, too annoying, then we have to stop. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the tattoo mm -hmm. start compromising the quality yeah, of the man. tattoo. I'd rather do shorter sessions now. Like yeah. three or four hours, I think it's it's cool. pretty fucking good. I would say my average is like five. Yeah. But I do probably Well if you're doing black and gray, I think it's a little different. It's, yeah. Yes. I think you do a lot more. With the good thing with the the good thing with the black and gray is that you don't have to go over and over too mm -hmm. many times. So you start here and you keep moving forward. Yeah. If you have to come back, it's a little maybe you pull a little back thing or whatever. Yeah. And, and the skin is better. Dude, I've been having so much fun with black and gray lately. Just yeah. Like you really getting into it, man. 
Awesome, man. Yeah, because so. you you've been doing color since I know you. You mostly yeah, been doing I mean, color, man. Color has been my thing, but like I'm, like I'm telling you, it's like I've been falling in love with black and gray. It's like what you feel different in the so process like of doing it. You can because you only have to focus on like maybe four shades of black. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like you could really get into like the details rather than worried about oh you know there's a whole other layer when it comes to colors. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like. It's less stressful, and I feel like I could do more, and it looks better, holds up better over time. You, know? you, how, you approach tattooing in black and gray, mm -hmm. like you do a full pass of a tone, and then a full pass of the other tone, and then a full, or you go getting done every area before and moving on. Depends. When it's done. I think it depends what it is, but like if it's something like lately, I did the Saint Michael. It's like oh, you know the the Saint Michael uh -huh. tattoo, but I would just like break it down into like you know. His, his, his Armor. chest Armor. plate, Armor. I'll just do all that and mm -hmm. then move on. And Well, first, obviously, do the outline first just in case you can't. That's what I want to ask you. You do outlines? So I do a um, gray line. A gray line. Wash line. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you use a pre-mix? No. So you you, you do yes. all the mix? I, I do I do, I do do like six ink caps. Mm -hmm. I put solid black and then three quarter, half, mm -hmm. and then whatever. The last yeah. one is one drop or two drop of, of, of black and then... That one is four, that one is six, and then whatever, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big cut in ink. Do you do you feel like you use that that one? Oh no, yeah, I have yeah, to. yes, huh. yes, and 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 it's a big ass difference in my yeah. tattooing. Really, it, it's weird, man, because I know I see many different ways. Mm -hmm. There is artists that use one with black, one with water, and the deep black yeah, and water. And yeah, both. but it's not consistent. It's not consistent. Yeah, I cannot yeah. work like that. No, but I, I think good work done that way. Yeah. I just cannot do it that way. And then I seen people who do like one ink cap black. Mm. I think somebody that worked with you worked like that because I saw that to a friend of a mm. rose and I think he got it on a hub gallery. And he said, I, I never seen it, but he said he used one ink cap full of black and that's all. And he do gradients with that and black and grays. And what the fuck? How you get all the light grays? I've but his that. light grays are not dark light grays anyway. So it's it's more it's of more death. like a speed and death. Yeah, uh -huh. it's more death rather than saturation yeah, and yeah. death and SP but still it looks super smooth no, it's, it's, and it's one in cap yeah. and I couldn't believe it I was like no wait um, yeah man I use one ink also I always estimate I keep a kind of estimation of how dirty that one mm -hmm. drop of gets because mm -hmm. after you dip it in other and you don't really wash before you dip it there yeah, it yeah. starts getting a little darker it up more, yeah. but never gets so dark right when it gets a little darker, I just dump it or pull an extra one, just clean yeah. it or whatever, right? But but no, man, I feel like I notice it's just hard to talk, not showing you. Lucy yeah, this. I know. It's I know, hard I know, to I talk. But, but I notice, like, if I'm doing a rose, I use a lot of that very, very light yeah. to just save highlights on, on open skin rather than using white. Yep, that's smart. So when you see that open skin, that's, that, that's it, the that little yeah. area look like, it's lighter. It's just because around it is a wash of very yeah. light, almost invisible yep. ink, but make it look lighter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, totally. And totally. sometimes I still add that white at the end, but knowing that that white at some point gotta disappear yeah, or turns like you can't yellowish or whatever, but it's still it gotta look lighter yeah. mm -hmm. than next to it, where is that wash of super light. Yeah. Like. Yeah. But I never tried to build. Yeah. A little darker using that one drop. That's just to to pretty much. Hmm. get my skin dirty where I don't want a tone to show yeah no, that makes that. sense I'm gonna actually use that yeah. that girl I was tattooing yesterday she keeps saying man you keep tattooing but I don't see you doing nothing <laughs> <with it." laughs> and I'm like that's there that's there you know but then you move forward and two seconds later that, yeah. that kind of black yep. pop out kind of the skin exactly. and then you see it you yep. know or it's a little less red you know what I mean and you yep. see it there or you compare it with the next door with no ink and yeah. you see it. Yeah, I've been using the premixes lately. How you um, liking? I like it. It's um I think that I'm using the eternal premixes. They're pretty good. They have like 80%, 60%, 40%, 20%. 20% is like the, the lightest, which seems to be work seems to work. Really I good. wonder yeah. if twenty percent is yeah, I'm really twenty percent. Yeah, I'm not sure of black. Twenty percent of what? The, of, the bottle, of, you know, like of, I don't twenty percent. That's yeah, the good thing about seven percent. It's the yeah. twenty percent of whatever is a hundred percent. But yeah. but I'm wondering if it's a twenty percent or that's just a name they gave. Because for me, my lightest one is like three percent. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, so from what I one. use my lightest to like one drop, that seems like but still big, I, I'm, big range. I I, I, I have a set of those things, I guess. I don't know. The only thing I, I, the only I, thing I think about is like is this is this gonna heal you know because like 
black and gray tends to heal a lot lighter than what it looks like when it leaves, right? So it's like yes. So if I do something that's like super light, is it even worth it? You it is <clears throat> for me. It is like I see that though. Yeah, like I see it there. I see that different when it's there and when it's not yeah. there. Like you see it. You know what I mean? Cool. And and I think that too. I have like seen that I first started tattooing professionally. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first time I do I did a trial for somebody, right? Yep. But I never wanted it to do trial. That's so boring. So what I did was I did partial black and partial negative. Yep. So for the negative, I used a very downwashed um black, you yeah, know, yeah. super light. And I, I said the guy, listen, I don't know if this gonna heal good enough. Yep. We touch it up because I was super new tattooing, right? Professionally. And that tattoo is still to today, probably ten or something years later. Still, you see that white skin, that that you see that tribal mm -hmm. in like similar to the effect of your wings. Yeah, yeah. Right, that they look white. Yeah, but they're your skin. It's just skin. Yeah, it's similar to that, but around it is super light. You mm. almost don't see. You so almost it, don't see that shading. It's you just, just enough see that to negative. give you the contrast. Yeah. You just see that negative. Yeah. You don't see that shading going huh. on. That's yeah, pretty man. cool. I use it a lot with roses. I use it sometimes in faces. Like, like again, if I do a nose, this area is supposed to be, supposed to be, depending on the lighting and all of that, but let's say it's supposed to be super outside, right? Mm. So you have that long neck, uh, highlight, right? Yep. Instead of me putting pure white there, I put that tone next to it. Mm. That's still going to make it lighter than this, that's farther back, let's say. But you don't see that tone, but yep. you see the white line. Yeah. Without putting white. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's what I like about black and gray, man. You right. have to create all these like visual illusions. You yeah. know, the, mm -hmm. what you know, one shade depends on what's next to it. You know, it's definitely it's, it's so awesome. Definitely. Something that I like a lot about black and gray, how easy let's say is to build full tattoos and put in a lot of details, mm -hmm. but not compromising it either or yeah. Because sometimes People are kind of focus too much on the details, but the tattoo become flat because mm -hmm. all the details is just a bunch of little lines that That's they right. wanted it to put, That's but right. everything is black, and then you don't see death, right? Yeah, yeah. But it gives you that vers versatility or the opportunity that you can. For me, the tattoo is never about putting the little extra details. I want the little details just because they look awesome, but it's not the most important thing. But my client seems to love seeing the details. Oh, of course, because that's right? all they, you know, but, that's all they know. But the important thing for me is to give them that when they see that the tattoo looks good and they believe it because of the details, but we know it because of the whole the overall, structure. the structure yeah. of lies and with dogs painting, and man. freaking it's, the it's, brain and all of that, right? I mean, I think art in general is like you need the fundamentals that will build up that piece. Yeah. You know, especially with tattooing, like let's say you do put all these details, but the fundamentals aren't there when it breaks down over time then you got nothing, mm -hmm. you know, there's no structure, there's no exactly. contrast, you know, that's all that stuff. Exactly. Like so, super important when it comes to tattooing. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like you need to build a tattoo that looks good, but you have to keep in mind that that tattoo got aged. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a white highlight looks beautiful, mm -hmm. but in 10 years, they're going to be gone. Probably two, if probably one if year. If you're lucky. If you're lucky, right? <laughs> if you're lucky. Because the way how I see most of the time those white highlights is that it doesn't matter they don't look white, but if, for any chance you get 10, yep. that skin don't get 10. So mm -hmm. you stay always lighter. So it yep. helps you to keep the contrast of the mm -hmm. tattoo, right? That kind of situation. So the same for me, the overall little details. Yeah. They're there and they're going to look beautiful. At some point, they're going to start disappearing. Yep. Just because, you know, ink spread out, get eaten by your body or whatever. Yep. The overall tattoo has to still be held in place. The tattoo still has to look good yeah, dude. when they might lose some of those details. Right? After tattooing so long, <clears throat> I've... I've stopped using as much white because over time seeing stuff come back. It's like I start stop using so much white and I stop worrying about so much like a gradient, you know, like mm -hmm. I think flatter fields of color mm -hmm. tend to heal better over time. So I'm adjusting yeah. what I do to those few yeah. things. I, you know? I still in black and gray. Mm -hmm. I still because when I do color, sometimes I use round shaders mm -hmm. or or smaller needles for big areas I use a nine mag let's say for example or some, sometimes a straight a nine mag straight no curve sometimes yeah so my goal is to saturate section of colors 
no son más to cover big areas with gradients, mm -hmm. but saturate this color and next color a little lighter, and next mm -hmm. color a little lighter, mm -hmm. saturate it. Yep. I feel it holds better than oh, yeah. doing a gradient. I feel like they lost a lot of that. No, you're right. With that, you kind of see a spotty after some time or I whatever. I think the, the Japanese had it right, man. Yeah, like those man. big body suits with just like flat colors, man. They yeah. don't last And forever. a lot of skin open mm -hmm. and grace, but yeah. like a big area is just one gray covering yep. the whole area. Yep. beautiful you know, so beautiful. true man it took me so long to figure that out it's like because yeah. you know when you first start you want to do all this cool shit but like because we get confused by mm -hmm. the same perception that people that is not an artist let's say clients they want i want so many details mm -hmm. put all the details okay i put it for you and they see it and they love it yeah but they don't know that the real thing is that holding the tattoo is just the background of, it's the, of longevity, the technical man. thing and then you have to understand that yourself like keeping the skin open in these areas mm -hmm. because you know that ink in some point also gotta spread out yep. a little bit spread, yep. so hold it there with a white line for example or a color line or, 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 or a gray line mm -hmm. or whatever it is something that not everybody does it and and work for them but never work for me or <clears throat> i find i don't do black lines in my yep. tattoo sometimes i put some black lines here and there right when i need it when they are in the reference too yeah but i do lighting uh, outlining oh, fuck, sorry uh, I do outlines in gray tones, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little lighter or what the area is going to be yep. or a little darker if I need to, whatever. Very thin lines. And I noticed that with time, those tattoo holds better. Okay. That when I don't put the outline and I just do gradients of color, uh, mm -hmm. values or whatever, one close to the other one. Like if I do a rose and I, I put my gray line, right? And some areas are black lines, some areas are gray lines, some areas are like just that shading is there. Yeah. Because that area, I don't mind that with the time disappear that contrast between what is the edge and no edge. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because, you know, it's actually interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. I saw you do something similar to that score with the grapes that in the top is kind of a smoky area, but mm -hmm. at the same time it's breaking the edge. They give it yep, that sensation yep. of light. Exactly. Right? It's similar to the that. Atmosphere in, the atmosphere. It's atmosphere. So, yeah. so sometimes when you got a hard edge, it kind of lose that, but you can, you can get away leaving areas that don't have it. If that, if that tattoo lose a little of that, sharpness with that time it still looks exactly. good it still looks more realistic yeah. but I keep adding lines many ways but I don't do black lines mm -hmm. I don't want my lines to show us a line so much except that I need it well, you that's because that? you're, you're doing mostly realism yeah I do realism yeah. and I mean it, I like lines yeah so. but let's say for example I do a tiger yeah a roaring tiger right you see that all the teeth I outline those teeth yeah but I don't want to outline it in black I outline it in a gray that cannot disappear. You don't see it, but the line is there. And I noticed that with that time, does hold better. Mm -hmm. That when I don't do the line, I just do the shading very close yeah, to the yeah, edge. No, I think it a, look a good. gray lines are good, man. Gray or a little darker. I like the I, I like visually for me. I like a strong border. Yes. And like that you start. all the inner lines are like lighter or color lines. I like that look. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So when you do Saint Michael, you outline the whole thing. No, in I, black no I, I outlined it all in gray. Uh -huh. And then I'll build up, like, if I need a line, I'll put it in later. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So Makes sense. That's, that's the way I work. Something that I haven't done much, and I've seen many um, friends doing it that do realism, is the second pass. And they, they swear by it, you know, they say it's good. It, again, that way how I have tattoo so far mm -hmm. my tattoo heal good and they hold very well yeah i've seen tattoo five six seven years later oh dude i'm all about so layers man i'm all about layers no but i later on the process of getting the tattoo done let's say but my friends some friends they they want the client like come back two months later and do another pass over the whole tattoo and it looks rich it look good yeah i just yeah find hard to get my clients to see for another yeah. second pass of the same no, for me man, again. it's it's hard for me to finish it especially a big tattoo is hard for me to finish in one day oh no no of course so of course. i had most of my clients come back for almost all the big projects you know like but but let's say you black and gray st michael mm -hmm. let's say you finish it you want it's done one session let's say you did it one session. let's do you did a rose yeah one session you want the artist the client to come back a year oh, later no, five no, months no, later to, no, that's no, what no, i'm no, telling no, that's no. what i mean no it's if it's finished it's finished no that's what i'm saying the second pass over this already done tattoo i i I've seen it. People do it. Their work looks amazing. So it's working for them clearly. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, because this way you get to see it come back healed and you get to 
you know, like if it's not dark enough yeah. in certain areas, you get to punch up the contrast uh-huh. and all that. Stuff. So it, it totally makes sense. That, but like, that what that what I was yeah. bringing the conversation for yeah. because I just told you that sometimes I miss like the black is not super black in, mm-hmm. in color. So coming having the client to come back and do some of those yeah black again. It helped it a lot. Of course. Also, I've seen people doing color realism and they finish the tattoo, put the white highlights, and after that's done, they want to put blacks again. Just because sometimes the blacks get contaminated, let's say, by the wiping of the colors or the whites mm-hmm. or whatever, and they want to pass again the black. And it looks richer, man. It looks nicer. Yeah, I but, have it done it myself. But. Yeah, but how does that heal? doesn't matter what it looks no, 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 like. No, 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 no. We, we're Are you talking, talking about-, about good tattoos. People with good tattoo heal good and, and quality work, you know. Yeah, but so you're saying <clears throat> you would do the tattoo, you finish it, and they want to, and go then over you want to go over black again on that session. I think they have done in session. I have done in session little areas, just little areas, just mm-hmm. to increase contrast. But when it's already saturated, you cannot keep yeah, fucking the skin say, because yeah, you gotta yeah. rip it. Yeah. But probably they work. You know, I don't know. I don't know the way how they work, but they go over it and, and saturate it again, and, and the black looks super deeper and black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. A fresh coat of black. It's so, if, if you have the chance to do it, if yeah. totally do I it. I got friends that post photos sometimes. People that I know follow whatever, <clears> and they post those photos, and I see the black, and I'm like, fuck, what the fuck black you using? Yeah, and then you're like, ah, contrast. I'm about it. to say, here's the problem with the photos, man. It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's so, um, it, it's deceptive, you know? It's like, super. I, you know, you have clients bring you these, like, unrealistic and expectations. Yeah, it's like, you, that's not real. You know, I can give you something like that, but it's not, it's yes. never going to look like that. This, this tattoo does not look like that. Yeah, I you know, know what I'm saying? So it's like, you just got to educate your clients, you know? I know. You can only push tattoos so far. <clears throat> we all know this. Like, yeah. So also sometimes it's with black, for example, using black ink and being like mad that it doesn't look super black. Mm-hmm. It's just similar. You just have to play with the colors around it. Mm-hmm. So to trick the bra- your brain yep. to believe that that's, blackest of what it is or is just, just tricking um, the brain yeah, always just, um tattooing has its limitations you know that's that's the beauty of like painting yeah. it's like there is no limit well the limitation is the canvas but like you but can do so much more with, with you heard painting. you heard about that black pigment that they found that happened oh, already yeah. a few years the ago. The black is black. The black is yeah, black, yeah, but yeah. The, this one artist in the world got all the right to use and nobody oh, really? else and it's super fucking black and and he's like an abstract artist, whatever, yeah. sculptures or whatever. And he uses it himself. But everybody in the world is so mad because, you know, for every artist painter that really, yeah. you really need that extra black to, to push stuff. And and knowing that exists, but nobody can use it, it's kind of fucked up. And I heard that they came out with a newer, even either deeper black yeah. or same black, but now they're going to make it public. So people can create products like so, inks and whatever too. What I found, most painters don't actually use black. Yeah? Yeah. You actually, you create a dark color with like mixing all these different colors together. So you, Impressionist so, so, used to. Yeah. So the idea, so dog. the rule is <clears throat> don't use black out of the tube. You know? Mm-hmm. So like if you take ivory black, mix it in with something else. Mm-hmm. Because black out of the tube tends to look very flat. So that's, yeah, that's and, a and, lot of painters don't use black. Yeah. Um, but also, I'm, but a lot of painters do use black, and I'm one of them. I mean, I, I definitely <laughs> use black. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, a lot of painters use black, definitely. It's been, it's been the, the whole yeah. division between the ones that said nature has no pure black, yeah, yeah, and, or pure and white, you can yeah. use, use it. And, and that was impressionist, impress, expressionist used to, the impressionist used yeah. to be like no black at all. Is that may be a purple, that may be other color, but that's yeah. not black, so yeah. you have to create it out of yeah. another mix. In I've black. used black. I mean, but now what I do is take black and put like ultramarine blue in it or a lizard and crimson, mm-hmm. just mix it up, and then it still looks black, yes, especially yeah. if you use the contrast, right? You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, cool, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> Can we call that day? We can call it day, dude. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired too, man. I haven't eaten today or anything. Um, yeah, well, I appreciate you having me, man. No, nah, man. I'm so fucking glad you came, man. Yeah. I, I need this kind of vibe for all my life all the time. Man. Yeah, man. You're a nice person, bro. Yeah, it's like we've known each other for a while, but we never actually had like a long conversation. It's mostly like hi and bye. Yeah, man. man. It's, it's, it's part of what we said, man. Everybody gets so busy. No community. No, not visiting friends, talking, nothing, man. 
either we have to find an excuse to meet up and talk. It's true. Let's man. do another show. Okay, we meet up and talk that day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. Hopefully, I'm gonna call talk to Todd and find a day so you come Dude, down, you meet him, and I would we love talk. to. This guy is. He's coming with two new books. One is a super cool concept. That there is this guy who this who know the history of cocktails, okay. and because he does painting of cocktail, mm -hmm. so they got in touch. So he gotta illustrate. Oh, so he's gonna recipes make all, all the of drinks. cocktails. Oh, okay, but somebody else gotta put history behind the that too. So yep. you gotta be like reading about cocktails, learning about the history, and seeing cool paintings of, of them. That's awesome, man. So yeah, that's kind yeah, of I'll, illustration I'll book, let's say. But the the other one that he's coming is about a color wheel. Okay. That he learned from one of his masters or whatever, his tutor, professor, and he's putting together a book about that mixing colors like how to get darker so color yeah. without using black or white just mixing all the colors there and stuff go. I'm sure you gotta love that book that's too that's awesome man I gotta, I gotta talk to him man I probably gotta text him soon and and if we figure it out a day when he can come okay I'll let you know and you Dude, man we should like we, paint. we should do a paint night you know? anytime man yeah. you you guys do that there at some point or no you know we used to but like we figured it out because we I, I did it in the shop a couple of times mm -hmm. and and then we got everybody got busy that's and, the thing and, everybody's got their own thing and we changed people some people yeah. left and other people came in or whatever and and now we've been talking about it mm -hmm. just last night i said to one of the girls uh just put a group together a text group and just yeah, send yeah. a text when we gotta do it because exactly. they keep saying wednesday friday wednesday friday just put and a date and make it happen put a day and make it happen yep. so that whole idea is doing like seven to ten in the night whatever after work you know yeah i'll let you know if we do it in case that you can swim by yeah man well, i paint all the time so I'm you, you like you like right. charcoal drawings too from 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 real from mm. you don't do much of that no not you don't like it i i, I don't have experience with it okay like well, i fucked around with it before but like i can't I don't have the patience for it, so. No, man, it's I'll, fun. I'll, it's fun. I'll try it. It's been a long time I don't do <laughs> yeah, it, too, it. because, you know. Oh, you mean, like, the art fusion kind of thing? Where like, Not really. Like, uh, just somebody sit and pose, and we oh, yeah, stand yeah, around yeah. With, with charcoals and pencils or whatever, and just yeah, draw man. for a couple. Because I mean, I'll bring my sketchbook. Or I like I like the I like the painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a sketchbook or a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. We have everything in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, I love painting. We did, we did, we, like, portrait. We model. Somebody modeling for us, right? Yeah. So, like two hour session every yeah. 15 minutes the person oh, take a that, quick man. break and sit yeah. down you know life drawing yeah it's super fun but sometimes it's hard like okay let's wait 7 p.m we finally finish the day okay let's set up the easel let's set up everything already it's eight <laughs> you know what i mean so to paint it's already time to go home yeah, yeah and then no, break everything up and, so clean, long, man. Yeah. and clean yeah, and clean we can do a whatever man we sketching charcoal i'll try whatever whatever we're gonna do i'll let you know and you come by yeah man if we want to do paint we might have things you can bring your brushes if you used to it yep. but we might have paint there or whatever cool. or or i'm whatever. all for it man thank you very christian much christian perez yeah so your instagram is christian one perez mm -hmm. and i have a website which i haven't updated in years but uh, you might update it christian soon, so. perez art.com i guess so christian one perez is yep. your instagram right instagram. And christian perez art yep. is your website mm -hmm. thank you brother thank, thank you, you man coming. i appreciate it awesome all let's right. call the day